welcome to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Beta Studios. Joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. AJ. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that was a very exciting start. Come on, I'm building this up, man. Oh, huh? what a horrible ending to last week's episode. Oh, AJ, why don't you tell me what happened? Are you sure you want to give the, the fully uncensored version? Last episode, wasn't it? Episode 22, yep. We get home at like 12 o'clock. Yeah, yep. Cooked, then, to your, cooked to your 15 eggs. Then we see the thumbnail was messed up by MD. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> so then me and Rosie sat up two hours fixing that while you were sleeping. Correct, yes. <clears throat> then I checked my airplane tickets. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I'm, you, it's coming all back to me now. Did I tell you what? Did I tell how we, I got here or no? Did we tell? But that, no, we didn't. Uh, no, but I think you should talk about what happened when you went back. <laughs> so when I go back home, yeah. the plane tickets were ordered for June yes. and not May. He said, "No, he's on the sofa." And AJ says, uh, "Giles, uh, bro, bro, oh. um, the, uh, the the sixth. That's not May, is it? That's June." <laughs> I went. And I was oh. I was just about ready to go to bed. I was re Ro Rosie had gone to bed, and I was like, "Oh, it's been a fantastic day. I'm ready to go." And then you know you you looked at me like that, and you just went, "Oh no!" So then I found out the tickets for the next month. Mm -hmm. So then I had to or sit two hours at night when everybody's gone to bed to search for new tickets. Yeah, and when you got to go for the night bef the same day of the flight. You yeah. gotta pay three times as much. Yes, I, when you when you were on the the guy, it was a call center, wasn't it? Oh, uh, Indian, of course. Yeah, it, yeah I, I felt. Why so do people in India work at a call center for when you call them? What's the deal with that? Uh, cost. I know there are a lot of call centers over there. It's uh, it's a big mm. source of employment. So he had no I idea what he was doing. I felt sorry. I felt for the guy. You were, <laughs> you were really having a bit of a meltdown, oh. but you, yeah. So I get some tickets. Next day, mm. we arrive. Plane is two hours late in the UK. Right. Is this when I dropped you off? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was, it was late. So then, then <clears throat> we go to France. The plane, I missed my plane. Yes. You only missed it by a minute, wasn't it? A minute. I saw the gate closing. I said, come on, guy. Let me, let me, let me. And they said, no, bro. You're not getting on this flight. <laughs> Started getting very irritated. I said, like, okay. I walked back to the France desk. Yeah. Started arguing. Mm -hmm. And I punched a hole through the desk. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I thought you were going to leave that bit out, AJ. Chris, I gave him the George Foreman. You know when he hit a horse and the horse fell down? <laughs> I did the same thing to the desk. So I, I went through the, 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 what's it called? The desk. Oh. 18 security came. Oh, it was 14 when you told me. No, it was 18. It was going it to 18. Were you actually sit there you were on the floor counting them. So they arrested me. Okay. Detained. Did they tase you? No. Okay. I went to like some detention, like it's like a security thing down there for like seven hours. Yep. <clears throat> when I was, when I ran to make the ran to make the airplane, mm -hmm. the security guard broke my telephone. Oh, how did they break it? No, it was already it, pretty smashed up. It was already pretty smashed up, but he <laughs> lost it on the floor, so it totally broke. Oh no! The glass. Okay. So anyway, I went to detention. With detention. So that the security they, they asked me <sighs> budget. Like six hours I was there. Mm -hmm. Let me out at like three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to tell you, there was n the next flight was the next day because they gave you a yeah because they want they go on, sorry you can't carry on continue. They're supposed to give me a free flight to uh, when you miss your flight. Yeah, but it was for the next day, <laughs> and I had to go back to Norway that day because I had to work. Yeah, so there was the next day, oh. and not only that, there was no hotel rooms available. What in France? In by the airport. Oh, okay. So I had to go to a father airport, to, but I had no more money left. Okay. So there was no flight hotels available. Yeah. So they told me to go sleep in the hallway. Oh. And I got a free food coupon. <laughs> That's when I punched the desk. Oh, no. I had enough. Oh. So then I went to the, the detention thing, Chris, yeah. in France. Yeah. For six hours. Asked me like probably like 2,000 questions. What like? Where do you work? Where do you stay? Why are you here? Why this? Why? What's your name? Oh. What's your background? What's your this? What's your that? Why are you oh, so Oh, because you're kicking off in an airport and they're thinking you're... Yeah. I don't know. Okay. They left me out like three o'clock at night. Oh. No phone. Yeah. Slept in the ho and I couldn't sleep because the next flight was like 10 in the morning. On the floor? You on oh, the floor. So no. I sat on the floor, Chris. <laughs> and I just spent... Like a hobo. $800 on an extra ticket. I had no flight. I lost my job in Norway. I lost that day for work in Norway. Uh, no phone. No food. No hotel. 
No, nothing. I was at home, tucked up in bed. Jazz was at home. Chris was chilling. Watching Star Wars. I was fuck. I was messed up, man. Oh, man. What a horrible. Oh, it was sad. So what have I, you learned? I almost tapped out. <laughs> what have you learned from this experience, AJ? What can you take? What positive can you take away None. from this? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Horrible, man. Need to move to UK, AJ. I think so. Come think, on, think, sell up. I think I got to move from Norway, man. Sell your mansion. I think I have to. Sell your Lamborghinis and you need to move to the UK. I think I have to. And you can, you can, yeah, you can. There's, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'd love, oh, AJ, I'd love you to move to man, the UK. Man, it, it was not cool being, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, prison but it was like the six hours of going back just yeah and sitting there okay wait a minute they go out but you said they were, you said in the end they were very sympathetic they went okay fair and, enough and we my, understand how frustrated you and are my bags were in norway because that made the flying oh no i couldn't shower i couldn't <laughs> i had no money to buy any food was mm. was it like back when you did the first episode of global muscle and yeah. france nobody speaks english it's the weirdest country I've ever been. Nobody speaks English. Really? Spanish. Just like in Iraq, was bro. The, which which airport, which airport was this? The Charles de Gaulle? Where was it? The Charles de Gaulle. No. Chris, is it Charles de Gaulle Airport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice Nobody airport. Nobody that works there speaks a word of English. I've heard the floors are very comfortable in Charles de Gaulle Airport. <laughs> very lovely airport. I heard you could eat your dinner off the floor. Oh, well, I couldn't have no money. To, I didn't have no money to buy any food, so I couldn't eat no uh, dinner. You food. had a food coupon, didn't you? You know, I threw it away. I got irritated. They gave me a food coupon instead of the hotel. Yeah. So well, bodybuilding. Yeah, was oh, it worth it? By the way, MD new cover. Yeah, it's a very old picture, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Von Moger. Yeah. What have happened to him? Uh, well, he just I don't know, he kept jumping off bridges and tore things. And what a sad. He was very good in bigger though. Very good in bigger. Matter man. Which... He came from. I remember 2014. Mm -hmm. He was the biggest thing to hit the scene. But what is he though? He's a he's a he's an Instagram guy. Exactly. I don't feel that. He came as a highly respected competitor in Australia. Remember? Yeah. He won a lot of universe and NPC. No, he didn't. Yes. He did yes. little muscle beach shows, didn't he? In Australia, he used to compete. He used to be a star. Yeah. He's got fantastic physique. Fantastic. And physique. then he came to America. Mm -hmm. and nothing. Uh, no, he. What do you mean nothing? That's not competing. He's on the front cover of MD. Front cover. <laughs> You're not feeling it? No, it's good. I mean, I, yeah, it's, the thing is, that is a good. I remember that Perbinel shoot. That's from that's good, six, seven years old. It's not about great cover. I'm talking about why has why doesn't he compete? That's why he came to well, America. He, yeah, well, he was to very slim new, when I saw him at the Olympia. I went up and spoke to him to be the new classic <clears> star. <throat> remember, everybody said he's the new classic star, but he wasn't. Com and... He's not competing in the classic though, so he's just become a social media star. But as you know, as quickly as they rise, they can fall. Now, I, you know, got, don't get me on the social media thing because. The more I th I've said this before, AJ. Mm. The more followers <laughs> someone has, the more shit boring their content is. Do you what, what about that guy with five million followers, and every single picture is him on an arm blaster with some blasting out rap music? Or that guy who keeps us tagging us with the same pose all the time in, in his phone. Oh, I unfollowed him today. <laughs> no, I did unfollow him today. I can't stand that. It's too, it's too weird. It's weird. Weird. The same picture all the time. And he tags us. What are we gonna say? Why wow, you look good in your shorts? <laughs> There's no difference. He's not getting bigger or smaller. I know or... that's uh, yeah. I don't. I, I I struggle with that. I struggle with that. Man. Yeah, anyway, I... AJ got knocked out. Did you get? Oh yeah, because someone said your mate AJ got knocked out. Oh man. And I'm like, knocked. well, Ow. one thing they'd have to be very tall to knock AJ out. What happened, man? We are obviously talking about the Anthony Anthony Joshua fight where he got hit, beaten to the ground. Oh, can you see it, uh, Chris? Chris, can you see it? It's very, very, very disappointing. What? Yeah, but the... yeah, he was what? supposed to be the new. Yeah, but what do you think happened? Do you think he was just underestimated, or the, the other uh, guy? Because he didn't look like a a typical the last heavyweight. Six months, I've studied too much men's and thongs, <laughs> so I haven't had time to study too much <laughs> boxing. What did you say last episode? And you went, "I'm only engaged to men in thongs." Men 
Oh, oh, I put that in a clip because if you notice, I've started making very short loads of Instagram clips. I've gone a bit crazy with it yeah. actually. I've um I've really because at first I was like oh, I don't really enjoy doing these. They take they're too time consuming. And now I've I've been blitzing uh, <laughs> MD's Instagram. I love it. I'm like Rosie's like Giles. Do you know you're doing quite a few of those. You're spending quite a lot of time on them. You're getting like you are with your social media. You need to spend less time. Tell you what though, Saturday by the way. What Chris? What happened? Giles had the birthday. Oh. Happy, it's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. Oh. We're going to drink Bacardi like it's your birthday. <laughs> on, we, we, move we, on to the next subject. Said, How was your birthday? Was it like 50 cent in the club? You can't, oh, like, yeah. You can't, like, <laughs> were you in the club? In the living room, sat by myself, <laughs> uh, doing shit, no nothing. Rosie, you didn't hook, hook up with nothing? No, we went out for a meal. Went out for a meal with a mum. That didn't sound too exciting. I didn't feel very well on my birthday. Do you know what it is? I, mm. this is good. I'm not trying to put everyone on a downer here, but <laughs> I'm sure it's some weird... I've got no explanation for this, but I've since about the age of about eight years old, because my sister has the same birthday and she's two years older. Mm. Well, she's always I, got a better birthday I gift think, than I think my parents' anniversary was the 1st of September. I don't understand that joke, but... Don't I get that joke? Oh. Did you get that joke, Chris? June the 1st, September, nine months apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad joke. That's my best joke I've got <laughs> for all the, all the day. At least David Bay is still... Hey. <laughs> at least David Hay is still the greatest breeding boxer of all time now then. Is he? No, he's not. But he's my guy. Okay. You like him. He's obviously, it's Lennox Lewis, but he's from Jamaica, so... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you remember Lennox Lewis? Lennox Lewis, yeah. yeah. The legend. Yeah. I'm getting bored now. because A like, lot of bodybuilding. Yes. A lot of bodybuilding. Oh, also, um, what were we doing when we first came in today? What were we doing in the other studio, AJ? We did our first... F well, you've done many of them. AJ. <laughs> AJ's actually... Um, he's, he's, he's a stand-in for the, for the Millie Vanilli reunion. <laughs> so, cause I've never yeah, seen you with your hair oh, down. I've true. never seen you with your hair down. You yeah. haven't. He looks very lovely. Very feminine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, do you want to explain what we were doing in there today? So we were taking photo shoots of ourselves. <laughs> well, we weren't taking the photos of ourselves. No, we Chris hit. was taking pictures of us. Yep, the fantastic photographer, Chris. So, photographer, videographer, editor, green, it, green tea maker. Yeah, so any guys out there want some private shooting, call Chris. Uh, Where can people reach you, Chris? Comedia.co.uk. Yeah. yeah. For, for that's, enough, that's enough for a plug, isn't it? <laughs> Don't spoil him. Don't spoil him. <laughs> Remember, he sat down. <laughs> Chris, last episode when you sat down, Josh was like, "Hmm, he's, he's getting he's a bit close. Like, this, <laughs> this is your. This is a. Uh, that, that's where the line is. This, I'm getting very protective of my uh, territory." So we now. took some photo sh pictures. Yes, for a new Ronnie Coleman show. Yes, and we spoke it into existence. Yes, we don't want to go into detail about that. But now we like Nick Power and Strength signing Mr. Olympia contracts. We're signing. We're signing. Ronnie Coleman contracts. Yes. So we're going to get. I've actually got the contract. Did you see Nick Power and Strength sign the contract? I showed you. Uh, Impressive. Yeah. What's, he, what's it for? Um, uh, for, you don't know I don't know. It was for Mr. Olympia. Did you see Nick Power? He uh, wrote. Uh, well, I don't understand why he's signing a contract there. For what? Influence something or. I'm surprised they haven't called us. Well, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 we have to something. make eight minute videos. We get the views V2. Us too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We do well on views. We do well on Ronnie views. Coleman yes. si series. Yeah, Ronnie Coleman series. Um, I think the name is going to be nothing but a podcast. Of course. We did think about calling it King's Corner, but it yeah. But it, like, this, is, this is a new show because you're, yeah, we're going to, we're going to film it all in one day and then we're going to split it up into four episodes. And we're going to um, we're going to talk about not just bodybuilding subjects, but we're going to to be honest, it, we're going to see how it goes and find its own. What's direction. your favorite catchphrase from Ronnie? Is it in the butt peanut or is it lightweight? Lightweight baby, oh come on! Wait, baby! You sound like Zach Khan now. <laughs> you do your face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, lightweight. That's the best one, isn't it? Yes. No, so we when when was it gonna premiere debut? Well, we do the first bit of filming on the nineteenth of June, mm. and then as soon as Chris does the wonderful intro and we're ready to we pieced it, we've cut it up into the four and edited it into the four thirty minute episodes. I think it's gonna be thirty minutes. We might make it forty. I don't know because um, it's got to be sustainable because we want this to go on for many years. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna, that's basically it. Yeah, basically. But we're doing some promo shots. We're going a bit ham and cheesy. <laughs> a bit ham and cheesy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, don't be too serious with it because I've got a visual, an idea of, and then Chris threw his ideas in, and which uh, 
Oh, he's going to talk. I feel like he's going to say something. <laughs> Yeah, I've just uh, just alluded to the fact that I've just shown the audience um, uh, the photograph of AJ with his hair down, very feminine. Ah, oh, I wonder what he was doing with the phone camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. no! Ah, beautiful, no. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you know it's true. I can't remember the word. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Millie Vanilli. You. I remember dancing at the school disco when I was eleven years old to Millie Vanilli. Speaking of somebody, you remember? The, hey, Chris, remember those thin leather ties? Oh, yeah. My, and my sister used to do my hair up with hair gel. Oh. That's when I had hair. When you had hair, what was your favorite haircut? Your most favorite? proudest hair. Your most proudest hair. I'm not I'm not Hairstyle. as prissy about my hair as you are. No, but back in the day when you were younger, what obviously you, you had some dope look. I didn't have look. a perm. I didn't have like, you know. Nothing cool. What about you, Chris? Did you have like a favorite look? <laughs> oh. And by the way, somebody we're not going to say his name on the show. <gasps> Somebody's been dissing us in the media game. There's <laughs> plenty of them. No, it's one person. Oh, we yeah. We made yeah, that yeah, thing. Yeah. When I see you at the limp, I'm going to fuck you up in the toilet, bro. I'm just, I'm letting you right, know right now. I'm not playing, bro. No, he's, he's I'm actually. I'm not playing. When you, and, and me and Chris Goon Griffin, he's also going to fuck you up. And, and that's for Ron Harris. And you know who you're talking about. And AJ I actually is not joking on this one. No. Because we don't go on Instagram and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we don't. Do you know what it is? We don't engage. When I because, see you, I'm going to fuck you up. Because some, because someone actually tried to engage with me twice now. Mm. on Instagram and I'm I'll be honest I don't engage with these things online so you can no. try I mean we've seen people trying on the YouTube comment they've tried and you don't engage you just and eventually they just go away whatever but you know I don't like to do I'm like you I'm more of a face to face person yeah. I've had confrontations with people at shows yeah. and I, it's the best way to sort something out because it's very different. Because we're not we we like I said, what me the game? Not, no, it's not about street. It's no, about no, no, no. Yeah. When you when you when you go out of your way to try to make fun of somebody, yeah, you call them directly mm. and then you say your problem. Yeah, that's why also we had a, like a, we've been going a little bit too hard sometimes against Sean Roden that we felt a little bit bad about it mm -hmm. because we felt like we might be bullying. No, or, no, 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 no. But like. Um, uh, some people live just to... Especially when we talked about things like mental health on our show. You know, it's, it's, you know we, we have a light-hearted approach sometimes, but we are trying to make our point mm. in a positive way. Our intent is good. Mm. I, 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 I certainly... I can but speak to you on that. But this guy has been trolling you and Ron for a while now. Yeah, he's taking the piss, really. Yeah, he's taking the piss. So we'll see when we see you. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Anyway. Uh... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No! Billy, there's AJ on the left. Which one are you, AJ? I'll take one to the left. You're the cute one to the right. <laughs> <laughs> what are they wearing? Uh, they it's style, bro. That's style, is it? Don't you think is that, it's is style? That, is that how you dress in Norway? Go all the way up. Is that oh. Jeff? AJ, the one in the blue, is that Jeff Beckham? <laughs> look at the one there. Look, Trump. Trump and um, Putin. Oh, no, as Billy Vanilli. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> are we, are we going to get... Like taken out for that one. I'm gonna tell you one thing though. What he did kill himself because of guys like you made fun of him. By the Who? way, the guy to the left, John oh, no. Bridge, yeah, Rob Pilates, oh, he killed no. himself after they got caught for lip syncing. He started with drugs and everything. Oh, he killed no, himself. It triggered him because the thing is, think, think the s simple things can send send somebody on a bad path. I'm sad. I'm very sad to hear that. Sorry, that's that's not nice. That's not mm. nice. Yeah. <laughs> the way you just I've gone oh. really depressed. Just, really, <laughs> just feel really depressed now. Oh no, but that's we're gonna be fighting at the limb here. <laughs> they used their the first contract they got. They spent all the money on their hair. What? Yeah. That must have been. A you know the guy who did Bonnie Tyler. Ooh, Bonnie, dude. You know the Bonnie Tyler thing. Need a hero. What? Daddy um, cool. No, you completely lost. Forget about it. bodybuilding talk. <laughs> bodybuilding, yeah. Three shows. Yes. Let's go to our first show. Costa Rica. Puerto Rico, bro. <laughs> Costa Rica. You're very bad at geo. What's it called? Co geo. Costa Coffee. Go Puerto Rico Pro. Okay. First show of the season with all classes. Female female bodybuilding was we gonna talk about that was a weird thing. What? To the open first. Oh right, yeah. First to the open. Yeah. Come on in. One by Which sorry, which show? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico Pro. Oh, John De La Rosa. Only four guys doing it. Very disappointing. Five. Very disappointing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very disappointing. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. John De La Rosa. Well, two shows on the same weekend, Cali Pro and the John De La Rosa improved from New York Pro. Yes, so he was, he was he was improved as much as I thought he could improve, and he did. He, he what he said he was going to do, he did. With so the that help was, from Neil Hill. 
Yeah, fair play to Neil. He did a really good job there. Fantastic. He beat a Fantastic. faded Milan Sadek, who faded. Yeah, I was expecting to be a bit closer. I was it expecting close, Milan, no. but Milan, but Milan was quite handily defeated there. And some good, but a good, good year for Milan. Milan Sadek. I mean, third place at the New York Pro, second at the Puerto. Uh, well, it's only five guys. The four guys doing it, so well, second is not exactly. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a point. I see a point. Uh, the fourth guy. Look, uh, the third guy, the big Italian, got good potential. The huge Italian with the dark hair. I can't remember. So John De La Rosa going to yep. Olympia with that win. Yes. Uh, fitness. I don't remember the win. I'm disappointed. Minna got eight. Yeah. Minna Pugliotti. What's happening there? Do you think she's... Somebody said on there she's too big for fitness. So she told me she weighed 73 kilos. Oof, that's that's a lot of weight clambering about. And the other girls weighed about. 55, 56 kilos. Yeah, yeah. I remember the... Um, what's the, the big German? Regiane de Silva. Oh, she's She's great. fantastic, but fantastic. She's, a, she's a tall, big, muscular woman. And that stage... It really like you can see it shakes because she's you know when they're doing those kind of moves and they're banging on the Ooh. you know on the floor and the full weight. The thing is, there's a lot of room for injury there as well. It's very so the smaller ones they can jump and do flick flacks and all the you know and all the the fancy stuff. But uh, so what do you think uh, Mina's going to do then? Do you think she does powerlifting. She does fitness. She does. She's going to do Miami. Physical figure. She does. And she's going to do Miami now. Okay. And another show. She's doing a lot of shows. A lot of shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the she looked good. She looked good. 212 class was <clears throat> won in Puerto Rico by. Sorry? Puerto Rico 212? Uh, my mind's gone blank. Are you trolling me today? Aren't you a rain man of bodybuilding and everything? Come on, then tell me. Eduardo Correa. Oh, Eduardo, yes. Beat uh, yes. Alex Cambanero. E in and, uh, no, Cambanero is the, uh, the classic. No, no. We're going to get shit for this. 212. 212? Yeah. Who are you talking about? Of course. Who did Eduardo Correa? Who did Eduardo <laughs> Do you know what? It's, it's like, my mind's so fresh with the, the Correa, Toronto Pro. Eduardo Correa won Puerto Rico Pro. And yeah, he yeah. Beat, he beat... I can't remember. Oh, I, honestly, I'm, I've been, I've been look, all I've been looking at is Toronto Pro stuff this, today. A great competitor. Feels ages ago now. Yeah. Port no, come on. Who did he? Come on. We got to remember. Come on. Eduardo Correa beat... Well, Eduardo Correa run, run, won, so he is now going to the Olympia. So that's fantastic. Rep, rep, redemption it's, from it's, the it's, New York Pro fiasco. Doesn't New York Pro feel months ago now? Yeah. The thing is, there's so many shows at the moment. There's two, sometimes two a weekend. It's hard to kind of remember them all because... Let's, get, let's test our... Who won female bodybuilding? Margie. Gino. Puerto Rico Pro. Puerto Rico. I didn't really follow them on. Jesse Martin. I didn't, what, didn't really pay attention to the She looked very... Uh, what can I ask? Here it comes. Who won the female physique class? Oh, Margita Zamalova. You like her? Can we go on? Can we, can we go in? Can, can we well, see her on she, Google? She's, she might be one of the reasons my partner Rosie retired. <laughs> Fantastic. Margarita? Yeah, Margita. Margita? Margita Zamalova. Zamalova. Yes. What amazing physique. Yeah, very good. Do you know what? Do you know what she's done? She's managed to get really, really, really hard shredded condition, but still retain. She it's hasn't got feminine. a skull. Yeah, I don't know how she's uh, done that. Go to the yeah. one in the middle, next to Juliana. Yeah, that was the Olympia last year. That, she yeah, did. Let's, the girl on the right there. there look at her next to Juliana. Yeah, yeah. Shit, she does look good next to. Her. Look yeah. next to Juliana. Look at the bicep. Look at but the look at the faces. That's. I mean, the condition and the face don't match oh. up because normally when someone's in yeah, that kind of condition. Their faces are very drawn, but hers isn't. So fair play. That's that's a real achievement. So she won. And, and to me, mm -hmm. isn't she bigger than Jesse Martin, the girl who won female bodybuilding? Uh, we we'll get back to that to the next contest. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, the bikini. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> who won bikini? I don't it know. was. I heard they fell down the crack. In the stage. Come on. Now they're too thin. The wasn't it, wasn't no, no. our Maria Pellegrino? Oh. Um, no, she didn't win. No, she didn't win. <laughs> I have no idea. Bikini. I'm too busy thinking about the Toronto. Mate. Okay, next show, California Pro. California Pro. Patrick Moore. Yeah, I was really happy about that. He took eighth place the year before. He's our guest on today on Global Muscle, episode 23. Oh, we get all Very the winners, of that. course. I mean, we also got John De La Rosa on, so we yes. got two other open winners. Yeah, fantastic. So we had Patrick Moore beat a yeah. very popular Tim Budensheim in second. Yeah, Tim Budensheim. Tim's doing well. Sixth, sixth at New York Pro and second here, so he's doing very, very well. Um, I, what's what's that guy? One thing before you go. What's that guy who keeps? Uh, who's the black guy? We, you, uh, your, our friend um, Jeff Beckham. <laughs> All black guys is Jeff Beckham. Still who's our, who's our, our supporter? The guy we shout out to our Jewish friend. Oh, Nigel uh, Lomax. Tim, that he loves Tim's Budenheim. He'll know, he'll understand this inside joke. Okay. <laughs> so he beat yeah. Tim Budenheim, Patrick Moore. Lovely guy. <laughs> Do you remember I said? No, actually, this is. <laughs> 
<laughs> I accidentally said on one of the previous episodes, I said, yeah, he's a lovely gay. But I meant to say guy. And it was a genuine, genuine slip. Because sometimes I do these things and I'll... It's not even a Freud... It's not, is that a Freudian slip? No, it's not. No, it's, not. It's, it's just a genuine mistake. And big freaky condition in third. What's his name again? Who? Third place. Toronto... Uh, Sorry, California what's... Pro. California Pro. Oh, uh, Josh Wade. Yeah, fantastic condition. Con- so his yeah. shape, that's not exactly Serge Nubre, yep. but condition is really yeah. crushing. In the legs, the oh. glutes, the hamstrings. I mean, you know, I respect really, really good condition. He writes, he's one of the, f- he writes for MD. I almost said something inside about MD, but he writes. What's it? Yeah. 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 Sponsored by Allmax. Sponsored by Allmax. Allmax, yeah, good company. He writes his own articles, by the way, guys. Yeah. Like me. Very hard, dedicated worker. Yeah. Comes in super conditioning. You yeah. come in I've third. Ne- I've never actually spoke to him. I'm so not reach out too much. So California Pro. Patrick, mm-hmm. uh, what do you like about his physique? Patrick Patrick, Moore. ah, the shoulder to waist ratio. I like the clean separation. I like the aesthetics. I like, he just looks healthy. I hate that word healthy, but he looks clean. He looks, you know, the lines are clean. It's not a physique that's built by boatloads of drugs it's a uh, you know and he's coming up fast like I only turned pro in 2017 he's very impressive going into that can you tell when a person is built up on both yeah. of the drugs you can just tell how can you tell what's it, the what's the three uh, signs the most you would lack say? of separation yes um you can tell by the look of the skin you can tell by the face what do you mean look of the skin what do you mean then well like, like if the skin's very oh, I don't know. it's um it's usually things like insulin and mega high doses like if they like the very red in the face you can. It, it's. Just, I can't really explain it. I can. It's just the thing is, and to be honest, I can't even guarantee it because it's. It's more an assumption. But obviously, you do. I do speak to some of these athletes. Yeah. And some of them do tell me, and you get a feel for their kind of protocols. And um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's one of those. Uh, yeah, and it just chemically physique you can kind of tell. You can. I, I, experience uh, has given me that. So Patrick Moore. Hmm. Came from eighth place last year. Yeah, he was eighth place. He was thirteenth place at the New York Pro the year before. He'd only turned pro in 2017, mm. and then he went from eighth to first this year in arguably the, as tough a competition. Really, well, there was last the year before there was Nathan Diash, Sasan Harati, Gerald Williams. What's going on with Sasan Harati, man? I don't know. I Is need he to reach out. To him. Or what's going I don't on? know what's going on. Well, he, he seemed in quite a negative place last time I spoke to him, but I hope he's okay because I like I like Sasan, and he is he's top ten Olympian material. That guy, but he was so disappointed he didn't get the the invite. To the, to the Arnold um, you I, wish he, I wish he would just go and do the British Grand Prix I know it's very short notice now but that's a show I'd like to have seen him do but think I don't know I suppose he's got to go up against Nathan isn't he but he's he could, yeah. oh, Nathan eye injury sadly what was that oh, so what? Nathan had a horrible eye injury like he has a horrible eye injury. Was it an eye Some injury? Some infection in his yeah, eyelids. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't go to the doctor because he's so dedicated. <laughs> dedicated. Why, why are you laughing? <laughs> didn't <laughs> go laughing? to the doctor because he's so dedicated. Well, he, first of all, we, we talk about... You don't want to go blind. You can't. First of all, I almost forgot. What? Rest in peace to... Matt... Uh, Matt uh, Porter. Matt Porter. Matt Porter. Oh, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Of course. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. Oh God, that was ter- terrible. Rest in peace to Matt Porter. Right. He was very. <clears throat> I never met him. I've never spoke to him. <clears throat> Pardon me. But he was somebody that was always very, very well thought of, very well spoken of, and um, yeah, seemed I- to coach a lot of athletes. Got a lot of good results. Uh, my heart goes out to his 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 his, his wife and child. Uh, I think he's got is it one or two children. Um, like I said, I wasn't that familiar with him because it was actually um, Goon that messaged me in the middle of the night and he says, oh, Matt Porter's, you know, died. Mm. And uh, yeah, I was like, I know the name. I, know I don't name. know him personally, no, no but I, but I only him heard good mm. things about him. Yeah. Yeah, very sad. So rest in peace to Matt Porter. Yeah, very sad. So we don't know him, so we can't speak too much about yeah, him. Yeah. But, but um, still a um, name in the body. Mm-hmm. When somebody dies in the bodybuilding industry, it's always sad. Yes. Um. Nathan Diasha, no, so he didn't want to go <clears throat> to the doctor. Mm-hmm. So it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then he went to the Ooh. doctor. Have you heard about the story, Chris, about Nathan? Nate? No. Chris? I heard about the story about Nathan. No, he's no? texting. He's texting. He's researching. No, no, oh, he's no, researching. He's researching. No, yeah. so Nathan uh, almost got blind. Yeah. So he has to go to antibiotics and all these things. And, mm. But he said he's still going to keep on pushing for the 13th of June. 30th of June. 30th of June. <clears throat> yeah, British Grand Prix. We're going closer and closer, aren't we? Yeah. Who's doing it? Uh, well, James Holland said said he was 
I'm sure he said on his Instagram he wasn't doing any more shows. James Holland said, is, well, talk, come to him in a bit. Come to him in a bit. He posted, bros to pros posted, he's going in his James Bond outfit and all this, you know, with the suit, you know. Don't they? I've not seen that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've not seen the boxing one. Announced he's going to do it, but I talked to James, he said he's not sure. Right, okay. So I don't know. It's a lot of prepping, though. I mean, he's done, what, three shows now, isn't he? Yeah. Done New York so- Pro. Toronto, what was the one he did before? He's done another show. This is his third show. Mm. Third show. So it's, uh, but I think he looked really good in Toronto. Really good in Toronto. Oh, third in the Spain, big man show. Mm. Of course. Yeah. So California Pro, okay. Yeah. And then we go, who won the California Pro 212? That was no 212 show, was it? No. No. And now Toronto Pro, mm-hmm. last weekend. Yeah. Our winner, who was our winner? Toronto Pro. <laughs> my mind's gone blank. Are you completely lost it today, Jao? Um, <laughs> are you so hot by Lila Brother that you can't I'm, even I'm remember s- what I'm so upset about? about my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. You can cry if you want to. <laughs> cry if you want to. I did as well. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you cry on your birthday? A little bit? I always cry on my birthday. Oh, man, Rosie, you got to put more time and effort to it. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, it is what it is. It is what... Two time... Pro winner, 2019, John De La Rosa, Toronto. Player. Yeah, it looked fantastic. He beat, uh, I expected more from Ian Valier. Ian Valier. Yeah, do you know what, though? With Ian Valier, um, if, you look, if you look at him from last year and he did the Indy Pro, then he did the, the Spain big man, and then he went to the Olympia. He got better as he went along. Yeah, but we're not talking about the future. We're talking about what's happened right now, and it didn't oh, yeah, but impress me. I'm saying, I'm saying he will get better if he does more shows. Well, he has to do more shows, because otherwise... It's not like he is a top ten Olympia guy. Did he disappoint? Yes or no? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I yeah, wanted to did. talk about. Not what's going to happen in the I future. I think I think he can be better if he does a couple more shows. He turned 100%. around. There was no improvements in the back, was there? Not really. No, and I've seen his legs with more pop. His side shots were very side tricep and his side, his ab shot, his quarter turns. I mean, they are incredible. He was picked, and his most muscular. Is he was picked freaky. to to be the, He was. A, Picked to win this show. Yeah, he was picked to be the next Mr. Olympia top ten eight. Place. Yeah, but he can still do that. He can still achieve that. He can. See if he, yeah, yeah. I, I could. He could turn the tables on John. I think he could turn the tables on John. John might. Has John peaked? Can John get better? I think John. Yes. Can, I, can, I think John can still get two or three percent better for the Olympia. Yeah, get a little bit more quad, like a little bit yeah, there on the legs, just, a little bit. Yeah, he's very. He's two percent off being as good as he can be with the physique he has. I think he's very, very good, John DeLorenzo. And another strong showing in third. Good. <laughs> What's our, Tell me, Mr. Condition. Oh, Josh Wade. Another third of place. Of course, yeah, yeah, Josh Wade. Yeah, 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 look fantastic. Yeah, he's doing really well. He's doing really well. Uh, surprise, fantastic. Not surprise for us. Mm-hmm. Quinton Araya in fifth place. Oh, wow. Well, first 20. Got, to, and in four, talk about him for, in fourth place. The guy impressed you a lot, didn't he? In fourth place, Seaman something. Oh, yeah, um, John Seaman. You impressed you, didn't he? Spunky name, isn't it? <laughs> John Seaman. Gonna give you a... Anyway, he impressed, <laughs> Sorry. he impressed you, didn't he? Oh, it's fantastic. Well, he actually turned pro at the show. What? At the show? Yeah, he turned pro. He won the amateur. And then he wow. went and got fourth in the pro. And beat all the pros. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. That ruidable bicep, the condition. In the, the, for a big guy to have the condition and separation, very, 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 very impressive. He, he's, a, he's a coach. I'm going to mm. get him on, actually. I'm going to get him on the show. I'm going to reach out to him. Um, seems like a really nice guy. In fifth place, a little bit surprised because he said he's going to do the classic. Yeah, was he trolling? Quinton Araya. Do you think he had any... We had on Global Muscle episode 18 or 19? Yes, but did he have any intention of doing the classic? Was it just a publicity stunt? What type of publicity stunt would that be? I don't... What what was he doing that for? I don't understand. I have no idea. He told us he's going to do the classic. Yeah, he said, I'm switching the classic. I'm thinking, no, he's too big for classic. Why is he doing it? And then he's uh, all of a sudden he went up and open. Got fifth. Incredible. Wow. Did you see him backstage with Sean Rodden and Flex Lewis? No, I didn't see a picture. You got really good. The thing is, that's some. I'll Huge. say this, AJ. AJ, I'll say this now. That is a Mr. Olympia structure. Who do you like the most, him or Sibu Suzuki? Sukello. You can only choose one. You can't oh. see the same. Uh, oh no, you can't do this to me. Yeah, of course you can't. And do remember, this to me. Uraya is only twenty-four and Sisuku is twenty-eight. In twenty-seven, or twenty-eight. Yeah. Oh God. Ah, oh. it's like. Comparing Lee Haney to Sean Roden. Lee Haney's much better. Okay, then Quinton's better then. Mm. Well, I 
Are you they really both, they, they both, AJ, they both need to bring their back up. They both, I mean, thing is, Quinton, it's Did like- you have to think about Lee Haney and Sean Roden? Seriously? Even, Lee Haney's the greatest of all time, almost. AJ, even with like all the detail he's got, it's still what I would term as baby muscle. Yeah. And he's going to hate me for this. I still think he's, I wasn't that impressed with his posing routine. Ooh. Quinton. You weren't, huh? No, I wasn't. No. I was expecting something wow. Because he, he knows how to pose his physique in a very classic aesthetic manner. But when I saw his routine, I was like, I thought it was his 60 seconds where he comes out by himself. And I was like... <laughs> Which song did he post though? Do you remember? It was just not memorable. It wasn't. I was, oh. There's a guy, if I had that physique, I would really... I mean, he's 24. I mean, the oh. guy... The guy... Ugh, I can't even explain how good did this... Did Zane Watson help him with his routine? Is that what he said? Did he? I don't know. I just think the standard of posing is so poor nowadays. Mm. Saint Watson is a great poser, though. The Saint Two Twelve guy. Saint Watson? No, Zane Watson. Chris. What? <laughs> Zane Watson? <laughs> no, Zane Watson. The two. The Zane. AJ. Whoa. Go watch the nineteen ninety one Olympian. Watch Lila Brada pose, and then then come back to me and say that that is. As good as that's really amazing posing. If you're going by today's standards, then yeah, Zane Watson is one of the best posers today. But the thing yeah. is, I started following the sport in 1990. Come on. Yeah, but still. Flex Wheeler, Sean Ray, Kevin Lavrone. Every time Zane Watson is on, he steals the show with his routine. Yeah, but it's not hard. I know. It's not hard <laughs> no, nowadays. But, but it's still, still best of a bad bunch. Who's the top three best today? Posing. Oh, you said God. it before, I think. Really? Number one is. You really, I'm really struggling. Yeah, no, that's why. Who's your opinion? Who's your top three? Uh, Bonak's actually quite a good poser. Give you name. can't say Dennis Wolf anymore, can you? Because he's retired. Is this my comeback men's physique? <laughs> 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 no, no, it's not coming back in men's physique. Uh, I would unfriend him. <laughs> why? You don't Dennis like Wolf. Can, can you imagine Michael Edwards have a heart attack? Oh, Michael Edwards was. Men's physique, man. Dennis Wolf. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and also um, in Toronto, no Haddy. Best posters. Back to that. Have you done the Haddy Koki? In, out, in, out, shake it all about? Careful, you don't get Haddy fans on your ass now. Oh, God. I yeah. can't Sorry, protect guys. you against them. No, no, no. Yeah, but. Oh, come on. <laughs> They're saying he's in, then he's not doing it. Before then he is. Best three posters. Come on, people want to listen. I'm trying to avoid this. Bonac. Bonac. Oh, posing so bad. It is though. It is. It's terrible. Okay, ball neck. Do you know what? I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. And, I'm gonna try and get out of this one. I want to see Flex Lewis when he comes back as an open. Forget about do a root. Do a routine as good as okay. Labrada. So you have ball neck. Or that so won't happen. Not as good as Labrada. But ball neck. Uh, yeah, but Flex Lewis got good work ethic. Okay, ball neck. <laughs> it's ball neck, ball neck, ball neck. Um, I got Jeff Beckham. I've not seen him pose. I got Samson Dowder. Uh, yeah, you've seen him in Romania. I haven't seen him pose yet. And I got... I've seen him on video, but I, you got to see somebody in the in the flesh, really. The posing so shit. So I got Samson, oh, Jeff. Cedric's quite a good poser. Samson, Jeff, Cedric, and St. Watson. But I don't... 212 class is not open. So we got to go with open. Open I is honestly, the better my boys. mind has gone blank. Jeff Beckham, Samson Dowder, and Cedric Mamillan. Uh... I do think Cedric is a little bit better than Bonac to post, isn't he? Cedric, yeah, Routines. Cedric wings it though. Cedric wings it, but it's still quite good. But sometimes with Cedric, I'm always left wanting more. You're yeah, like, he just gets into it and then it, it when stops. he goes out slowly to that dramatic music. Yeah, but he, yeah, yeah. and he needs to change the music as well. Yeah, he uses the same freaking music for years. Though. Come on, Cedric. Uh, Stop yeah. trolling. Okay, Toronto Pro. Yep. Ron Harris told us Huddy's in. Sorry, I'm just going to read my column. Uh, he <laughs> <laughs> right at the front. Oh shit! Kevin Lavrone's in front of me. Oh, bollocks! Uh, Toddy was in Toronto Pro. Ron Harris said what? Sorry. To Ron Harris <laughs> said Toronto. Did you see the comment? Anyway, Ron, Ron, did Amazing. you see the video camera comment? Wonderful Com writing. Sorry. Where is it? It's my column there. Can Royal Roly royally return? Say that ten times. Can Roly royally return? Can Roly royally return? <laughs> Ro so Huddy, Huddy was supposed to do Toronto Pro. People said he was in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, he's at, there. At he's team. landed. Mahmoud had told Dura, whatever his name. Mahmoud, how do you say it? Oh, Dura. I think he's calling Dura. Yeah. He's very good. He's very good. A lot of fans. He told Ron Have Harris. Have you seen all the comments? I think he told Ron Harris he was in Toronto. 
Toronto? Hardy, Hardy. Yes, sorry, yes, don't, y- sorry, yes. So people um, got excited for Hardy Shoop, Hardy, that's Iranian, Persian, Iran, uh, Hardy Chupan? Yeah, Hardy's, yeah. I, I think Hardy should come back as an Open. Do you know when I saw Hardy at the- You um, can't go into any countries, Jazz. Oh, How no. can you compete in Open if you can't go to any countries? Hardy, if you're watching, Hardy Rambod, get him, um, get him up to 100 kilo and stick him in the British Grand Prix. I want to see him go up against Nathan Diasha. Can he go to England? If he can't go to Toronto, if he can't go... 101 kilo version of Hadi that we saw at the 2017 San Marino up against Nathan Diasha at the British Grand Prix. Who wins? Up against Nathan Diasha. What package, Nathan Diasha? The package he's going to bring in a few weeks. Since Nathan Diasha is a legit top seven at Miss Olympia, uh-huh. you got to give him the credit. <laughs> No, I think Hadi beat him. Yeah, that's what you said. But the Hadi that I saw at the oh, San Marino, Nathan, 101 Nathan, kilo. Yeah, so it's the pride of the UK, man. No, he beat Nathan. <laughs> this is why I'm saying Hadi needs to go open. He does. He needs to go open. Honestly, 101 kilo, that's 222 pounds. Mm. I haven't just worked that out. I worked it out on a calculator the other day. <laughs> so, well, that's a chicken you eat. Yeah, man. steak and eggs I had at the lean eggs. kitchen. Lean kitchen. Yes. Um, Toronto Pro, 212. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on with Hadi. Hadi. Yes, no, I think Hadi should uh, just, I don't think he should even bother. If he can't get to the Olympia, there's no point doing 212. Shows. There's no prize money. There's no prestige. Because really. There's no prestige. Hmm. Do you just dis- no. Okay, I'll <laughs> take. No, there's less prestige than if he goes and wins and beats people like Brandon Curry, Nathan Diasha, which he's done, which he can do. Honestly, I think Hadi, you've not seen Hadi as an open. It, it blew my socks off. For people at home, when Giles off. log on to MD boards, yeah. when he's impressed, <laughs> do you remember 2017? Guys, I have seen the next Mr. Olympia. I have seen Hadi. Ah, he was, remember how excited you were uh, yeah. when you saw Hadi in San Marino? You yeah. were oh, you were almost coming in your pants. Yeah, twice. <laughs> <laughs> No, he was, honestly. Oh, it was. you were impressed. I was like, what the fuck yeah. is that? And I have a, pr- a friend of mine in, Nor- <sighs> in Norway. He's seen a lot of shows. He, s- he said, rise to the top. Was Silver. he there? Was he there? He saw uh, Hadi in person against uh, uh, Nicholas Valud. Right, okay. He said, Nicholas is a freak. Yeah, he yeah. He says, Hadi is the most impressive guy. He's oh, you saw him in Portugal? Yeah. Yeah, when he... Uh, had he won the 212 at the Portugal last year. And everyone's saying, oh, he looks so much better as a 212. He doesn't. I've seen him at 222 at the San Marino. And I'm telling you, there was many people there that had him beating Cedric, who was on. Now, Cedric is a potential Mr. Olympia. And I'm telling you, no one Cedric would have argued not, if... Well, no one would have argued potential if... potential Mr. Olympia. He's not even top six, bro. Yeah. Well, what, what did Ronnie do in 1997 to 98? Yeah, but he didn't compete 10 years without making Olympia, though. And he was drug free, wasn't he? Sorry, I've lost your point. Cedric, you said he's potential Mr. Olympia. Yes, he is. Yeah. Well, Roden, what about Roden? I'm going to say that. Ro- no, Sean Roden is a top two guy. He came top t- three in 2016. Yeah, but in two that, are we talking about 2018 here? Because 2017, he was starting to slip, wasn't he? Because he had the injury. Yeah, but Cedric hasn't even reached top six or seven. Nothing. Got seventh in 2016. Yeah. And then what? Yeah, well, I tell you, he did look good at Arnold Australia. If he could bring that package. Thing is, he didn't even beat Bonac, did he? Hmm. Well, that's not even uh, Bonak. Bonak is a top. Is it, didn't you say Bonak didn't win also, Mr. Olympia 2017? Oh, you never let that go. Because that's you? so, you're snitching on yeah, me to Phil Heath. You say it's such snitching a, on me to my friend Phil Heath, who I was talking well, to yesterday well, for an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, also, also, let's let's use a se- segue now. Um, We're not finished with Toronto Pro, by the way. But okay. we can come back to it. We can come. We can okay. circle round. Um, Chris, can you go to the Valuetainment interview now? Go to. Literally the word entertainment, but take the E-N off and put the word value. Some guys say that we too do a lot of sucking about Phil Heath. I notice it. That we do a lot of sucking of Phil Heath. <laughs> you get the comments. I like Phil. I like Phil, though. That we are Phil Heath fanboys, you and me. Well, uh, well, we are. I was really the fanboy. Now you're also a fanboy. I'm a total fanboy. It might look bad for the people who feel... Because Phil Heath's got a lot of haters still, you know? Well, they're entitled to their opinion. Yeah. I think they're wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, but I've got... I feel like I've got to know the guy. and So that's Phil Heath, Confessions of a Seven-Time Mr. Now, Olympia. If you, can, if you can see on the screen, Valuetainment, this is, um, this is a big website. Now, this is a, yeah. a big platform. They've had my hero on. Dr. 50 George. Cent. Not my hero. Who's my hero? Lee Haney. He is a hero of mine. But Paco not... Batista. Uh, no, we're talk- talking about more mainstream. John Meadows. Dr. Do- 
Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you like what? Yeah, I love him. Who are all these love guys? For... Keeps, okay. me, keeps me right. Look, Ben Shapiro is had on. This guy's a smart guy to the right. Obviously, Phil yeah. too. And he, did you know what, though? He says very little. Yeah. He doesn't do much interviewing. He just lets Phil talk. And if you scroll down, uh, Chris. Look at the comments. Well, scroll down. Just take a look at the comments. Yeah. Let's read the first comment. I know where you're going with this. I've got to be honest. Phil surprised me here. Never know how good of a public speaker you are. Yeah. That was a great interview. Good seeing, good seeing Phil. <laughs> Phil impressed me with humility. Phil has <clears throat> great communication. Good, good speech, but give that man that ro his Rolex Good speech. Back. I had honor meeting Phil Heat. If you go to a bodybuilding video, yeah. fuck Phil Heat. Do you know what it is? He's an idiot. This is, this, he's this. He's that. Th this is a very good point because whenever Phil does an interview for a mainstream... They love him. They love him. They love his confidence. They love his mindset. They seem to... It's like 98% positive. But if you go to the bodybuilding, oh. are we talking 60% negative? But is it because the people that make the <sighs> clickbait videos... Yeah, this feel heat a lot the last three years. Yeah, he's, 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 he's fair game, isn't he? They seem so, as fair game. For the modern you, the modern YouTube comments mm. it's about this thing yeah i know it's sad it's sad do you know what things with bodybuilding fans are very fickle so watch this interview guys if yeah you please do later, please do just watch it and make your mind about philly after the interview keep an open mind just look at it with fresh eyes and and just give an honest watch it watch it all and um yeah just yeah i, I just i just maybe you can see what we see did he answer you about our uh... not yet 212 Toronto Pro was won by Adolf. Yes, Adolf Quinn. No, not Quinn. I forgot his name now. Oh, God, it's really bad. Sorry. 212 Adolf. I'm so excited because we've got Lila Brad on the show. <laughs> 212 Adolf won. Yeah, very good, very good. He beat a very good Mohamed Dura. Yes, yeah. I'd like to see Dura. Dura is really impressive. Really impressive. Very really big for a 212. Impressive. He's got a lot of size. Could you see it go all Five. the way around? Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. What happened to Samir Trudy in 10th? He looked four weeks out. Look four weeks out. He's going to do... Uh, what's the show he's doing? He's going to... Is it Dallas? He's going for Redemption. No, he's going for another show. What was the show he's doing? Is it Dallas? I think he's doing one of the Europa shows. Mm. But he really needs to tighten up. The thing is... That's the top... I mean, there was no detail. Mr. Olympia 212 competitor, if, if potential Samir there. Samir Trudy's got... Well, he was third at the Arnold. He beat Dave Henry and uh, Jose Raymond. He trained in my gym in Norway before he went to eat some Sweden. <clears throat> he moved to Norway. What are we? Yeah. Just tilt your microphone down, AJ, please. Okay. He went to Sweden. Mm -hmm. He's from Sweden. Iraq. He's from Iraq. Went yeah. to Sweden. Went yeah. to Norway. Went to Iraq. No, went to Dubai. World right. traveler. Okay. I, I, I rode a uh, taxi with him at the Arnold once. How was, he, how was he in person? Do you like him? Nice guy, yeah. yeah. Nice guy. Yeah, really nice guy. Needs to get his ass conditioner. <clears throat> what he does. He's yeah. done a 10th place in a... In a sh no, no, no. You in a what? That's not. He shouldn't be ten I places know. at Olympia. He needs to pull it in. What, get, get some people that are going to be honest about his condition because he shouldn't be walking it, on stage in that condition. Because he's he, got amazing physique. But even though he wasn't uh, there on stage, uh, he got great seeing. He, uh, what's it called? Antoine Volant looking good in the with yeah, the yeah, happy yeah. and. Yeah. Come on, Antoine. We're rooting for you, mate. Come back next year. I'm glad he's kept his. Is he seems to have? I'm quite impressed by how he's handled all that. It's like he, it just not even phased him. It probably has, but... Toronto Pro Bikini. I was rooting for Jennifer Dory. You know Jennifer Dory? It's a new it thing in bikini. She lost to some girl called Attila something from Brazil, by the way. Jennifer Dory, she's dating Mark Antony, our guy. Oh, stop, wake up. Hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, I thought you were singing me a lullaby then. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't care. I just don't care about bikini. You don't care about bikini at all, bro. Oh, Come so, on. I don't like the look they got nowadays. It's just, but I think we might have touched on this subject once or twice. When are we going to have our girl on? A bikini girl, the girl we talked oh, about. Uh, in, uh, oh, Natalie Mello. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm going to reach out to her. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, actually. I'll you reach saw out all the again. comments out positive towards her? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody. I love I love Natalia. Yeah, I bought her a lollipop once. You remember Diane Dahlgren? Who? Diana Dahlgren, the uh, Swedish uh, bikini girl. No, you don't. Ooh. Back in the day, glory days. No, 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 no. no. Uh, what about when um, the 18-year-old the won the Olympia? The daughter. The mum competes in the bikini as well. <laughs> Negra Negrani, Nicole Negrani. Oh, yeah. I was at an after party when I kidnapped Kevin Navrone, 2010 Olympia. I had Zach, we all in a cabana at the bodybuilding.com after party. Paris Warren back in a taxi? 
no, 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 there's no time. No, because I, I, I pulled up a limo and I grabbed Kevin Navrone and I threw him in the back of the cab. I said, guys, look who I've got. And they were like, who? And I went, Kevin Navrone. I literally threw him in. I, put, I was a bit drunk, so I threw him in and he's like, hey, guys. It was Ron Harris, Adina. Remember Adina? <laughs> you know Adina well, don't you? How long did you work with her? Uh, yeah. Oh, so you don't know that well then? No, I, I yeah, well, six months a year or whatever. And um, yeah, so we, we went to this after party and it was all free drinks. And I was making uh, vodka and cranberry is what uh, Kevin Brown likes to drink. I know four drinks at the bartender school, by the way. Fantastic. And then, <laughs> and then Nicole <laughs> Legrani walks three. in and I said, I said, hi, Nicole. Congratulations on winning the Olympia. Are you old enough to be here? <laughs> And she just, and the whole place went like, because like, you know, in America, America you know, really... they're very strict with that kind of thing. And I so was like. So you can buy guns everywhere. We can have a drink? Well, I mean, you know, it was just like, I think it was a bit of a joke that fell flat, which has happened sometime from time to time. Chris, how come you can buy guns everywhere, but you can't buy a drink? Mm. It's very strange. Do you think I get asked for ID still? Do you think? I, <laughs> I mean, it's been 16, 17 years since I was asked for when ID I in was, America. When I was 12, I used to buy drinks at the, for everybody in school. Did it? Because I had a little mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and I was tall. Was it, uh, was it a fake one? No, it was Rip real. Rip off one. Okay. Uh, Did your girlfriend buy porn for you, though? Oh, that's more your thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss you, baby. Uh, the Toronto Pro, back to that. Yeah. Um, Margarita won a Margita Margita Zamalova. Yeah, she yeah. won again female physique. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But this time she, did, she got she didn't make top ten at the Olympia last year, and I thought she should have been. So this she's guaranteed. She might be top five at the Olympia this year. She with two pro wins, that's a lot of momentum behind her. But Hopefully she'll the achieve. athlete of the show other than John De La Rosa. Ah, oh. Margie, be marvelous. <laughs> oh, he got, oh. Margie. She just. That was a that was like a big steam. That was a steamroller. What's the most dominating Miss Olympia win you've seen? Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie, two thousand three. Dorian, nineteen ninety three. Jay Cutler, two thousand nine. Yeah, probably Jay Cutler, two thousand nine. Oh no, Branch was good that year. Branch was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Jay, it was just put the leg down. It was over. Right, that's it, guys. You're, I'm I'm taking my title back, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, she did that, but in the female body class, eight other people. Yeah, that's but true. But still, true. she right. won the female bodybuilding class. Fantastic. Mm. Yep, fantastic. Uh, the, the judging in female physique and female bodybuilding mm. at the moment is very strange. There was another show I looked at. I forget the name very of the show. Very strange. And it was the girl that won. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had her. She was very big, very muscular. It's in like what? that's uh, in the physique. There was a couple of shows a few weeks ago. I won't even say the name of the show. And um, she looked very big to me, and I think, oh, come on, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be able to uh, d um, have a distinction between female bodybuilding and uh, and if the girls come in too big, they get marked down, and then eventually they can have the chance to switch to female bodybuilding. Because if but that was now that was wrong, that was wrong. In female physique in Puerto Rico, the female physique girl was bigger than the bodybuilding girl. Oh, and wrong. here, the bodybuilding female bodybuilding was proper female bodybuilding, yeah. Margie. <laughs> But you, you can't even. Amazing. But they switch from every show. How impressive! It depends who is the ma head judge. Yeah. Or whoever, whatever it is. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't What's know. going on? I don't know. You need a clear know. guidance. I, so I, need, I, need can... to, I need to study the pictures in the video more. Yeah. Okay. So Margie dominated. <sighs> I, didn't, I didn't expect Ooh. her to look quite. I mean, she's good. I've seen pictures. I've seen a lot of video. But honestly, that was that was. And thing is, she's still very feminine in the face. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I think she's one of. She's one of the most impressive fem examples of female bodybuilding that I have ever seen. Mm. Ever seen. The legs, the condition, the skin was good. She looked, she looked her posing was so good. Just a little Beautiful. bit more tight in the back. Yeah, a little bit more condition. A little then, bit more there. Just splitting hairs, like, but she's... she's no, she's, but just she, to... Do you think she's the best in the world at the moment? Well, we have to give the respect to Alina Popa since she won last Olympia. Well, I'd like to see the, uh, Alina at her best up against Margie at her best because I tell you what, that's going to be a very... Because uh, Margie's improved. Mm. Margie's improved. And does Alina Popa has the same shape, no, as, as Margie? Not mm. at all. She, I, think, I think Margie's on the rise. She's on Don't the rise. Don't you think so? Yeah. So. It's going to be great. We, yeah. we, like, we like to have on the Mo uh, Monique, but uh, it didn't work out. No. Monique Jones. She's also one of the girls that was really impressed me. Yes. Hopefully fantastic. we can get her on in the big. future. She's big. How long are we going for now, Chris? An hour. Oh, we better wrap up. Then we better wrap can, we, can we give maybe four or five minutes? Yeah. To Lila, yeah. to, 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 to Lila can, brother? Oh, yeah. Can I talk about Jim Etiquette as well? 
Okay, give a gym etiquette. Yeah, do you know what I saw in the gym yesterday? It's really not. I, it's baffled me. Someone started, sh- you know, the rope push downs, you know, you do with triceps. Yeah. Or well, someone started shadow boxing <laughs> on the ends like that. And then he started like flirting with a guy, a girl, a guy. who was training with her boyfriend and blatantly her boyfriend. So when the guy did that, the guy, because I was training a different gym, because my, 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 my main gym, Gemini Gym in Halifax, uh, it, um, it's all in a big mill. There's another gym at the other side of the building caught fire. It was a oh. big fire. So I was literally training in this. I was training in smoke the other night because I'm so hardcore. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I was training at a different gym and that's why my, my, my ass is very sore. My legs are very sore today. So mm. that's why I'm walking like a shit myself. And um, uh, what was I saying? Gym etiquette. Gym etiquette. Yeah, gym yeah. And then, and, then, and, then, and then I looked over. This is why I don't like training in busy gyms. I don't like Ponzi gyms where everyone's on the phone. I like training at rusty, dusty, old, hardcore gyms. Like It's like basically, it's like a temp. It's like my, having my own temple gym. And I like training there when it's absolutely empty. And then a guy did hack squats. And I think he had seven, eight plates aside on it. He got off it and walked onto the next machine, started using that. Another couple came over and he just watched them unload it. That is rude. Yeah. So, Jim, I think more of the story is. There isn't one. <laughs> just really annoyed me. <laughs> you say anything. No, yeah, there was moral of the stories. Yeah, yeah, just I think the moral of the story is I just. Then? No, I was just. Yeah, can I wanted to use that machine? I thought I'm not unloading that because I, I I actually did it once where I started throwing plates off the gym, off the gym, off the machine, leg press. I was throwing them and I must I just just lost my temper and I'm a headphones on. I have five finger death punch playing. Oh, you were going mental. In I mind. went mental and the, the gym owner comes up and I, and as I looked up, the whole gym had stopped training, was looking and they're going, and I must have just been in the. <laughs> and I was just like literally flinging plates. He goes, Jars, I thought you were going to come through the ceiling, mate. In my gym, Pretty you know well, what they do there yeah. after each set, Whoa. they stop up and do the men's physique pose. Oh. But these are not American men's physique guys on supplements. They're just natural guys <laughs> doing men's physique, so you can no. imagine how epic that is. There's a guy, there actually is a guy in my main gym that comes in and takes his top off. And all yeah, but these guys are right. natural, so they're, they're very small. Oh, right. So well, imagine you're doing a set of press, yeah. and then you do the men's physique pose. A bit weird. In the mirror, between Oh, no, each. no, no, no. I'd have to push him out the window. I'd have to push him out the window. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. well, we we're going to wrap it up. to wrap it up. Go home and eat some steak. <laughs> and shout outs are later. Later? Yeah. So okay. We got Leela brought on. Yes. Legend. 58, 59, 58. Le- the legend. <sighs> what a Te- what a class act. Teeth so bright. Like that's why you've got your shades. You didn't have your shades on. They were so what a man. What a beautiful man. John De La Rosa, two wins in a row. Yeah. Hasn't won the show since 2015. Two mm. shows this year. Yeah, cool dude. And the the arms of a god and the waist of a men's physique boy. <laughs> yes. Patrick yeah, Moore. Yeah. Abs of a classic guy. Absolutely. Arms of Phil Heath. Abs of almost. Serge Nubray, arms of Phil Heath. He's on the rise. There's a guy that you've got to watch out for. Patrick Moore. I hope There's you, a guy. You're going to enjoy that interview. Do you know why? Because he's got it up here. He's got the mind. Dorian, Flex Lewis, who's the Patrick master- Moore. Who's the mastermind again? Who's that again? The mastermind. Is that Charles Glass? Nickname. Mastermind. I don't know. The oh. mastermind. The Just mastermind. Class? Should we make? Should we just make a name Trainer? up? Or? I don't know. The mastermind. Is it Chris Asito? Who's the mastermind? The Chris Asito is the technician. Yeah. So who's the mastermind? I don't. Henny know. Rambot. Uh, George Farah. Uh, How many Rolexes just George Farah has? What? How many Rolexes? He's just got all of them. <laughs> he told me that once. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed the wrap up and. Uh, Hope you enjoy the guests because they are pretty epic and uh Leela Brother legend. <sighs> yeah. yeah, fantastic. Okay then. Big thank you there to High Tech Pharmaceuticals and we'll be right back after the break with our first guest, Pat John Della Rosa. <laughs> okay, and we are out. rolling and welcome back to md global muscle radio here at the pump meter studios joined by my co-host aj all the way from norway and we're joined by the two-time 2019 two pro champion john de la rosa yeah <laughs> fantastic results john fresh off his wit- second win yeah yeah it's been an incredible week wow. um super super excited to get it back to the olympia and yeah. um finally having the opportunity to show a glimpse of, of what I'm capable of. This was the John I've wanted to see since 2014. 
15. Yeah, 14. yeah, me too. Me too. Trust me. It's, <laughs> you know, it's so funny. It's not for lack of effort or lack of wanting to be there. Uh, it's just life happens, you know, and yeah. you kind of have to go through things. And I went through them and I kept plugging away and trying and trying and trying. And uh, for whatever reason, we're here now. And man, I just feel so grateful and blessed to to be in the position I'm in right now. You look tired, but happy, mate. Um, I'm over the moon. I didn't <laughs> sleep. If you can imagine, I didn't sleep at all on Saturday night. Yeah. I was trying. I was in bed. We went out for it. So it was my birthday two days before. Okay. Oh. What, was, it, what, was that Saturday? Uh, that was uh, uh, Thursday before we left. Oh, okay. Because okay. mine was uh, June the 1st. I thought we were, maybe we thought we were yeah, so birthday twins. We went out. We, we went out to dinner, and then we went out to a, a after party at some club that closed at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I got home at 3, and I just laid in bed, and I just kept replaying the last week of my life. And I'm oh. like, wow, this is crazy. So I didn't sleep much on Saturday. Sunday, I had photo shoots all day. Mm -hmm. And then I slept a few hours last night, but I'm just uh, just adrenaline and, and excitement and all that still running through me, you know? Are you, are you still in Toronto, or are you back home now? I'm in Toronto. I'm actually oh, still in, in Toronto. Hotel. Yeah. The hotel. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I was a uh, New York pro before we go yeah. talk about, before we celebrate. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What, what went wrong Because in New York pro? Yeah. And um, what did you change with the two last shows after that? Nothing, nothing changed at all. We had the same protocol going into the New York pro. The difference, honestly, was that it was our first show together mm -hmm. you um, and, neil and I, yeah yeah neil and i and um we took a very very cautious approach in carving up and dropping water and sodium and again he wasn't there with me so it wasn't like uh we were willing to take a chance and we, we almost kind of like just went into the show you know without mm -hmm. really manipulating too much um which i think was probably the best thing you know we went in there we still got a pretty damn good finish at fourth yeah um now i think i could have placed higher sure uh, i also could have placed worse you know so mm -hmm. it's a we all know it's a subjective sport and you know i certainly wasn't at my best i think this past weekend i was at my best and it showed i was so i thought it took real balls after winning puerto rico I thought, I think yeah. many of us just assumed, oh, well, he's got his qualification now. He's going to shut it down. He's going to do the Olympia. But when, no. I heard, when I heard you were doing Toronto, I was like, that, that's a really ballsy move because, yeah. you know, you had your qualification locked in, but you still wanted to go. Why did you, what was the reason? Was it because you were contracted or was it because you knew you could be maybe even better than you were in Puerto Rico? Several reasons, several reasons. So uh, primarily, um, Ron Hatch, who was a promoter of the show, and I, had discussed me competing at the show. I, I've done the show six or seven times now, mm -hmm. and I absolutely love the event. It's a great, he does a great job promoting the show and bodybuilding. And, um, so we spoke several months before. He's like, hey, you're doing New York. You're going to come back and do Toronto. I said, yeah, Ron, I will be there. So well, primarily I'm a man of my word, just like I was, I've always been. Mm -hmm. um, and I told him I would be here. And then I got my qualification to Puerto Rico, and I'm like, fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I, I I didn't want to go, but then it quickly turned into, you know what? I still have something to prove mm. because this isn't any, this isn't to take away anything from the guys that I competed against in Puerto Rico because they were phenomenal athletes as well. But there were four guys in the lineup yeah, and I felt that um, I still had much to prove. And I knew that the quality of competitors in, sorry guys. Sorry. So I knew that the quality of competitors in Toronto would be better. Yeah. Um, and there would be more guys in the lineup. And the little chirps of people saying, oh, well, there's only four guys. You got lucky, blah, blah, blah. So Neil and I took this immediate approach like, fuck this. We're, we're going to prove to them that we belong on the Olympia stage. We didn't just get in there with a, oh, I was a weak show, a weak lineup. We're going to go there and... You know, we're going to beat some of the best guys in this industry and we're going to show them that we belong. We're going to make a statement. And um, I think when I turned around, it was lights out. <laughs>
definitely because I, yeah. I, I i saw you at cost um costa puerto rico and i said that's that's a good version of john but i still think he could be three four i said on the preview actually with ron harris if you watch it i said i still think he could be three to four percent better and i'm really yeah. really curious to see if he can bring that to toronto because if he does and going up against guys like ian velier then i think he'll take it and i was so so happy to see like i said at the start this is the john de la rosa i've wanted to see for the yeah. last few years when you haven't been quite hitting the mark so it was yeah, it yeah. was a real joy to see because I'm a, I'm a big fan of your physique i always have been i know but, i know and i appreciate and love that so much guys but it's it's good to see an athlete at their potential you know it's just it's uh it, it was a real thrill not just for the fact that you'd won but the fact that you were bringing the best version yeah. of yourself you know yeah. yeah and that was what neil was saying the whole time he was like you know let's not make this about wins and losses let's make this about how can we get better yeah. as a team as an athlete as a physique whatever it is how can we get better and i mean guys you want to talk about like dedication <laughs> i literally i won to, i won puerto rico uh, we went out to dinner about 11 o'clock at night, 12 a.m. Right after the show, I was in the airport flying home at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got off the plane at 6.30, mm. and I did my fasted cardio at 7. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was right back to work because I knew I had four days. I knew Ian was going to be a very, very tough competitor. I knew that Josh Wade was going to be insanely in shape. Yeah. Um, so I knew what I was going against, and I knew that um it was it was now that i needed to capitalize if it wasn't you know i wasn't going to miss a step i wasn't going to miss a beat and I, and i literally put my head down and just went right to work were you were you lighter each show or did you not weigh yourself what was that sorry were you lighter at every show because oh, i mean oh, your condition yeah, was so sorry so actually for puerto rico i was a little bit lighter mm -hmm. um i was too the morning of Puerto Rico, I was 2.33. It was probably closer to like 2.35-ish on stage. And then, um, well, no, I was, about, I was about the same. And then for, for here, I woke up at 2.32, but we had more time to eat. So I was probably around 2.35 on stage as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you say you want to make a statement, do, do you feel you still got a lot of things to prove or to catch up? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, this wasn't about coming after any one competitor or, you know, wins or losses. This is, I mean, guys, this is more for me. I've just recently in my 35th year, coming into my 35th year of life, I've just recently learned to live for myself. Mm. Um, you know, again, not to bring up old news, but... I, my identity was so wrapped up in someone else and, and something else for so long, my marriage, that I kind of lost uh, what John really enjoyed doing, what John really loved to do, mm. um, what it was that made me happy, truly, inside. And, um, you know, I kind of lost that that dream. Um, I made a post about it today, you know. I've dreamt about being this bodybuilder since I was a little boy. And... Um, you know, I, it's in some ways I kind of let that go for to make other people happy. Right. And uh, you know, I, I just promised myself that I could never do that anymore, and I, I needed to take care of myself. I needed to see these dreams through, whether they work out or not. But I need to know that I'm giving it a hundred and fifty million percent before I walk away from this, because just like you guys and just like everybody else out there, I started to question myself, like, oh, maybe, well, maybe. This is just it. Maybe this is the best that I'll ever be. Mm. Maybe there's not much more that I can mm. give. And then, you know, I met Neil and, and Flex and they both, you know, and everybody around me, really, my family, my friends, my girlfriend, everybody's like, John, you have so much more. You're so you just need to, you know, get get it together, get get back in the gym, do what you need to do. And and now, again, I believe that, um, you know, I'm going to be one of the best in the world, maybe not this year. Mm. Um but certainly within the next few years, I plan on being at the top of the Olympia. So, I'm, you know, one of those top placings. What soon as you won this weekend, last weekend, mm. what was the feedback from Neil and Flex moving forward? Neil has a... Because <laughs> I know what Neil's like. I know, I know how his mind works. You know? Yeah. So Neil was very, very, very happy with the look we bought this weekend. Yeah. He, was, he was happy last weekend in Puerto Rico, but he still said, you know what, we can get three to five percent better we can still keep pushing mm. and uh i said 
coach, you, you got, you got the wheel. You tell me where to go and I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and he took, he, again, he took handle of the ship. I followed everything detail by detail and we got better. And immediately after walking off stage, he said, John, this is not to blow smoke up your ass. And you know, Neil, he's a very, he's mm-hmm. a straight shooter. If you look like shit, he's going to tell you, you look like shit. Yep. Um, he was like, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass. I'm not, you know, riding this high of excitement. It was like that rear double bicep, this physique that you bought is a top six Olympian. That's what I think. Yeah. That's what I got to, if, if you come into this Olympia, if you peak for this Olympia, realistically, mm. where do you see yourself then? If everything comes, if you come in spot on, seriously, realistically, realistically I, I, think, yeah. I think I can be in that top to six, six to eight spot. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of factors going into this year's Olympia. Uh, me and my girl were just talking about this, right? Kai Green is always a toss up. We don't know. He's, he's, he's not. He's him. not doing it. No. Well, yeah, that's what you know. But let's say, let's say he does jump in. That knocks out a spot in that top five or six. Ah, but he's not doing you it. You know, <laughs> Phil Heath. Phil Heath is another one that is. He's, we don't know. You know, so that that. You know, there's two spots right there that can knock me out. If those guys don't do it, I think I can squeeze into that top six. Mm. Um, if not, I think, you know, top six to eight would be more realistic. Um, but I think definitely top six to eight. Definitely. I th- honestly, I think if Puerto Rico was 93%, uh, John De La Rosa, and <laughs> Toronto is was what, 95? 96.3%, <laughs> <laughs> if we can get... 98 to 99 percent for the olympia i think realistically because ian valier last year what place did he get 14th and you saw when they turned around at yeah. toronto it was not even it was yeah. like yeah. out yeah. Uh, yeah i i think i think realistically fifth to eighth is a realist if you are marginally better for the Olympia, yeah. I think that's a realistic achievement. I honestly, that is, I'll, I'll, I'm going on record saying that. Um, Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. At a hundred percent, and you know, well, that's you know, I kind of. Uh, that's that's at a hundred percent, and I and I fully intend on. Look, Neil and I have really figured this thing out. I'd like to think, and um, you know, he he was just like the other thing. Neil Neil's such a just a an amazing coach. Uh, he he. He doesn't tout himself as one of the best, and and I really think he needs to acknowledge, like, he is fucking amazing at what he does. And, you know, to him, he was just dumbfounded. He's like, I don't know how you work with some of these guys, and they haven't figured this shit out, you know? Mm Because he's like, I thought it was going to be so difficult. He was like, it's not. It's not. And Mm -hmm. I think if we can just have that confidence and, you know, he's got the game plan. He already sent me over my game plan for the Olympia. <laughs> so, yeah. So he's given me three or four days, you know, just to kind of relax. Yeah, I did my photo shoots already. Um, we're going to eat some some food now and head back home and get right back on it for the Olympia. We've got 15, 14 weeks coming up. So. It's funny you said when he turned to the back and then Neil said, yes, it's lights out. For me, that's the that's the telltale pose with you. Because I remember when I saw it the Arnold last year when he hit Riddle Bicep and it was all kind of just washed out. Yeah, when I yeah. saw the pictures on the weekend, I said, the only picture I want to see is the Riddle Bicep because you, yeah. if your Riddle Bicep is on, you, top to toe, are on. That's kind of like, that's possibly your best pose, but you have to be in your best condition to yes. really look your best. Is there yes, any pla- that's so funny. It's so funny you put it that way. That is exactly what Neil said. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's a Welsh thing. I think it's a Welsh thing. Are you going to train yeah. with Flex Lewis for this Olympia prep? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Fantastic. We've already talked about it. And Flex is, uh, yeah, again, man, I, I can't thank these guys enough. Flex and Neil have been amazing. Yeah. Flex is like, he feels like he's he's so pumped up. He's doing the Olympia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's how, exciting. And how often will you train with him during a week? Is it three, four, three, three times, four every, times? Every day. Every, every day. day. I, I drive an hour and I go train with him every day. How long are those sessions? How long do you guys usually have a routine? How long when you work out? How long uh, is that? Minimum an hour and a half to two hours. Mm, cool. Yeah. Mm. We, we, I mean, like I said, it depends on what we're training. If we're, we're doing like a leg session, it's a little bit over two mm. hours. If we're doing... Let's say back. It's an hour and a half usually. Mm. So. I like what, I like what you said about how he, how Flex is as excited as if he was doing the Olympia himself because he's got oh, he's kind of I can see the way he's you know you two have really bonded. You've moved to Florida now, and it's uh it's so good yeah. to see that kind of 
because he's got a big heart, hasn't he, Flex? He's a really he sort does. of, he, he really, he really, he, I think he's so probably so excited to be a part of this journey and to see this resurgence from where you were, yeah. you know, a year and two years ago where, you know, obviously yeah. what happened happened, you know? So it's, yeah. it's good to see, it's good to see. And I, I like to see good people come together. Yeah. Thank you guys, man. Three questions. <laughs> yeah. One first. Who's going to beat who? You or, or Juan Morel at Olympia? Are you going to take him out? Oh, it's a man. New York thing. <laughs> well, Juan is uh, Juan has beaten me every single time we have competed together except for once. What Whoa. year was that? Yeah. When me. was that? Uh, when I played second at the New York Pro. Oh. He placed oh, third. Yeah, yeah last 2017. Mm. Right. That was Sergio. the last time that I had placed ahead of Juan. So he's definitely, you know... He, like, again, Neil and I were talking about, he's one of them that, you know, we're going to have to really push hard and mm. and make sure that we're 100% because Juan brings unreal conditioning, you know. Mm. So we're going to have to push the conditioning. I, I think that uh, if everything comes together the way we could, I think that I can end up placing ahead of, uh, again. Mm. Um, Nathan is another one that, you know, he's fucking full of muscle. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Another one that I think I can I can move in front of as well. Yeah, we have we have really lofty goals, man, and I'm really yeah. excited. Well, Nate, so, that's no, going to be a good fight. Yeah, but it's good though because uh, yeah. obviously they've gone up against each other. New York Pro, and it's been you know, I mean, yeah. it's, I, I think New York's going to be interested in seeing Juan go up against uh, John again. That's going to be cool. Uh, yeah. On yeah. Muscle Development, Ron Harris took a picture of you for the. Was that your new girlfriend? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> her name is Christina. Yeah, she's a she's a great girl. She's been, you know, we, I've been trying to keep my my private life a little more private just because of what I recently had gone through. Yeah, um, and things were just too out there, and uh, you know, sometimes you just feel like you want to keep things. Yeah, but yeah, she's been amazing through this prep. She's a beautiful girl. Um, mm. <laughs> obviously, everybody's been uh, making remarks about it. Yeah, yeah. all the guys on the forum. <laughs> AJ was before it. we came into the studio. He said, you see John's girlfriend, man. <laughs> beautiful. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Does she yeah. compete herself or? Yeah, she's a bikini competitor. Okay. She's, oh, not, cool. she's not as involved in the industry. She's very accomplished. She does uh, microblading for um, uh, cancer patients. Okay. So when cancer patients lose their their hair or whatever she she does a uh, microblading for their eyebrows pigment mm. um uh, reconstruction for nipples if they if they have mastectomies and stuff like that so you know she's busy with her career and stuff but she loves she loves competing she's competed in bikini before mm. um and it's great to be with somebody like that that is independent um you know makes her own money and, mm. and understands what i have to do as well you know obviously mm. I, having competed before she understands that sometimes we can't go out to dinner and I got to do my cardio and I got to eat my grilled chicken and broccoli and there's nothing else I can do about it. <laughs> you know? Otherwise you'll get told off by Neil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen, I've actually seen Neil give Flex a proper telling off once. This was at the 2011 Arnold Europe and Neil says, come up to the room. I want you to have a look at Flex. This is when he did, Flex did the Open. Yeah. 2011, I think he took fourth or fifth. And, yeah. uh, and uh, Flex, I walked into the room and Flex was on the bed and he was, he was just sweating because I think he was try uh, Neil was trying to cram so much food into him and I remember just Neil just going absolutely crazy because he hadn't quite finished the little bit of rice into the Tupperware <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was very yeah. guy sister Nino was like oh not again not again it was very it was yeah, a yeah. very funny situation like Neil was going why yeah. haven't you eat that tell like proper telling him off it was really yeah, funny yeah yeah, yeah. he's oh, very he's, strict he's strict but he has to be Neil Neil takes it very very yeah. personal and serious <laughs> yeah. which I love I uh -huh. love you know, I'm a so the best way that I can describe it to most of the people that don't know me is like when I, I'm a very, very coachable athlete. I, I consider myself a soldier, right, on the mm -hmm. battlefield. If I get orders, I'm going to fill those orders 100% to my ability. Mm. Um, so if he tells me, you know, count out 10 grains of rice and that's all you're allowed to eat, I'm going to count <laughs> out 10 grains of rice mm. and that's all I'm going to eat. Yeah. You know, some athletes and, and Flex is like this as well. I'm sure Flex has always just had trouble getting down the food. Um, but you know, I think that's what it takes to be an elite athlete is being able to follow orders directly mm. and just fill them as best as you can. Well, I think it's been one of the, I think overall, this has been one of the best, I don't even want to call it a comeback. It feels like 2011, 12 again. I was younger reading MD magazines, yeah. about John De La Rosa, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the yeah, next yeah. big thing. Yeah. And now yeah. finally, after years yeah. of uh, whatever, 
it's a new day, isn't it, John? Yes. I, yes. I, I, yeah, I know. You, it, you don't want to get to the point where you start to give up on one of your favorites. You're like, oh, right. I just feel like I'm, losing, I'm starting to lose faith now. But then to see this happen, and you exciting. feel the feedback from the fans, don't you, John? There's a lot oh, of yeah. good, like, yeah. Yeah. there's no negative. There's a lot of no. good feedback. It's great, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's been it's been amazing. I've been I, again. I just feel so blessed. The amount of text messages and good. DMs and private messages that I've gotten, just you know, people commenting on pictures has been. It just overwhelming mm. uh you know again i'm a big mush i got emotional last night just reading people's <laughs> things and it's mm. like man I, I can't believe like it's all the years of and look and the thing is this is just the tip of the iceberg mm. you know this is just getting started here but yeah. it's all feeling like it's starting to happen mm. you know and, and it just feels so good i think it's nice to see a new storyline going into the olympia as well yeah you know, because we all we all have the you know the, the you know the, the top three, top four guys or whatever. But it's nice to see these. Uh, it's somebody else to root for, other than those yeah. kind of handful of the top guys. You know, we're yeah. gonna make up the top four. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. but year twenty twenty, it's where we're gonna. Because now he's established. Oh. But it's the year twenty twenty that I'm more. Uh, that's gonna be the year that we we will see what John is really made of. <laughs> because that's, that's, that's when, the that's year you know. Said. That's what Neil said as well. He said, Was it? You know, yeah, he said, you know, 2019, we're going to make a statement. But he mm. said 2020, we're going to make a push for that title. Yeah. Um, he said multiple Arnold titles, too. So. so so you and Flex Lewis at the Arnold Classic next year? That would be amazing, oh. huh? Because <laughs> Flex has hinted that oh. when he comes back as an Open, he might come back as uh, into the Arnold Classic at Columbus, Ohio. So I think that would be a good move for him. That I would be a cool... Would. I'd love to see you two... In a readable bicep next to each other, both oh, at your both man. at your best. Oh, that would be exciting. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. You know, somebody made a they made a post about that too, like how how uh, close the comparison mm. is um, after training together. And it's pretty damn cool it's, to look. Look, because you're the same height. He's a little bit shorter We're about than the you. Same height. Oh, We're really? Because because interest because I mean I because I spoke to Flex and I said what 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 do you think your best weight will be as an open and he said two twenty six and I'm seeing you at what two thirty two you said you were two thirty two I was two thirty two two thirty three yeah so it's there's not a lot you know and you both got I think that real bicep you know if you squint I think there's a very similar shape there I yeah. just I, it's good to see those similar kinds of physiques at their best next to each other on the same on stage the classic year twenty twenty that is exciting well, yeah. I, I think Flex Flex has still got me on that real double he's just so thick back there you know he's got so much muscle I, he's just a little freak man he's a little ball of fucking muscle it's, i still got to, i still got some work to do to to you know catch up to that rear double i think i think a little bit more detail like i said you're at 96 percent now at 98.7 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to be so precise, but uh, well, I'm still a little bit disappointed in you, John. You're not using my hashtags. Ah, oh, shit. What's I, the hashtag? I, I'm so bad with it, man. I gotta, I gotta start using those hashtags. Oh, I remember. That. I spend up all night searching for hashtags oh, for John you? to use on his yeah. Instagram. He's yeah, not he even did. used one of them. Latino, AJ, AJ's Latino, been helping Latino me. muscle. <laughs> AJ's been trying to help me grow. AJ's been trying to help me grow, man. I really appreciate it. I've been so, my brain has been mush. Good. Hey, guys, th this is the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me as a pro. So, obviously, I've been dieting for five, almost six months now. And um, I was going over the, the program for the Toronto Pro. And uh, I said, okay, the, the athletes' meetings at 8 o'clock for men's bodybuilding, mm. right? And I'm going to see Coach. I'm going over his to his uh, hotel room, which thank God happened to be in the host hotel room where the meeting was. Yeah. I'm going up the elevator about 7:48, and I get a call from J.M. Mannion. He's like, "Hey, where where the hell are you?" And I'm like, "Oh no, I'm going to see my coach." Why? He goes, "You're about to miss this meeting. You better get your ass here, otherwise you're going to be disqualified." Well, I was like, "Holy shit!" You're happy you Sol Ray wasn't there, bro. Dude, oh. <laughs> Son Ray would have snitched faster than. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I missed it, but it said like it said all the other categories, uh, six to eight, and then at the very very bottom it said bodybuilding. Bro. Mm. Didn't say like men's open bodybuilding yeah. or anything. So I I assumed okay, well we're gonna be after the last class, which mm -hmm. is you know whatever I think it was women's physique or something, and then I was gonna be bodybuilding after eight, but. It was during that same slot, 
And uh, thank God, you know, somebody called me down and, mm, and that we were close in one. the same hotel. <laughs> wow. That was, yeah. that, would, that would suck. Yeah. Okay, yeah. John. Yeah. But, Sorry, God. But my brain has been very slow moving lately. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got Neil to think for you. It's okay. Neil, yeah. Neil and Flex can be your brain for the week. And can yeah. you please yeah. talk to Neil Hill for us and get him on the show? Oh, we could make that happen for sure. We you and Neil Hill are from Wales. I've known Neil since 1994. Hmm. Yeah. You let me know when and I'll make sure Neil can get it done. Good. Perfect. Okay then, John. Okay. Well, John, it's been, uh, well, as we, uh, what can I say? It's, it's, it, we're really happy about it mm. because we uh, know you're a really good guy. Good return. And, and it's, it's, we root for you as a human being, not only as a bodybuilder, because we, we, we really like Thank you as a person, John. So it, this is great results, but uh, the work is coming up, isn't it? It's, it's the future yeah. that we're going to be looking at. So, yes. yeah, we will see you at the Still Olympia, John. Be. We're looking forward to see you Absolutely. at the Olympia. Yeah, we'll be absolutely. Cool. And if you guys need me back on at any time before the Olympia, you guys know you you have my before number. Before the Olympia, well, we'll of be, course, we'll be banging on your door in Vegas in, with, <laughs> with, 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 with our camera crew. We'll be flooding your room. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. guys. Thank you so much for the call, though. I appreciate. Thank it. you. And All right. Just shout out to your sponsors or somebody. Yes, uh, Betancourt Nutrition. Thank you so much. Uh, Muscle Leg, uh, LWP. All my all the people behind me. I. I wouldn't be here without you guys so thank you all so much and uh stay tuned to my youtube and my instagram page guys i'm going to be putting out a lot of content going into the olympia good man yeah i'm rooting for that uh six seventh placing at the olympia fifth six, yeah <laughs> squeeze it to fifth maybe squeeze up so, to fifth. so one thing before he goes who is he going to beat you say he got this high who is he going to beat who's john's going to beat Giles? let's talk about it afterwards no we got to say while john is here who is he going to beat <laughs> well I haven't had chance. Is he going to beat have, Nathan Diasha? Uh, has Nathan qualified? Sorry, has Nathan have... qualified yet? Has Nathan qualified. Is he going to beat Dexter Jackson? Maybe. Dexter's qualified. Uh, no. I think Dexter's moving back up this year. We have, yeah, we have Dexter. I mean, there's a lot of heavy hitters. It's a lot of good guys. Yeah, I mean, it's the Olympia guys. It's the mm. We we set a very lofty goal. We said, you know, Top Neil's top. goals are a little bit higher than mine. Neil thinks five through eight. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say six through eight. You know, I think it, it realistically, I think I can squeeze into that. Yeah. Um, and again, everything has to be line up. You know, I have yeah. to be a hundred percent. Detail. Know, but, we want to see that detail, mate. That's because yeah. you've got you've got every single body part in abundance. You're great. Great roundness, great fullness. You just need that separation and detail, and that will <laughs> that will see you land in those spots a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so, that. You know, it, it really depends on what who. Who brings what on game day? Mm. The the only thing that I can focus on is bringing my best. And that's, mm. I think, if I do bring my best, I think it'll land me in one of those spots. Mm. Enough said. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. <laughs> All right then, John. Thanks for Thank coming on, mate. Guys. And we'll uh, we'll see you in Las Vegas, mate. Bye-bye. Say, hi to, bye say bye. hi to Neil and Flex for us, please. I will. I will guys. <laughs> Thank bye. you. Please. Thank you, John. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. There we go. Yes, fantastic, yes. fantastic. Nice little Dan de la Rosa. Nice little winner update there from uh, two-time pro winner. Uh, I keep saying Costa Rica, it's Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, and the Toronto Pro. Fantastic victory. He beat Ian Valier, Josh Wade. I mean, that was uh, Quinton area. Josh Wade is very freaky condition. Josh yeah. Wade, very freaky. I respect that. Mm, I like condition. Very freaky. Yeah, I like con you know I like condition. But um, yes, fantastic. Yeah, so yeah, I'm really rooting for John. Like I said, it's hot. It's, it's the hot. people had given up on John, but we're back on the John De La Rosa train. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's good because um, like I, I don't want to get to the point where you actually. I don't even want to say it out loud. Where oh, I'm giving up on so and so or losing faith in so and so because you see them year after year not fulfilling their potential. So to see him come back like this and see him kind of turn everything around, it's a real inspirational story. And um, he seems happy. He seems in a good place. He seems very, uh, he seems very motivated. And he's got a good team, and he's in a good place at Flex's Dragon's Lair Gym in, uh, in is it Boca Raton, Florida, Florida. So um, yeah, he's he's, he's got uh, he's he's got everything in his arsenal now to rise. <laughs> he has already risen, hasn't he? He's going to rise some more <laughs> from ninety six point two percent to a ninety eight point three p two percent. Yeah. Right. That was John De La Rosa. Yep. Okay, then we'll be right back after the break with our next guest on Global Muscle Radio. And we are out. out.
And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios. Joined by my co host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by Patrick Moore. <laughs> What's up, guys? California champion. Yes, yes. Oh, um, Patrick, have you, have you, do you know AJ? No. My learned colleague? <laughs> no, this is my first time meeting AJ. Oh, that's yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, so fantastic, mate. Um, wanted to get you on, because uh, I had you on, my, on one of my other shows, uh, Moss News Weekly, last, last year. And obviously, I followed your career. And uh, I, obvi- I mean, you saw the preview. I, I did get it right, didn't I? The preview to you the did. Cali Pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I said uh, the final. I said, I see the final call out as being between you and. Who was it? Tim Budesheim. Yeah. Tim Budesheim, yes. And I was uh, 100% correct on that one. So uh, feeling very smug about that one. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it, uh, you called that and I, I saw when you sent it to me, I was like, oh, so he predicted the future. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 was, it, it was a great show, man. Tim is a, he's an awesome competitor. You know, he's an awesome guy. And um, I had a chance to kind of chat with him a little bit. Mm. And, you know, it was, it was a great show, man. I mean, I, I enjoyed every single minute of it. You did. Uh, you were very much improved because uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you turned pro uh, f- up till now? So um, I started, you know, I came from a bo- boxing basketball background. You know, I was always involved in at- athletics. I would play different sports and I kind of landed in bodybuilding. So when I first started, you know, the the obvious barrier weakness that I had was my legs. That was the biggest thing. So when I started competing, you know, if, if my upper body was developed, of course, there could have been improvements, but the attention would always go to the legs. I had the advantage with the smaller waist and, you know, the broad shoulders, and that was always something that was a strength of mine. But as I got started, especially when I turned pro in 2017 at the USA's, that was a, a big knock. You know, the legs were a bit weak, which that was an, something I was well aware of, but I had improved on that, you know, from previous shows. So I did the I did the nationals before that, and I played 16. Oh, so wow. Was, wow! Yeah, and I you know I was unknown, and I was way I was down so far that you where they stopped giving you placing, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Still want to join 16? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. I think at that time it was a field of 25, 26 guys in the heavyweight division. Uh huh. So that was when I actually competed with Charles Griffin, and he was a real cool guy. He gave me some really good words backstage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sergio Oliva was also at that show. That's when he won the overall. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I had a chance to kind of mix and mingle with those guys, but I was still very new to the sport. I was on had only been a couple of years. I didn't know any better. I just won a, a regional show a local show and I said, Oh, I'm going to Nashville to get a pro card. Mm. Like it was just <laughs> so easy to just go and snatch a pro card and I went and placed dead last. And it was cool because it wasn't one of those things where I, I, I let it hurt my confidence as to what I was doing. I just knew I could get better. So I said, Okay, no big deal. I got sixteenth. So next time I come back, I'm gonna get first. Mm. And that's exactly what I did. I went and competed at the Mr. Texas in two thousand and sixteen. I won that show Actually, beat a. He's a good friend of mine now, Sean Vasquez. So he went on to turn oh, pro yeah, 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 yeah. at Nationals in 2016. So that gave me some confidence. Like, hey, okay, so I should beat him. I I think I got a shot at this thing. Mm-hmm. And so I had Ed and Betty Pariso, who are the promoters for Texas Bodybuilding, down here. And Ed called me backstage, and he said, "You need to you need to go. You need to go to Nationals." He said, "If you go, you'll turn pro." Mm-hmm. And of course, I had Lee there, and Lee's always been in my corner. And Lee was also for it. He said, yeah, Sorry, man, you look this great. Is, this is Lee Labrada. Lee Labrada, yeah. Right, yeah. So he told me, you know, well, wow. he already knew where I needed to work. So I went to Nationals, USA's, and I, I won a super heavyweight there. I didn't have a coach at the time, um, which I, I kind of regret regret that. But, you know, I, I just didn't know any better. I was working with a nutritionist, Keith Klein, down here in Houston, which is he's amazing. Mm. So he managed my nutrition, and I did that. I worked with him, and we accomplished that goal. Didn't take overall, which I really wanted, but, you know, it's no big deal. It was a huge accomplishment to go from so far down to first place. Yeah, huge. Turn pro, uh, that's when I came across Chris Aceto. Mm-hmm. Mm. So he had, I was wondering which coach I was going to work with. And Chris had, he didn't compliment me so much on the strengths I had, but he did say where I was weak at. Yeah. So that prompted me to say, okay, I want to work with this guy. I want to work with the guy that can see where I'm weak at, so then I can know where I need to improve. So I worked with him, and we we picked up in, in 2018. So we went on to do the New York Pro 
and the California Pro. I got 13th at the at the New York Pro mm -hmm. in 2018, and then I placed eighth at the California Pro. That's right. So after that, I said, okay, I, I wanted to do the New York Pro because I knew that there were going to be really good guys doing that show. Yeah. Mm. And I wanted to go after the big fish because <laughs> this way I know where to set the bar. You know, I could have probably chosen smarter. I guess I, I, you can't really say smarter because when you're on the pro stage, all these guys have talents. They're all amazing athletes. Mm. So I just wanted to go after where I knew for sure the big guys were going to come out. Mm. And I went to place 13 because I had to see it for myself. And I said, okay, well, I'll be back next year. No big deal. I got 13. 16, 13 to first is not as big as a deficit as 13, as 13 to first. So I placed eight in California. That gave me some motivation. Got some feedback from the judges, and they were like, yeah, you know, work here, do this, do that improvement. So I decided to take the whole year off. And Chris wanted me to do a couple more shows. Chris, he said, uh, well, do, do Toronto. Oh, you know, do Vancouver. Do Tampa. Because he knew I was getting better as he was learning my body because this was our first year together. Yeah. So I just told him, well, you know, I don't want to keep throwing my hat in the bucket and, and I'm just like reaching, you know, for a placing. I, I know where I need to improve. I'm only four years into this sport. So let me just take some time and go back and get better. And so I spent a whole 12 months completely obsessed with growing my legs because I needed <laughs> a balanced physique. Yeah. I'm telling you, guys, if that was – now, leg days were the days where I really tuned in mentally to my workout. It wasn't just, hey, I, I need to hit legs because I need to improve. I was like, I'm going to go in the gym and I'm going to kill these damn legs until they just can't take any more blood. Yeah. And that's what we did. And, and ultimately, we got a good result. And What's, I bought up some other body parts and it, it balanced out. Yeah. Can you what, tell us more about your leg training? I was just about to ask that. Can you yeah. tell us? Because so, when, when people kill legs, what does that I'm, mean I'm, for I'm, you? I'm actually more interested to know how many did you up the frequency? So I, I went from, I trained two days a week, right? But what I did, when I trained the legs twice a week, I had a split. So I did primary quadriceps and calves mm -hmm. one day. And that was the beginning of the week when I had more energy coming off of the weekend. Mm. And then towards the end of the week, I did hamstrings, hamstrings, glutes, and calves. Okay. So what I was noticing that I wasn't really getting fatigued. You know, I, my body was recovering faster and I needed more training. So what I did was... Instead of splitting the days up, now I converted over to two complete leg days. So I still had the primary quadriceps on a Monday, but then I also included hamstrings on the end. Mm. And then on the Friday, I had the primary hamstring, the glutes, and I put quadriceps on the end. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it increased the frequ frequency in which I was training, yeah. and I was able to you know volumize the workout. So I didn't. I was training heavy. I was doing heavy squats. Heavy, heavy hack squats to where, you know, they were just blowing my legs out. What numbers are you Great. using? Huh? What numbers are you using on those exercises? So I was always going 20 reps. And a lot of people that follow my training, they'll they'll mm -hmm. notice I'm really big on the 20 reps because I like volume. But where the change is, I don't decrease the amount of reps with the weight increase. So as the weight goes up, I still keep 20 reps. Oh, Not wow. Oh. Let's just... Yeah, let's just throw a number out there and say, oh, I have 450 pounds on a hack squat. Mm. I may only get 12 consecutive good reps. Yeah. What I do is if I stop at 12, I'm going to take a short pause, and I'm going to come back for those other eight. That set isn't complete until I reach that 20. Yeah. And mm. then I can go on to the next set. So I was combining the heavyweight training with the high repetition training. Yeah. So I was noticing a lot of blood flow. My joints were good. You know, I wasn't feeling any pain, yeah. anything weird. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a magic, you know, so I put the high volume with the high weight where I know a lot of guys are familiar with increasing the weight and then they do low rep training, yeah. mm -hmm. but that just doesn't work for me. I'm, I'm used to high volume training and the only way for me to push it to the next level was to say, Hey, what are these other guys not doing? Yeah. Because that's probably what I need to do. Mm. So like Ronnie Coleman, he's there. He, they, they said you use heavy weight or high reps. He says, I do both. <laughs> But, yeah. But what about your, exactly. But your arms, do you train them less now or how is Yes. So so funny story. Um uh, when I started training, arms, strength man. training, mm. um I've been, a lot of people don't realize I've been strength training or working out for 16, 17 years now. Okay. So th this isn't new to me training. Yeah. But actually bodybuilding and knowing how to build a complete physique, that's what's been that's what has been new mm. over the past few years. Mm -hmm. Actually learning my body and being able to look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, you know, this is this is too dominant here. You need to 
dial this back, and this is where you're weak at. So you you need to figure out how to get that better, get that bigger. Mm -hmm. And so what I did, like AJ said, I, I pulled the arm training way back. So for a period of about four years, five years, every single day, I trained arms. Oh, <laughs> But look at the results, though. They're probably one of the best in the IBB Pro League right now, aren't they? And, yeah, yeah. And, and people, they, they, they wonder, you know, it's crazy, man. I'll get, like, obnoxious comments. You know how social media can be. And people are saying, oh, it's synthol, it's this, it's that. And I tell guys, hey, go back to my social media. And I've even posted pictures from when I was boxing. My arms were big then because I didn't know how to strength train. I just mm -hmm. wanted big arms and a big chest. So every single day, the only thing I trained in the gym was arms and chest. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> International <laughs> chest and arms day on a Monday. So you trained five times a week arms? Seven. Seven. How far did you Seven. go in boxing, by the way? Um, That lasted, that was, man, eight years. Oh. It, was, it was a good while, yeah. He's it was athlete, he's a proper athlete. Mm. I transitioned from basketball over to that. And because y'all, I, I I like that aspect of being able to go and do a sport that was 100% a result off of my work ethic. So, you know, that's why I tell people, you know, boxing and bodybuilding, they're very similar in that aspect to where the amount of work I put in, that's going to be the result that I get. And boxing was the same way. If I was lackadaisical on my training, mm -hmm. missed training days, missed cardio, you know, chances are I was going to go in the ring and get my ass kicked. Mm -hmm. So... I had to be disciplined in that. So it wasn't a huge transition to come here and say, okay, well, instead of trying to go beat up another human being, I'm just trying to beat up my own body uh, yeah. with these weights. I was analyzing your physique after the Cali Pro, and I was comparing them to the pictures from last year's Cali Pro. And I was thinking, is it just because he's got so much more size on his shoulders and, and his upper body that his waist looks smaller, or is his waist actually smaller? His waist is so I know, I, small. I'm saying, right now. I, is it just because he's bigger, or is it actually took measures to get his waist even smaller? Over to you. <laughs> so, you know, what's funny is, I, you know, I started to post a picture on social media, but I didn't because yeah. I just didn't. I wanted to leave some, you know, something to the imagination. Mm -hmm. To where when I actually got on stage, people were like, that's crazy you know and the people who saw me compete previously would say that guy improved in the areas where he needed to improve and mm. he kept his strengths where he, they needed to be and it was maybe a week out from the show and i did a tape measure and then i measured 28 inches on my what <laughs> that's like brian buchanan for the historians like or a tony freeman type waist that is that's like very I, i'm I'm, I'm, baffled. Uh, how, I'm baffled but how do you go do you get heavy in the off season or do you stay pretty lean no, it's on. I can, it's it's very very difficult for me to gain weight in the off season. Right. Um. I've never. Hey. I've never been any more than twenty pounds outside of contest oh, okay. weight. Okay. So that's oh, probably why he's wasted. So. I'll I'll be honest with you, man. There's been prior to this season, uh, this previous season that I had leading into this contest, I was eating pizza and burgers almost every other day. <laughs> Uh, my metabolism what? is is just it's crazy high. What? And when I was working with Keith Klein, he told me it's probably because I have a a very low level of myostatin, meaning mm. my body just doesn't retain fat from all these bad foods I'm eating. Yeah. Because I when I the first time I saw him, I ever met him, I was four percent body fat, and I was just doing whatever I wanted. I didn't yeah. didn't follow any type of diet regimen or anything. So what I found was when I actually take the genetics I have and really am strict with the dieting, it's just a, you know, it's a recipe for success. Yeah. So now, of course, I don't eat pizza and burgers and so often because, you mm. know, I can't grow quality muscle. No. So what I did this off season, instead of being really lax with my diet, I tightened it up a lot. So I made sure I was getting some good quality foods in so I could actually, especially on leg days, you know, I can actually mm. build the good quality muscle that I needed to be competitive. Mm. Obviously, we know that um, you're sponsored with Labrada Nutrition. We'll come to that a little bit later. How has Lee had any input or any influence on you uh, with your training, your diet, or any of the, any aspects of your physique? Yeah. So with Lee, when I met him, you know, he told me I was going to be a great champion. Uh, I would go on to do great things, and I mm -hmm. had this physique. I didn't really know what he meant then because I was I was still new. And uh, you know, his son Hunter, we were training partners. And they would tell me, you know, man, you have these gifts, these strengths, and so on and so forth. So it would be pretty pretty often I would see or talk to Lee at least a few times a week. And he would tell me how they used to train, mm. how they used to diet, how they would go on the road, and they always kept their food with them. That was an aspect of the sport I had not understood yet. Mm. Because 
if I had to go travel, I would just eat whatever was available. Whatever was readily available in front of me, that's what I ate. Yeah. And I didn't understand what he was saying then, why they why they did that. Yeah. And so now I do understand that. So he would tell me, hey, Patrick, when you're training, be mindful if you go heavy of your joints and your tendons because your muscles are going to be very strong. They're going to feel great, but you don't know what's going on internally, like how all that pressure constricts on your joints and tendons. Mm. So that's what led me to continue to stick with the high repetition because I noticed I would get a crazy pump from the blood flow that I didn't have to go as heavy as some of these other guys that were training. And I would see them and they say, oh, man, my elbow hurt, my, my knee hurts. And, you know, if you notice, if you're seeing in my training clips, I don't wear wrist wraps, elbow wraps, belts, Nothing. knee wraps, any of that. Mm -hmm. And because I pay attention to what my muscles are actually feeling. So mm -hmm. I don't just go and move the weight around because you can just move the weight. You know, we all can just move it. But are you actually feeling that muscle contract? Yeah. And so when I pay attention to that, like Lee told me, then it makes it really easy to go in and train safely and get the results. Remember someone saying that, uh, that Lee Lebrada said that he gets more out of every rep than most bodybuilders get out of every set. Yes. That's what he said, yeah, but was it many years ago now. Uh, yes. <laughs> you're, you're also friends with Phil Heath, aren't you? Yeah, it's so I formally met him. So I did his show back in, that was my first show in 2014. Oh. So down in Houston when the expo was held here, now it's held in Dallas. And uh, I saw him. I had saw some videos of him. I, so I ran into a buddy in 2012 who was trying to convince me to compete when yeah. I was boxing. And I told him, no, 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 I'm not doing it. I don't want to get on stage in my underwear. You know, if I'm trying. <laughs> so, you know, I showed you where my childish mentality was at the time. I yeah. just didn't understand. Hmm. So finally he got me to compete and he said, hey, you should check out this guy, Phil Heath. So I want you to <laughs> check out this guy. Check, out this guy, check out this guy. He's, he's pretty good, <laughs> yeah, you know. He's, you know? <laughs> he's no slouch. Because he, he he was just like you know you, you have a you're genetically gifted. So mm. you should look at these guys. Uh. So I that's when I saw I I saw Phil Heath. I saw the YouTube training videos and I saw that he was having success with bodybuilding. I'm like, man, that's pretty crazy. And mm. so my buddy said, hey, you know, if you really like to work out. There's a chance you could get sponsorships, you could get this, you could travel, you can meet people. Mm. All that kind of stuff appealed to me because I'm naturally a people person. So I do like to engage with people and, you know, be able to influence whatever they're doing in their health and fitness, so on and so forth. So I gave it a shot. Um, at the Phil Heath, I was a light heavyweight. And I think I may have weighed uh, maybe 196 at that show. Mm -hmm. And I won overall there. And backstage, you know, Phil came back there. He was getting ready to guest pose. And I saw him, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so they got the both basketball players. I, I was thinking that maybe a basketball 3D connection. arms. 3D arms. Yeah, and, and I, I, I saw him, and I said, okay, that that right there, I, I want that. Yeah. And I saw the effect he had on people and so on and so forth. So that was my first time, like, meeting him, but it was informal. And I saw him a couple more times after that. And leading up to the USA's, um, we, we – kind of connected on social media. So that was in 2017. Mm -hmm. He uh, commented back and he told me, you know, he gave me some words of encouragement and said, hey, you know, when you go up there, just make sure you pose with confidence and make sure when you're training, you do everything. And you don't, every set, every rep, you think about that meaning you're in the center and they don't move you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I kept that in my mind when I was training. And then in 2018 was when I met him at his expo. So that's the first time I actually had a chance to actually meet him mm. in person and conversate and, you know, all these different th things. <clears throat> so we had a lot in common. And then after that, I went on to do the, the California and New York because it was shortly before my contest that yeah. I met him. Yeah. And so we, we had a lot of comments. So we went back and forth, man. And, you know, he's an amazing guy. He get, gives me a lot of information. Have you, uh, and, sorry, you know, have you, sorry, have you ever played basketball together? That's exactly, uh, I, I can see what you're thinking. Who's best in uh, basketball? I'll, you or Phil Heath? You beat, you beat Phil Heath won't you, one-on-one, -on -one, won't you? I think I can get him right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell, I'm gonna tell <laughs> Phil. I'm going to tell him afterwards. <laughs> He's going to have to move that extra 25 pounds he has. Like <laughs> oh. so I, I might be able to try to, you know, be a little more mobile and try to get around him. Oh, uh, so he's more, he's more nimble. How so, far did you play yeah. basketball, by the way? How far did you go in basketball? I stopped at college level. Okay. Yeah, I stopped at college level. Yeah, I was, it was high school, middle school. Um, I did track. I was like one of those guys that did everything I was athlete, good right? at, a, at a lot of things. And I never really just focused in on one thing. I was yeah. good at football, 
and I I broke some some records in track. But I just would just do whatever because I didn't. I just wanted to be active. So like so, so like AJ. I, I sorry, Patrick. So like AJ saying you're like an all round athlete, but then you actually decided to just focus on the one thing and look yes, at the, but look That's at the Paul Jackson. Yeah, but look at the success you've had in bodybuilding very very short space of time. In 2 years, you've gone from turn well, last in 2016 to first and getting your pro card and now you're winning pro shows 2 years later. I mean, it's incredible. You're so how old are you now, Patrick? I'm 35. 35. So you're at a perfect age to start rising through now mm. through the ranks. Yeah, and it, it, it's that's that was a big thing that my buddy told me. He said, man, I don't think you realize how fresh your body is. Yeah. And, mm. you know, because I was 20, 30 doing my first contest. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, it was, so he's not it was 35, 35. He's more like 28. 28, 35. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, so it, yeah. it's that's what it was. Yeah, man, I, I, yeah. I fell in love with this lifting thing. And once I found out there could be, you know, benefits for it, because I do personal training here. Mm, yeah. in Houston. So that was also a benefit as well. So it was just I I love this more than anything I've ever done. Mm. And it's it's more challenging. I, I think that's what it is also is I'm I wake up every day and I wonder how far can you really push your body? Mm. How how disciplined can you be at this? And I, I I've never when I started this, even when I, I did the the show last week before any of this i was never in it for the money and that's what it is i've always been a highly competitive person and so when i started this i said to myself i just want to beat everybody i i'm gonna work so hard mm. to where they're eventually they're gonna have to pay attention and i'm just gonna come after everyone and it, it was no knock against those that because they're all amazing athletes and i learned so much from them but that's that's my goal it's not for the money it's not for anything else but to be the best at what i'm doing I can see why you and Phil have connected now because you've got that, you know, not just the basketball thing. I'm starting to see similarities in mindset and attitude and motivation. And uh, yeah, I can definitely see why you two have connected and become friends. Yeah. I, if there's not one, there's not one day that I don't go, I don't wake up thinking about how am I going to edge these guys out? Yeah. And, and that drives me every single day because mm. I cannot rest thinking that I'm going to step on that stage not knowing that I did every single thing that I could mm. to beat these guys. And of course, if they beat that, that's right. And that's the one thing too, is I'm also a really gracious loser, not, you know, not loser, but you know what I mean? I know if I mean. don't get the result I want, it's cool. I mean, mm -hmm. Hey, those guys on stage with me, you know, I had a really good conversation with Sean Roden, you know, awesome guy. Those guys on, on stage with me aren't judging me. So mm. if they beat me, then that just means that those amazing judges down there, felt that those guys look better. So what do I have to do to come back and make sure that they think that I look better? And so when I go train and I diet and I think about a cheat meal, mm. No, I just, I, everything is focused on one goal, and that's to win. Well, obviously, you've learned a lot for your losses because you went from 16th to 1st as an amateur. You've gone from 8th to 1st in the Cali Pro. So you've obviously, you're obviously, uh, taking a loss motivates you. It doesn't knock you back. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't. It mm. it just makes me hungry because yeah. as soon as I step off that stage, guys, I'm like, okay, wait till I come back. Just wait, <laughs> yeah. wait till I come back. You yeah. know, and, and that's the mentality I carry. So then, when I see these guys, I like I said when I did the New York, I just had to go see it for myself. Mm. I knew it was going to be a high mountain to climb. I knew these guys were going to be better than me. They were going to be great, yeah. more experienced, more developed bodies. But I just had to see it. So when I when I witness it with my own eyes, I can tell myself. Hey man, you can do that. Mm. You can do that, Patrick. Those eyes have bigger legs. Oh, bigger legs. Okay, go train your legs. Mm -hmm. Get them bigger. They have denser backs. Okay, go train your back. Mm -hmm. Get it more dense. You can do what they can do. You know. Yeah. Tell us about the Cali Pro. Tell us when you thought, shit, I'm think I'm gonna win this. So uh, it was going into the show, and and of course I was sending updates to Chris Aceto, and he's a straight shooter, which is why I love Chris. Mm. He he's gonna give it to you like it is. You mm -hmm. know. And every set of pictures that I was sending him, because we got to a point where I was sending him pictures every day. So I would get up, and I it was 6.30 every morning around 6.20 a.m., and I would get up, I would go and take my progress pictures, and I would send them to him. And he would tell me, you're getting better and better. And ultimately, when we got about a week out, he said, man, you realize every set of pictures that you sent were better. You were getting better each time. So once we got to a week out, and I noticed that my body was really turning the corner, 
And a lot of these guys, like, and I, I'm cool with that. A lot of guys post their progress every day mm. on Instagram. <clears throat> and that's cool. You know, I, I was doing the same thing. But like I said, I just didn't do it with the legs or the parts where I was improving because I wanted to have that little shock factor, something mm. that was a little unknown. And I would see these guys, and I'm saying, okay, you know. And so when I actually saw them in person when we got to the weigh-ins on Friday. One, one second, we lost Sorry, one sound. second. We lost a bit of sound there. Sorry, mate. One second. Oh, never mind. Sorry, just a loose wire there. It's happened before. So, Sorry, carry on. Continue. No, you're, and, and so I would see those guys post their stuff. And I, so I knew who was competing. Mm -hmm. And I knew there, there were going to be some guys I had to going to have to fight with. You know, there were some new guys and there was guys that competed with last year. So I got to weigh-ins and I saw that my body was tightening up more and more and more. I had my, my, my guys with me. And, of course, they were like, man, you look great. There's nothing else you can do. And Chris, you know, of course, he kind of – confirmed it was like no you're you're good you're when chris says you're good yeah because he never says you're good <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll never tell you like you're, mm. you're good he's just like okay you'll email and he'll just send back okay and that's yeah. it so who so, who, so, so what sorry go on Karen. no 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 you're fine so so when you were backstage who did you look at and think he looks good that guy looks good oh i can take him i saw all those guys uh josh wade had great conditioning he yeah. was amazing conditioning I saw the guy Tim Budesheim. He was he was cool. No one really got kind of fully undressed until we were going to go out. Right. Mm, so okay. what I did, guys, because I didn't want to concern myself with what anyone else looked like. Yeah. Because I, I really didn't care. It's nothing I can do about those guys mm -hmm. where they may be better, where they may be worse. Mm. So I went outside with my guy, my my training partner that was there, and we just hit post. I didn't pump up. I didn't do any of that. I wanted to be away from whatever was going on. And so once we got out there and I started hitting some shots for him, he was the one that was like, hey, man, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> nice <one. laughs> so he kind of told me ahead of time because I had not yet seen what everyone looked like because they were getting, you know, tan and glazed. And I was just in the zone like all I cared about in that moment because I told myself I was going to enjoy every single moment on the stage. Yeah. I just cared about being completely tuned in with my body, hitting my poses confidently mm -hmm. and considering myself as the guy to beat mm, and that's mm. that's the mindset i had like i'm not going there to beat them i i'm gonna have i'm gonna adopt the personality or the mentality that they have to beat me because i'm gonna be at my best yeah and if i'm at my best it's gonna it, i'm gonna be pretty hard to beat if i'm 100 percent. yeah so when i knew when chris told me i was good and i was 100 percent, and i got i saw them looking at me when i stepped out of the tanning booth they were looking outside. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yep. Sorry. It, it kind of reminded me of like the, the old days when I boxed or, you know, even Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson would say when those when their eyes would shift, when they would look off, he knew he had them. Mm. So I felt like when they were paying attention to me and I wasn't so concerned about how they look, mm. that gave me more confidence. Like, oh, they're wondering what I look like. Yeah. Well, yeah. here it is. I'm, I'm outside. You can see what I look like. And now you're going to have to have an answer for these broad shoulders and this small waist and these improved legs. You know, so that's how I felt going into it. I didn't really want to say I'm going to beat him, I'm going to beat him. Yeah. I just wanted to say, no, they have to beat me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how I'm oh. oh, phone's knocked over. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, could see it, I could see it starting to go. It was like, <laughs> so, so, yeah. There we go. What's your mindset and, and, for this? Well, no, no, keep on, keep on. Oh, no, no. So that's that that was just the confidence. I, w I was confident in the work I had done. And I wanted to kind of rely on that versus mm. did these guys bring their best? Because I know they're going to bring their best, you know, to their capabilities. Yeah. And like I said, they're all amazing athletes. All of them will look great. I, I wasn't sure where I was going to land. But I tell you, when the judges said, hey, Patrick, and I believe, uh, gosh, who was in the middle? Um, it might have been Eddie Bracamonte, my, my teammate. So he may have been in the middle. When they said switch and they gave me that red box, I knew I was going to take advantage of... Sorry, just lost the, just oh. lost the sound a little bit there. It's falling it's off. All the... It's all right. It's just, I think maybe I'm pulling it slightly. Sorry, I think it's my fault. There you go. Uh, yeah. Off? Yeah? No, no sound. Just, just that one there, mate. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. But, but sorry. Oh, is it? Lost a bit of sound there. Yeah, yeah, bro. Hang on. Are we good? Yes, we're good. Yes, we sorry, go. carry on. Sorry, carry on, uh, Patrick. AJ's fault. AJ's fault. <laughs> uh, AJ. 
<laughs> so when they gave me the, the, the center spot and they allowed me to get into the red square, I just knew I was going to take advantage. I was going to pose confidently and, and present all of this hard work that I had done for 12 mm. months. A lot of first timers at the Olympia, they have different mindsets going in. Some people are just going to experience it. Yeah. Some people are going in to make a statement. What's Patrick Moore mindset for this Mr. Olympia? To make a statement. Yeah, no question. Um, I know that my physique is different from a lot of these guys and I'm, I'm only going to improve. I'm just going to keep getting better. And that was the biggest accomplishment for me, not just winning. It was to get better. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's going to be one of those deals where I, I just want the, want them to respect the work I've done and know that, okay, well, I mean, this, this new guy is here and obviously he's not messing around. So, mm -hmm. you know, going in, like I expect to, you know, to be someone taken seriously, not like, oh, yeah. I just want to see what it's like. No, that's that's never the game plan, you know. So Sorry, where I'm, do you see yourself? Hang on, I'm just trying to think of a bodybuilder that's got as crazy a taper, like shoulder to waist ratio. I'm trying to think. Paul Delette, Tony Freeman, who else? Patrick. Because no, no, seriously, look at the shoulder, look at the shoulder width on Patrick, and then look at the the tiny that how waist how small his waist is. I'm I'm really because uh, I think that's going to do well at the Olympia. I think it's going I think it's going to stand out. Where do you see your aesthetics? Where, where do you where do you want to see yourself this Olympia? What's your I, what's I your goal? What's that, your goal? I want to crack that top seven. I want to crack that top, top five. seven. Top seven. Wow. Yeah. Top five. Yeah. Top five. Okay. Your first you know, try. Yeah, because you know this is the thing is is this sport. You know, of course we're all confident, but I feel like okay, like Al said, if I just go and I, I want to experience the Olympia. Yeah, I, that's not going to make my work intent, mm. you know, on what I'm doing over the next 15 weeks. Mm. Yeah, I scored 14, you know, at the California Pro. Mm -hmm. um, I improved at nighttime. I got a nine at night and I believe a five at free judging. Yeah. So if I improve on that any, then, you know, that's going to make my physique better and I will improve. So I feel like shooting for a top five, that's going to make all this work that I'm doing yeah. towards that goal. I don't want to put in the work like, Oh, I'm just going to maybe I'll get maybe top 10 or maybe outside because that mentality is huge. Yeah. When you think of yourself as yeah. outside of top 10, that's probably where you're going to land. But mm. for me, if I say, you know what, these guys inside of that top five, they're experienced. They've been there. They've worked hard. So, yeah, I'm going to work hard. I may be still building on experience, but mm -hmm. there's there's no access to any weight or machine or gym that they have that I don't have. Yeah. So I'll work my ass off. And I'm going to, that's what I'm working towards. That's top five. I think Phil Heath really has been mentoring his mental side. No, it's true. I, I can see it. I can see that. I can see the influence. I can see the influence about that, having that mindset. It's very important. I'm yeah, very... It is because, you, you, you know, you have a mind, if your mindset is just like anything in life, if you go into a job mm -hmm. and you're, you're just, oh, I just want to be a manager. Yeah. Oh, well, that's probably all you'll ever aspire to be then. It's just a manager. Mm -hmm. But if you're saying, you know what, I, I want the higher position. Who owns this company? What did that guy do to become the owner of that company? Yeah. So when I look at these guys, I'm like, well, what did they do to get top five? What did they do to yeah. become Mr. Olympia? Okay, so they did that. All right, so I'm, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to try to do it better. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just speaking of so the work that I want to put in in my own capabilities. You know, if I stay healthy and I continue training how I am, mm -hmm. nailing my diet and doing my cardio, I'm just going to keep improving. And like I said, I have a great coach, amazing support system with a broad in nutrition. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife is 100% in my corner. She lets me do my job with, you know, she's always playing the background. When it's yeah. prep time, she, you know, she's a therapist. She has her own crazy job to deal with. <laughs> and when, when it's time for me to go to work, she's like, okay, you know, do your job. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's, I expect to do very well, even though it's my first time out. Just like I did, you know, when I went for nationals, and my mindset was always, "Hey, you going for a top spot? You're not mm -hmm. training for top ten, or you know, you're you're training so you can get out there and they can say, wow, this guy could potentially be somebody that can be at the top one day.'" One of the things I like about your physique is the the clean separation. I like that. It's not just the condition. It's not just the aesthetics, the wide shoulders, the small waist. It's the, the sharp lines, which I think sometimes in some of the physiques that are looking to always supersize. I think they lose that quality. They lose the definition and the and the um, and the, well, the quality of the physique. Do you know how, what I mean? You know what I mean, don't you? How much do you weigh? How much do you? How much is your stage weight in the California Pro? I weighed in at two thirty six, I believe. I, mm. We stopped weighing. That's big. That's um, big. I believe we stopped weighing maybe two weeks out. Two, 
yeah, a week and a half out. Because Chris, <laughs> told, he when I sent him pictures, I was sending him my weight, and he told me, he was mm. like, I don't care about your weight. I don't want to know what – it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. As long as you're, you're hard and you keep getting better. So I, I put the scale aside. Yeah. And then, you know, when I, when I started the prep, I was 251, I believe, and now my weight's back up to 256. Mm-hmm. So pr- pretty much probably in the next couple of days I'll – Settle down, and my weight may land around that same weight, and then, yeah. yo, because I'm already, I'm still on my diet, I'm still doing the cardio, mm-hmm. I'm back in prep mode. You know, there's there's mm-hmm. no time for me to take any time off. Do so, you have to do a lot of cardio? No. So you know, it's funny because he doesn't <laughs> seem like he needs a lot of cardio. No, it looks lean, looks healthy, looks. Good. You know, when I turned pro, I was doing cardio three days a week, fifteen minutes a day. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> not cardio. The Dexter Jackson approach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. And, and, uh, Forty-five and, uh, minutes know, a so week. It, it was really, really low. And uh, <laughs> I did that this morning. For, and this, show, I mean, of course, I did. It, it's not a ton of cardio. It's, Chris just has me doing thirty-minute sessions. Yeah. Sometimes forty-five, depending on what he's doing with the diet. So mm. he'll change it. You know, I, I may switch up. You know, the amount of time within a two-day time period, it may be 45, then 30, mm. then 20. It's just what he sees when I send him the pictures, then he kind of makes a call then. But it's never, mm. you know, an extended amount. And I'm pretty sure the training with the high reps probably has a lot to do with that as well. Mm. So what do you think is going to happen at this year's Olympia, yourself excluded? What do you think is going to happen? It's, a, you know, it's crazy, man, because it's kind of wide open. You know, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, Sean definitely has a great physique. Yeah, Brandon Curry, who obviously has improved a mm-hmm. ton. Um, I think Big Rami said he's he's you know not going to do it. Um, Phil, I think it's still a, a question if he's going to do it. I haven't really had a chance to talk with him, so it, it's crazy, man. It, it's really kind of wide open, you mm-hmm. know, as to whoever brings their best. Because there was last year, there were guys I thought would land inside the top five and they didn't. You know, like who, like who, like who, out. like who, like I, you know, of course Dexter. You know, I always yeah. you're used to seeing him always in the top, <laughs> and you know, uh, Bonnet I think moved down maybe one place. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was it, Brandon moved inside of the top five. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's just a, it was a huge shift. So it, it's tough to call, man. I mean, it, it, it's any anybody show whoever but, brings a hundred percent. But if you had to call it. If I had to call, it? <laughs> and who, who did you have? get the thumb screws on him? <laughs> did you agree with the Roden Phil Heat decision? It was, you know, you you never know what the judges are looking for. And I was not close. I feel like Phil had great condition. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, people were saying his condition was off. His condition was amazing. Oh, it's uh, it's muscular. It's, the roundness on him is it, it, it's, it's just, it's dumb. It's stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so they, they were obviously big time going toward, you know, towards the midsection and whatnot. And I can understand that aspect. And Sean looked great. You know, he was sharp. He was tight. He, he came and he bought his best, I feel like. And, you know, th- that's what the judges saw. I mean, I, I agree with the judges 100% all the time because I've been in that same position where I may have felt like I could have mm. been, you know, first or second or third or fourth and I placed wherever, you know. So mm. it's I, I always go with the judges, man, because they, they see what we don't. Yeah. And especially, you know, when you're mm. seeing stuff on camera and my seats weren't that close, I, me and my wife were further back. Yeah. So I could only see so much. And then on the monitor – you know, so I, I feel like, you know, if that's what they call I mean, you, you have to argue with the judges, man. They, they, they've been doing this for, especially those guys. Mm. The Olympia judges have been doing this for years. So you have so Victor like Martinez losing then against Jay Cutler, huh? <laughs> <laughs> What? Uh, I said, so you had uh, Victor Martinez losing to Jay Cutler, and you, you can't always agree with the decision. Mm. Well, enough about that. <laughs> We don't have to talk about the judges. But, but Giles. What? I'm very impressed by Patrick Moore. I knew you would be. I told you it would be. Because to be fair... Because I, I know Patrick a little bit better than you, so... Yeah, I've studied you not that much, uh-huh. to be fair, <laughs> but... He will now, he will now. I will now. Yeah, he's a fa- he got, this... he got a new fanboy now. No, but it's the mindset, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah. It's the athlete approach to this. It's Also, Patrick, did you see the Valutainment interview with Phil, with that Patrick guy, the mainstream interview he did? No, with Patrick Ben David, it... I actually hadn't had a chance to see that. Oh. I saw... Kind of the previews a little bit. You're gonna I, love I it. I didn't get a chance to see, but you know, I I know, man. Phil, it feels an amazing guy. Get I it mean, watched. He, he get it watched. He's, 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 sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go on, go on. And because uh, I know him, you know, apart from 
probably how a lot of people, yeah. you know, haven't had a chance to know him. He's an amazing guy. And so yeah. I haven't had a chance to see that, but I'm sure it, it's got to be world class. I was watching it again yesterday and I was messaging him as I was watching. We were messaging back and forth. And I said, oh, mate, this is, this is what I like to see the top, top champions doing. These kind of mainstream interviews. And he seemed so relaxed. And he really went into... It's funny because the guy said, he said, he said, I've only asked you one question, Phil. And he spoke for 30 minutes. He says, I might ask another question and go for another 30 minutes. <laughs> ask a second question. But it was really good. And like, I, I think, because I've, I've seen a bit of a theme running through this interview uh, and with your, your friendship with Phil. And like, 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 like AJ alludes to, it's the, it's the mindset. It's that mindset and that's that kind of positive attitude that will kind of see you through to the top, the very, very top of whatever you do. 20 inch, 28 inch waist? I think I see 20 inch, 28 inch arms then. Fresh. 28 physique? inches for the Olympia. Oh man, this is. Gonna I know, be yeah. I like. No, I like great. these. I like aesthetic physique. I loved your side tricep, your rear double bicep pose, the front lat spread. I was just like, this is like, this is kind of like a '90s physique, but with the, you know, the modern. You know, mm. it was it was it's, that, it's that, a bit of a that, throwback. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and that's why I'm you know I model my 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 training, and that's the look I go for. Yeah, because you can see it, it's can different, see. and you know I always say guys want to get huge. We all want to get bigger, mm -hmm. and that's always a goal. But when I look at those guys. I'm like, man, that that's bodybuilding. Yeah, just so like Lee LeBron. Mm. And and that's the deal. And when I, yeah, when I see Lee and I, that small waist, I'm not gonna lose that. That's not going anywhere. The legs will get bigger, mm -hmm. the back will get denser, but these guys can't expect the waist to stay small as it is. Mm. That that's not gonna change. Have you gone to Lee for any uh, posing tips? Yes. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, best poser so ever. You, you, you know that wow. archer shot that I did. That that's all Lee. So yeah. when this this for the Olympia, you know, he's in complete control of my posing. Oh, so I'll beat him um, at least probably three days a week starting out. Good. And uh, we'll, we'll work on posing to make sure that I can present the best my physique the best way possible on stage because you can have a great physique. Yeah. But then the way you present it is a whole nother aspect. So he's going to manage all of that. I don't know about you, but I've seen a little bit of a resurgence in the pros putting more effort into their posing routines, because if you go back, I mean, before you even start your posing routine for the Olympia, please go back and watch the 1991 Olympia. <laughs> go yes. watch it, find it, and or ask Lee if he can send it to you or he can give you a link and watch that 1991 Lee Labrada posing routine because that, I would love, I would just love to see the, got, the, yeah. all the athletes at the Olympia come back to that level of posing. That's not going to happen. But. Yeah, well, we can hope and we can try. So you're going to practice him three times a week. Wow. Yes, because you for know, how it's, long a session? How how long do you practice? How long is a posting practice session with Lee? It's usually at least forty five minutes with him. Okay. Because yeah. what we what the way that Lee nice. does it, it's it's really influential. It's it's really he'll make you say we have okay, we're gonna do a three minute posing routine, mm -hmm. right? Let's just say that's what we're gonna do. Well, Lee will break it down into into sections, and we won't go through the whole deal. We'll say okay, hey, let, we're gonna nail. Brilliant. Five poses, and we're going to get these transitions 100% mm. correct. Yeah. How your feet placement, your hands, you know, because he's always big on your hands mean a lot. So yeah. you want big flowing movements because mm. it's art. And yeah. you want you don't want to look like a bull in a china shop just banging around because, you are you know, you have all this muscle. It, you can't actually make it look, you know, beautiful when you're going through. Definitely. So that's how he does it. It's, it's we'll do a section at a time. Yeah. And he builds it up as so when it gets close to the Olympia, we'll probably have a full package. And then mm -hmm. we'll go through everything until it's flawless. And Lee is repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah. And he'll sit there and he'll pick it apart and tell you, hey, this isn't quite right. I, I think it's better if we do this. Mm. Hey, I mean, you, you have to listen to the guy. I mean, if you've yeah. seen him pose, it's, it's phenomenal. Amazing. I'm always banging the drum of good posing, good condition. That's the two things I like to see. <laughs> no, I just, yeah. I hate to see big out of shape bodybuilders who cannot pose for shit. It yeah. really annoys Aww. me. So like to see a physique like, like I think it's actually a crime for a physique like yours with the aesthetics you've got and the quality you've got to come on and just not be able to pose. It's such a waste. So I'm so glad that you've hooked up with Lee Labrada there, not just as your sponsor, you know, Labrada Nutrition, but the fact that he's actually helping you with your posing is just, that's just so amazing. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, your routines last year at the Cali Pro, there was yours and Gerald Williams. You know, you were the two that really put real effort into what your posing routines. To? Which song did you post to that show? What's that? What song did you post to, post to, to that, in that song? 
show. Oh, this show that we just had? No, the show you were just talking about. Last year's Cali Pro. Oh, last year's Cali Pro? That was, um, it was a 300 type theme music. I believe the title may have been Sanctity of Sorrow. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and yeah. oh, no, it was uh, Anthem of the Damned. That's what it's called. Devil so it's music. Anthem of the Damned. <laughs> and I like music like that because yeah. it, it's a buildup. And <laughs> as, as it goes, you know, I like to structure my posing routine as, mm. Yeah, I feel like all my poses are good, but you kind of want to use those ones that can wow the crowd or make yeah, them yeah. say, man, yeah. that's impressive. Wake them up. You say those towards the end, and generally the music builds up, yeah. and it's really hard bass line. Nice. So when it's time to hit the pose, it's kind of like one, two, three, hit it. Mm, and yeah. then you transition, transition, and one, two, three, and hit it. Mm. You know, so... That's what I did last year. This is good. This is good. I like hearing this because because uh, AJ's more into his his girly R and B, and I like proper heavy metal. <laughs> AJ call AJ calls the kind of music I like to listen to. He calls it devil music. Now me and because me and Phil, me and Phil, um, <laughs> me and Phil, it's uh, I, we like Five Finger Death Punch. You see, so we're we're oh. so yeah, it's, he, he, I love yeah yeah ah see what? see yeah. you're also listening to them. Figured, I, I listen to Five Finger Death Punch <laughs> yeah. always on my playlist. Seriously? Oh yeah. yeah. See, the I'm guy's sorry, got taste. The it, guy has taste. Very, very strange. Very strange. Very strange. AJ, Phil, I, I spoke oh. to Phil yesterday, and he says we're dragging you to a five-figure death punch. No, concert. I don't want to go. Yeah, to no. gonna get you on stage. There's no rap here, or we don't listen to rap anymore. Or what's wrong, man? <laughs> rap, rap. What, what's this? Rap. And AJ got knocked out yesterday on Saturday, huh? Yeah, man. Uh, oh. Dad bod. <laughs> He's laughing. Yeah. He got knocked out. <laughs> no, he got knocked no, out, bro. How did that happen? Hey, hey. AJ, you know the internet is undefeated, man. So oh. it, 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 I don't know what happened. I, oh. I just know that, you know, he's a meme now, and that's never what a you, meme. Know, you never want to end up as a meme. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got knocked out, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, do you think he just underestimated him? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think he probably looked at looked his physical him, yeah. structure and his stature and said, well. That just like I said, you know, he may have got lax in his training. Like, hey, I'm just going to pot shot this guy. And then Shit. when it's time, I'm going to try to drop the hammer. But that guy obviously wanted to make a statement like, hey, oh, yeah. okay, I know you don't take me serious, but I'm going to show you that you probably should take me serious. He, and he caught and him. He caught him with that one punch. And then that was it. Yeah. And he just, he, that was it. He, he was game over then, wasn't it? Well, I've always yeah, been a David Hay fan that, anyway. So. You're a David Hay fan, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're a, you're a like anyway. <laughs> well, we, we're ex <laughs> He looked like Millie Vanilli earlier on. He had his hair down. Yeah, yeah. Patrick, we were doing a photo shoot in the studio and he had his hair down. I said, AJ, you look like Millie Vanilli, mate. Oh, girl, yeah. you know it's true. You're going to have to lip sync, man. Yeah. 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 Well, we're really pumped for this Olympia. We, oh, we, yeah. uh, people are, more people's going to start talking about you. That's for sure. Yeah. The legs will just come up. That waist yeah. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The arms yeah, are abs as well. The abs. Deep, arms deep are abs. just fan. Can we see <laughs> your front double by Patrick, please? You are. Boom! Boom! Man! Even Chris is looking over. He's looking over now. That's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Any final questions for Patrick? No, we. I'm happy to be talking to you in this interview because we learned a lot about you. We mm. saw how competitive you are. Your mindset. Your body is fresh. You got Leela Broad in your corner. You got a great wife, good family at, at home. Phil yeah, Heath sir. giving you some good advice. Uh, it's just this, this, all the way, what can I say? It's all the way up is what we're going to say. This is <laughs> only one way for you and it's all the way up. Yeah, he's aiming yes, up. He's yeah. aiming, aiming high. So this my, will be... My eyes, my eyes are on the top, of, are at the top, towards the top of that mountain. Yeah. Perf and perfect I, age. I, I'm, I'm going to keep keep training, climbing and climbing until I get there. I mean, I'm just not going to stop. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm just not. I we, can feel, we feel that energy. Yeah, people yeah. just, some people just say it, but the hair, yeah. we, we believe it, you know? It's, yeah. it's different. Yeah, everything's uh, everything's there. Yeah. Where can yeah. people reach you? Where can people follow more, Patrick Moore? So on, on Instagram, I'm most active on there, at Patrick T. Moore. And that, that's, I interact with people to tell you or people that go on there. I comment back to as many people as I possibly can. Mm. There's an email button there. People, and That's my personal email. Probably should create another one. <laughs> but for people that want to make sure that they get a message across, how do I get big arms, it. Patrick? Yeah, uh, <laughs> how do I get big arms? A lot of time. Indian guys probably do. Yeah, uh, 
And they're like, can you just tell me how to get big arms? I'm like, train them every day for six years. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every, every day. day. Every day, wow. wow. Every day, yeah. 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 And you have a YouTube like, channel. Huh? You have a YouTube channel or Twitter? Yeah, or... so the, there, there's a YouTube channel up and it has a lot of content on there. Um, nothing is super recent just yet, but it's Patrick Moore on there. I, I, I'll, I, yeah, you can just type in my name, Patrick Moore Bodybuilder. Mm. And that'll take one of my videos, one of the, I guess there may be 20 so far. They'll pop up, but none of it's current training. And so I'm, I am going to do like an Olympia prep series where I can get good, some of Because my good. training now is different from what I used to do. Can you, so I'm going to start getting that training up here at Raw Gym. Mm. And, and it's going to be exactly how I train. It, can we it's get exactly Lila, what I do. Hang on. Can we get a Lila Brana uh, posting on that YouTube channel yeah, too? Yeah. I um, don't, I'm sure – I'm that we can make that happen man it, it, he, yeah. he i'm sure he probably loved that actually and mm. can you jump on a plane to colorado and get some training sessions at the armbrust gym with phil because i'd love to see some olympia training videos in the lead up with you and phil i think hey. that would be very very cool arm challenge 100%. arm challenge yeah so. yeah if he, definitely if he has the time i know his schedule is kind of busy because he got some things going on but mm -hmm. i mean that's all he he can say hey you want to come up and see me and, and do some training? Uh, yeah. Like, I'll be there. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be running up the road. Yeah, yeah you know. Okay. Okay. All right then, Patrick. Well, we really appreciate you coming yeah, on. It's been really a fantastic. It's been a fantastic energy, and I think mm. we've really got a good feel for uh, where you're at and where you're headed. So, uh, can't thank you enough, mate. And um, just wish you all the best. And we can't wait to see you in Vegas, mate. Hey, thank you guys for having me on, man. I promise I won't disappoint. I will have an improved physique yeah. in Vegas from what I just did. You so, go. you know, I hope those guys are, are, are expecting that. Well, heard it here first. <laughs> okay then Patrick we'll, uh, well, we'll see you soon and uh, all the very best for your training and uh, kick ass mate and we will see you in Las Vegas <laughs> alright thank you AJ thank you Carl bye thank you thank you Patrick bye bye mate bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> do 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 singing Millie Vanilli now <laughs> you're really happy today huh? yeah yeah it's brilliant <laughs> yeah it's good told you he's good cool, cool Patrick guy, Moore uh, if, cool dude when people see that interview they will know he's the real deal. Easy yeah. as that. Nice guy, isn't he? Good guy. Good guy. The real deal. Yeah, yeah. Real, yeah, I just... I, he's just... I, I like having the legends on, but I like having the up-and-comers, and I like giving, you know, opportunity. Because, you know, there's a guy that, you know, two years, who knows where that guy could be in the IFBB. I mean, he's already winning pro shows. He's Two, two years, years after he'll be turning, at least top eight at Olympia I think he's yeah, I, yeah I think he's got potential I think he's got potential I mean he's the if you look at the improvements from last year's Cali Pro to this year's Cali Pro as a barometer to see how much he's improved absolutely incredible and at 28 inch waist his arms must be sure, like 21 sure a lot of pros say the 28 when it's really 32 but here it is 28 I eh? think my waist is 28 actually. yes the trousers you, keep falling down do you, but they are just you saw his waist on it's stage. It's tiny. And from the side, because where, where the intercostals come down like a V, it just looks like the waist. Like when Arnold, you know, where the waist just goes to nothing. It looks absolutely amazing. So, yeah. So, do you, do you enjoy that one? Fantastic. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. Both like him it. and John De La Rosa, that's the good guys of the sport, eh? Yeah. And we've got another one. Oh, oh, oh. oh! Funnily enough, we might have mentioned his name in that interview yeah. several times, but... Uh, yeah, so big thank you there to Patrick Moore. We'll be right back after the high-tech pharmaceuticals ad break who sponsored the show. And without them, this show would not be possible. So after the break, we'll be right back with our main, very, Hall very... Of superstar level fame. Hall. Very special like guest. Top, top of the map. I wonder if you'll pose for us. Should we'll ask. <laughs> okay, then we'll be right back after the break. And we are out. Yeah. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by the IFBB legend. Hall of Famer. <laughs> Lee Brada, yeah. Definite round of applause for Lee. <laughs> Definite round of applause. Lee, thank yeah, you, you so much for joining oh. us. You guys, you guys are great. Thanks for the warm introduction. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, where do I start? Oh, where, do start? where do you start? It's like wait. first, congratulations on your son turning pro. Yes, Hunter. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, you know we're very, very proud of him. Hunter 
uh, uh, did a really nice job uh, get, uh, training for the uh, the nationals, mm -hmm. uh, and not, not only won the super heavyweight class, but also won the overall. overall yeah. And I wanted to just uh, add this little this little bit, um, and, and I promise I won't run away with the show. <laughs> it, uh, Hunter actually trained for the NPC nationals uh, with a, a severe bicep injury that required surgery oh, really? afterwards, oh, really? uh, and uh, he uh, completed the surgery and was just cleared uh, to train again, but he literally uh, was only training biceps once a month uh, leading up to the uh, nationals, so it was, mm -hmm. uh, he, he really uh, trained in a lot of pain. He never told anybody, but he's, he did a really great job. How did his yeah. surgery go? Everything is fine now? He's healed? Or? Everything's great. Cosmetically and physically perfect, by the grace of God. Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah. Are you happy yeah. he's become a bodybuilder and followed in your footsteps? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm just tickled that he decided to, uh, to uh, follow bodybuilding because really a very interesting. But uh, growing up, we never really pushed them uh, mm. in, into bodybuilding. We always had a home gym, and I was always out there training, as was my wife. Uh, but he did the usual uh, sports here in the United States, like uh, American football, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, baseball and, and so forth. And, uh, and then just got interested in, in weight training when he was uh, 16, trying to pack it on for, for football and fell in love with, uh, with bodybuilding. Yeah. God, I'm, well, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, now I started following the sport. It was issue 96 of muscle mag I bought, which was April, 1990. Now wow. that, yeah, yeah, that, so yeah, it was uh, I remember <laughs> May I bought uh, my first copy of Flex magazine, and you, it was you, Sean Ray, uh, 1992, it was uh, Kevin Navrone I started following as well, you were like yep. one of my absolute heroes, I remember buying the first 1990 uh, Olympia video, when obviously you took second that year that yep. um, you placed a se like second to Lee Haney, um, right. I, I don't know what, it's just crazy, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I, I missed the week. Back in the day, we used. I'm from Norway, so we used to drive to Sweden to get your yes. to get your super char. Was it super? Oh my god! Super <laughs> charge. You remember that product you used to sell? Oh super yeah, I, I do. Was, I do. And it wasn't allowed in Norway because it was so good. So we have to <laughs> we have to drive to Sweden to buy it. Yeah. That's, that's how cool. I remember those days, man. That's, that's so great. So Jals, that's tell great. people at home who Lee Labrada is. A short resume for people who's Lee stuck. Labrada. Yeah, who is Lee Labrada? Well, I know his first Mr. Olympia was in 1987. 87, that's 87. right. 87, that was in Sweden. Is it Sweden? Uh -huh, it, was, it was in Sweden, that's correct. Yeah, because 85 was Gothenburg in Sweden and they had it again in 87. That was the first, that was the first Olympia you did. The 1988 Olympia, because we, we also had Barry DeMay on a few, a couple of months ago. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> That's right. But, that's great. Um, guy. Yeah, and then uh, and then um, 1989, you just you went from fourth, and then you became uh, second. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and then eventually you retired in 1995, didn't you? Yep, and then I retired in '95. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. I remember because remember it was the um, that was because around '93 we had the you know the emergence of Dorian, where all the bodybuilders were kind of getting so much bigger. And yeah. then I remember you, you, you I think you, was it even before the 1995 Arnold Classic, you, you said, after this show, I am calling it a day. Can you, can you tell us about that? Yeah. So um, actually, Dorian came out of the scene in 91. Mm -hmm. uh, he competed in, um, I, I want to say, uh, yeah, 91. Uh -huh, and he competed yeah. with uh, Lee Haney and myself in 91. Orlando. Uh, Haney won that one. Uh, 92, uh, we competed in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Dorian... Um, uh, Dorian took uh, uh, the that Olympia, and Kevin Leveron was second, and I uh, and I was third. What was the question? And I'm sorry, I digress. I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Dorian about the size. Yes, yeah, it was more about uh, you know right, the, right. the the super okay, size. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I remember now. So uh, yeah, essentially around uh, 1995, I realized that I had accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish in pro bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, and I felt kind of like the proverbial climber that's climbed Mount Everest and keeps letting the rope down. You know, and then saying, ah, I'm going to climb it one more time, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, after a while, um, uh, it, it's one of those things that uh, I felt like um, I had outgrown the sport and the sport had outgrown me physically, yeah. you know, so it was uh, definitely headed into a more massive uh, uh, di direction. Uh, competing against Lee Haney, did you ever go in when you, because you weighed about 30 pounds, 40 pounds less? Did you? Uh, actually. Actually, uh, I competed against Lee Haney at 190, and Lee Haney was 250, so it's yeah. a 60 pound advantage. So, when yeah. you prepped for the Olympia against him, did you prep to win, or how were you like? Did you how how was your mindset going against Lee Haney? Yeah, Chris, 
let me tell you something. The only way that you can compete at that level is if you prep to win. Mm. And so I was convinced to the marrow of my bone that I was going to win. And um, and so, yes, that's the uh, attitude that, that I took uh, uh, to prep. It just it's all consuming. And you don't realize it uh, sometimes until years later, uh, you know, when you're removed a little bit more from the sport, you know, and not actually competing, you know, just how uh, all consuming it really is, mm. you know, just in terms of your attention, your focus, you know, and uh, I think it's the world's hardest sport because, you know, when you're playing football or baseball or basketball or any any Olympic sport for that matter, you know, when you're done, you know, you're done. You you know, you go home, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the training, the, uh, the diet is not as strict and so forth. But when you're a bodybuilder, you're on 24-7. Mm. You've got to make sure that you're eating the right things every three hours, you know, seven times a day. Mm. You know, there's there's no breaks. It's 365 days a year. If you want to keep progressing, you know, that that day that you miss a workout, your competition did not. Mm. You know, so it's just you just got to keep going. I've always said, I've said many, many times on this show and other shows, I think, I think the 1991 Olympia, your posing routine, I think, I think that's the greatest posing routine I've ever seen. Honestly, I really think that is that it's it's because uh, AJ likes the Vince Taylor routine. He likes the Terminator routine. <laughs> but I, honestly, that was I mean, what an Olympia that was because you had like Vince Taylor doing the, a completely different style of entertaining posing, and yours was kind of, I mean, the one we do the pirouette and then you fall to the floor. Oh, it's uh, oh, I mean, yeah. it's just such a shame. We, we we also had Patrick Moore on this episode, one of your sponsored athletes. You know. Patrick, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed, I missed the question. Sorry, on, sorry. On, on this episode, we've also had Patrick Moore, one of your oh, sponsored yes. athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was talking yes. about... Um, cause yes, I, great athlete. Because we're really, really... Uh, one thing we always go on about, I, I've got a thing for condition and really good posing, and I think it's something that is actually... It, it seems to be lacking... Uh, when did you see a switch in the posing? What time did you yeah. see? When did you start to be worrying about what's going on with the posing? What? Well... That that would have been about the time. Uh, that would have been probably about the time that Lee Haney retired. Uh, the sports started going in a different direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it mass uh, became king uh, to the exclusion of everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, it didn't matter if you uh, posed uh, well or not, uh, because uh, it was all about uh, having this the massive size and mm -hmm. muscularity. And, and listen, we all know that that's part of bodybuilding for sure. You know, but should it be everything? No, because then it's mass building, not bodybuilding. Mm. You know, so there's a lot more to bodybuilding than just uh, than just building size. You know, there's there's uh, muscularity, there's definition, there's symmetry, there's proportion. You know, there's the the, the tie-ins. You know, which a lot of that that piece of it is genetics, the way that the muscles tie in, the length of the muscle bellies, and mm. and whatnot. And a lot of these guys started looking, yeah, very massive, but they started looking like, like they were put together from assorted parts rather than uh, a physique that flowed from head to toe, you know? And so I think that the sport lost its way after Lee Haney retired. And I think that it's, uh, I think that in recent years, it started to gain its, uh, its um, uh, bearings again. You're starting to see uh, physiques like Patrick Moore that are being favored, you know, with mm -hmm. the large shoulders and the small waist, um, you know? And uh, I think, by the way, that he's gonna be a real threat yes. in, uh, in the years to come. You know, so it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. My son Hunter, as big as he is, has a small waist as well. Yeah. You know, so uh, I, I I think that uh, that's the wave of the future. It's funny you've got Sergio and uh, Sergio Junior, and they are very similar physiques. But you and Hunter, I can see a slight genetic similarity in the arms, in the yes. the shape of the arms. But I don't. Yeah. That you're completely different sorts of physiques, aren't you? Well, in in I'll tell you, it's very interesting. Our legs are totally different. Yeah. So I, th I think he got, you know, he got my wife's side of the family on the legs uh, and he's just got massive legs, uh, fantastic, um, well-shaped, massive legs. Um, and then uh, I believe that he got my my waist structure. I believe he got my chest. I believe that uh, he got um, uh, my triceps and my back. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> but he de it definitely has his own um, his own uh, 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 take on on, uh, on on things. Yeah. How how involved are you with his nutrition and training? Oh my gosh, it's just uh, I mean literally the, what I tell people it's it's like uh, it's like the two wheels on a bicycle. You know, if one wheel is out, training and nutrition. Two wheels on a bicycle. If one wheel is out, you're going nowhere. Mm. You know, if your training is perfect, your nutrition is perfect, then you know the sky's the limit. 
you know, so um, is it 50 percent? Is it 60 percent? No, it's, it's just it's just as important as training. I mean, you know, it, you just can't do one without the other. I think you, uh, I asked how involved are you with your son's training in nutrition? I asked. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I yeah. thought you said how important is uh, no, the, no. Uh, we the, know that's very the, important. I'm just asking you about yeah, your son. Yeah. How involved are you with his oh, nutrition oh, and yeah. training? So, uh, you know, my, my son has his own way of, of training. I feel that I've influenced him over the years, you know, especially early on as he was developing his training uh, methodologies, um, you know, and, um, you know, we, we converse and we talk about uh, exercises and, and whatnot on a frequent basis, but he's got his own way of doing things. Uh, I can tell you he's a very scientific trainer, which I also oh, really? was. So mm. he studies uh, the physiology. Uh, he's not one of these guys that throws uh, heavy weights around. He uses mm. very heavy weights. Mm. Uh, I mean, he's he's done you know he's done a, a triple with 600 in the squat before, and that was four years ago before wow. he uh, got any of the size that he's got now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he, but but he uh, uses the weights as a tool, very methodical, very controlled. Um, you know, and uh, so uh, to answer your question, he's got his own way of uh, of uh, uh, doing things. How far do you see him going in the sport? <clears throat> I see him. I see him uh, going to the Olympia stage. Mm -hmm. You know, and and if and if I'm honest, and I've told him this before, you know, he has surprised me at every level. You know, uh, when he when he mm -hmm. started competing at the uh, regional level here in in Texas, which mm -hmm. is where we live, uh, several uh, about four years ago. Um, I said, let's see how he does this at this level. And he went in and he won the uh, Branch Warren Classic, which was his first show. He won the heavyweight and the overall. Mm -hmm. And then um, the following year, uh, went in and competed in the Europa Games, which is, a, a, I, I dare say, a larger a, a show and yes. uh, more competitive. Um, and it's it has uh, produced several champions that have gotten their pro cards from that. Mm -hmm. He went in and won the um, uh, the uh, 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 super heavies and the overall on that one. Mm -hmm. And so he turns to me and he says, Dad, or, you know, am I ready to go to nationals? I said, son, I think that you need to take another year uh, because if you want to go to nationals, you want to go there not just to win your class yeah. and then go home and have somebody else win the overall. You want to go there and you want to win – you, not only your class, but the overall, because you're mm. only going to have one shot. If you win your class, you're done. And then it's yeah. on to the pros. And that's like starting all over again. And so uh, he uh, he listened. Uh, you know, he's very methodical, very intelligent about that, uh, about his uh, um, career and the uh, his ascent, uh, let's say. And uh, so he went into the junior USA's, won the super heavyweight and the overall. Mm. And then he said, OK, now we're ready for nationals. And so uh, essentially he went into the nationals and won the super heavyweight and the overall, yeah. you know, so um, uh, he's doing spectacularly well. Um, if it hadn't been for this bicep injury, I think he would have done uh, very well um, uh, starting uh, next year, going into his first pro show. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we'll see. He may still be competing at his next pro show. But uh, to, to more specifically answer your question, I see him on the Olympia stage and I see him breaking the top six in the Olympia one day. Mm -hmm. How old is he now? <laughs> Uh, he's 27. He just turned 27 in May. So young. I mean, because I, I, I know he's gone a little bit quiet on social media the last few months. I, I, obviously, that's why, because of the bicep. But it's good to see that you, um, you're supporting him because, I mean, when we spoke to Sergio and he said his dad was really dead against him, trying to stop him even training. <clears throat> so it's great to see, you know, that, that level of support and um, encouragement, you know, for his career. Yes. Great. Sir, 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 both Sergio's... Uh have great physiques, you yeah. know, and, and junior's, no, no, junior's no exception. Great physique. Yeah, and obviously Tony Freeman's son now comp uh, want, wanting to compete, <laughs> thinking about competing anyway. So, yeah, let's go back to... Oh, so, so Tony Freeman has a son that's competing now. Yes, yeah. well, he, he was supposed to be doing the Arnold Classic, and he said he was going to be doing the Classic class, and he was all set up, and then he, he didn't compete for some reason. But I actually met him at the Olympia because I interviewed Tony at the Olympia last year, and, uh, yeah, the guy's got... I mean, his son... What's his son, Terrell? So he's got mm. fantastic genetic. I mean, you obviously can see there. He's got his dad's genetics. We got a lot of 90s fans and 80s fans watching this show. So mm. uh, <laughs> you said Dorian again. Should we, you would have liked to have seen Sean Ray or Kevin Lee Rolney or Flex Wheeler take out Dorian Yates, didn't you? That that those looks what kind of what you tend to like more. Well, let me let me say this. I think that let me frame it this way. Mm. I think that Dorian <clears throat> Yates is a great. Um, there's a reason he won uh, uh, six Olympias. Um, you know, one winning one Olympia might be a fluke, but when you win six, there's a reason. You know, <laughs> and so I think he's a great athlete. Um, as far as the body style. Um, I think personally, and this is my opinion, mm. because at the end of the day, bodybuilding is a subjective sport, isn't mm. it? My opinion is that 
Uh, Kevin Leverone, Sean Ray, and Flex Wheeler should each have won an Olympia as well. Any particular years you felt they should have won? I'm sorry? Any particular years you felt they should have won? Because I've heard people say no, this before, no, but ne they, people no, never actually honest. say years. No, I'm just saying, I'm just stating that those are Olympia Right, right. Years. Right, because I mean, some people say, well, um, you know, 1994, they reckon Sean Ray should have won, and it, but actual specific years, you know? Mm. So let's talk, <clears throat> sorry, let's talk about what was your favorite Olympia for you? What was your most memorable? I've got a feeling I know what the answer is going to be. So I, I would, I would uh, dare say uh, 89 oh, right. uh, and uh, 90 would pro were probably my most memorable yeah. Olympias. 89, I took uh, second place, mm -hmm. and it was in Rimini, and uh, I decidedly had the crowd in, in my favor, and, uh, and so I just felt a lot of positive energy. The Italians have always been known for the, uh, the, the Roman classic yeah. ideal when it comes to the physiques, and uh, they, just, they just went crazy. Uh, and, and so I felt a lot of support there and it was the first year that I took uh, second place mm -hmm. uh, behind me and, and, and firmly established myself there as a, as a, uh, as a contender. And then in 90, um, uh, going into the, the uh, 90 show, which was drug tested, I took, mm -hmm. uh, I took the prejudging. I, I was actually leading Lee Haney yeah. coming out of the prejudging, which close. is the only Very time. Close. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, so it was really the only time in his career that anybody had um, take, uh, taken uh, first place ahead of him, mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of the first time he competed. Because I don't think he won. I think he won in '84. He competed in '83, and I'm not sure if that was a top three. I think it was a top three finish. Mm -hmm. But you know, since he had That's gotten awesome. his crown, that was the first time that anybody had uh, uh, beaten him at a, at a prejudging. And so uh, when the, you know when the night show came and I walked away with second place, no. mm -hmm. um, it, it was memorable. But perhaps for the wrong reason, right. you know, just the uh, level, the level of deep seated uh, disappointment that mm. I felt, uh, felt, you know, See, even with the drug testing, there was yourself, <clears throat> Sean Ray, uh, Mike Christian, Francis Ben Fato and Frank Hillebrand. I thought they were the ones, you were the ones that brought the best conditioning. Um, Lee Haney was, I thought, yeah, I thought that Sean Ray and, um, and uh, Mike Christian were in exceptionally good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Francis Ben Fato was he 176, I think in that Olympia. So, so how did you feel going home that after that event, knowing that you were leading in prejudging? How how did you make that feel later? How did you? What did you do? Well, it, it, it um, I had a change in mindset, you know, and I realized that um, that I had to strive to improve myself. <clears throat> I had to strive to uh, beat last year's Lee Labrada, mm. you know, uh, regardless of how the outcome uh, uh, would would go, you know, uh, because uh, again. You know, it, it was one of those things where um, the sport was changing and I was mm. up against bigger men and um, and it was decidedly going in that direction. And so um, I had to change. I had to change my outlook mm. and the outlook became and I was just as motivated. But the outlook was I'm going to I'm going to basically beat myself from mm. last year and the chips are going to fall where they're going to fall. Mm. Yeah. You know? So let's tell about um, <clears throat> LeBron Nutrition. What year did you start that and how did that come about? So I launched that in 95. You know, I had worked with uh, Weeder through the early 90s. And then 92, I was one of, of the uh, uh, four original people at Metrics, the others being yep. uh, Scott Connolly, the founder, Bill Phillips, and Jeff Everson, mm -hmm. uh, and myself. And uh, we did very well with that for a couple of years. And then uh, when that went to the wayside and everybody went their own way, I launched Labrador Nutrition, 1995. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was it was tough. It's it's been a, a slow, hard road, um, uh, but it's 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 been good because I've, it's given me a platform to help a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, the art, tell us about the RTDs. I mean, I've had they're fantastic. The bars, I mean, the products are good, and you're still going strong. Tell us more. Yes, yeah. yes, how, we are. How many, got, yeah. yeah, we got the uh, num number one best-selling ready-to-drink protein shake, the Lean Body Shake, uh, in gyms in the United States is number one. The good taste. How many yeah. products did you start with in 95? Where did you start from? From home or did so, you? No, we actually uh, started out of a little 2,000 square foot office warehouse space. Wow. And it, myself uh, myself and a couple of employees, my dad would come in and he would help pack boxes in the warehouse. Wow. Uh, we couldn't even afford a forklift. And oh, wow. I mean, it was just, uh, when the trucks would pull up, we would literally all throw our sneakers on and uh, <laughs> you know, we would uh, uh, bucket brigade the products yeah. from the truck into the warehouse. And so we, I mean, literally just bootstrapped the thing. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then uh, my wife would go up uh, in the evening. I would come home. Uh, I would uh, put the kids in bed and my wife would go up in the evening and, uh, and, and do the uh, bookkeeping, you oh, know? Wow. So it was, uh, it was very hands-on. It's still very hands-on. It's a family business. 
And, um, you know, I grew from there and, you know, you know, today we've got almost a hundred thousand square feet on, on the roof. Wow. You know, and we, feet, yeah. yeah, we distribute in over 30 countries. Well, I used to work for John Citrone in the UK because when he, he was a UK distributor for Metrex, uh, the, at the about 92, 93. And then for a while he distributed yours and then he started his own brand. But, um, yeah, cause, cause you did the meal replacement, you did the bars, the RTDs, yep, but you still, right. I mean, so has it just been like a slow, steady growth or have you, uh, do you see yourself getting any bigger or? It's been a slow, steady growth, and um, you know, and, and we're we're growing quite well uh, where where the uh, uh, protein shakes and the protein products are going. That's what mm. we're known for. Yeah. Are you biggest yeah. Are you biggest domestically, or are you looking to grow it internationally, or or is it mainly well, like a, a national brand? Yeah, so we're we're bigger we're bigger domestically, but we have uh, we have lots of international business as well. You know, we've got areas that are just going phenomenally well for us. Mm. Uh, India, for instance, oh, believe fantastic. it or not, Vietnam. Oh, fantastic. Who would have thought? Oh. Uh, you know, so there's a lot, a lot uh, you know, uh, uh, Middle East, there's a lot of areas that are really uh, growing. Yeah. But it's expensive, isn't it, to export the, the RTDs? Because I've been involved in supplement industries as well and uh, supplement businesses. And uh... Yeah, there's cer- certainly the weight issue when you're talking about international distribution, right? Yeah, yeah, refrigeration and all that. It's mm. a, bit of a bit of a pain. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Do yeah. you follow the new classes at all? Do you fo- follow the classics classes? I was and, or, just about to ask that. Or, and... <laughs> and What's your opinion also after that about female bodybuilding? Do you follow that sport? Uh, well, so um, so um, what, what I will, there's so many uh, great athletes out there. And I mean, I tip my hat to all of them. And uh, I do follow some of the classic uh, bodybuilding. You know, I'll follow it on Instagram and the like. I can't say that um, uh, that I know a lot of the uh, of the uh, of the top names, uh, you know, rough diesel, great physique. Mm, I Terrence, mean, um, yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a number of them, you know, that, uh, that, that I like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but but overall, I just love the fact that it's going in that direction, you know, and that, that, um, that part of the sport is growing, uh, much faster than the, uh, open class in bodybuilding, you know, and I can attest to that because we have a bodybuilding show that I put on here every year, the Lee Labrada classic. Mm -hmm. And, and I can tell you from the entries um, that the um, classic physique and the physique, men's, men's physique, physique uh, are just gr- just exploding, you know, and um, and the um, uh, open class uh, bodybuilding mm. is, um, I would say, uh, uh, just stable. But do you follow men's physique? Is that something uh, you would compete in back in the day? Um, no, I I. I, I uh, I would have always opted to come in at whatever body weight was best mm. for my frame, and then the chips would fall where they, where they do. You know, so I would say, um, you know, I would say that um, we're, you know, I, I would probably have ended up in the open class, but pro- probably one of the, uh, you know, as a light heavyweight or something. Not the mm. two twelve. Um, no, I think I would have gone for the open. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I would have shot for that, but that's just my mentality. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with the two twelve. There's mm. nothing wrong with it at all. You know, um, and you know, um, there, there's a lot of great competitors at that level. Mm. Um, you know, but my mentality growing up and growing in the sport, I always, always faced competitors that outweighed me by forty and fifty pounds. Yeah. 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 From the beginning, I mean, literally, my very first bodybuilding competition. Uh, as a teenager, I was probably a buck thirty-five, mm. dripping wet, and I beat guys that were one seventy-five. And I was yeah. like looking around, going, "How the hell did I pull that off? Why did I win?" You know. And it only uh, only re- to realize later that bodybuilding is just m- more than about size. Yeah. And so I never th- I never thought about my size or my body weight. Mm. I just went in there to create the best package, and and I went in there to win. And, and I didn't care how big they were. But in those days, the judging was geared more towards aesthetics. And like you said, I mean, you retired in 1995, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when they were kind of opting for the bigger, less aesthetic, less symmetrical guys, maybe not as well conditioned, n- not as quality physiques. So, um, yeah. So, so if, 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 those cla- if, the, if the classes were around in those days, you, out of the classic, the 212 and the Open, you'd have still done the Open. So, yes, absolutely. Stop and think about this for a second. okay? because if I'm at 190 pounds and I've got an aesthetic physique and I'm beating a guy that at back then at 240 or 230 had an aesthetic physique also. Yeah. Then what's the difference? We're both aesthetic physiques. Yeah. Thing is, there was no need for those classes 15, 20 years ago because the judging was geared towards people like yourself with with symmetrical 
You know, like yep. a, a, like uh, nowadays, could but, you see a guy at one ninety really contending with the guys on stage? It just well, wouldn't happen. It stop, wouldn't stop, happen stop, nowadays. Stop think about this. See what you what what you need to see is that it was a level playing field. Yeah. Back then, that I was competing on, I was competing on a level playing field mm. from the standpoint that all of those physiques, by and large, in my era, mm. were classical physiques. I mean, mm. look at Lee Haney. Okay, Lee Haney is a big guy, but Lee Haney had great lines. Yes. Yet at 190 pounds, giving away a 60 pound advantage, I managed to beat him at a pre judging in 1990. Yeah. Why on earth would I go to a 212? Yeah, that's a good point. Of course. Yeah, that's a good point. Any question? <laughs> how, of, how much time did you <laughs> practice your practice on the posing? How much time did you use? So I, I practiced uh, posing religiously going up to a show and uh, and I always invested the time in uh, in uh, uh, digging through uh, musical archives to find the right type of music that I wanted. And then uh, having uh, creative sessions in the off season where I would try to string together uh, poses and transitions that uh, would flow to uh, to music. I looked at it as art. And I always looked at uh, at these routines as more than a string of static poses. You know, you have your static poses. You have a front double bicep, a front last spread, and so forth. So forth. But how you get from one pose to the other, that is a dynamic yeah. pose. So you yeah. have static poses, which we're all familiar with. They're the mandatories. But um, we have transitions, which are dynamic poses. So that's yeah. how I always approached it. And I said, I have to look just as good in the transitions as I look in the static pose. You know, and that is where it becomes an art form, and that's where it starts to flow effortlessly. Yeah, that 1991 Olympia, I saw uh, elements of karate, elements of ballet. You know, when you do the pirouette yeah. and you land on the floor. Can you tell yeah. us more about? Because I, I am, I'm absolutely fascinated by that routine. Like, it like got, 27, got, 28 years later. It's it, Giles. You're very observant. Mm. Let me just compliment you because it had both. So my first sport was taekwondo. Right, as, right. As, as a young man and so that's where you saw some of those uh yeah. what you would call karate type move martial mm -hmm. art type of, of a move and then um and then i actually worked with a, a gentleman uh from the uh, spanish ballet company in madrid um on the uh, uh, bullfighter you know the uh, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Uh, piece of, uh, of the routine you you know yeah, the, you know so, the po so, so Lee, you, you know the pose i'm talking about both. So you know the bit I'm talking about. You know when you do the yes. pirouette and you land on the floor like that. It's I've never yes. ever seen anything like that in posing any posing routine, even yeah. remotely close. I, do you know I, yes. I've got actually a bit of a memory. I was 15 years old. This was in December 1991, and I went to a supplement shop and you know Ian Harrison, the British pro. Oh yeah. Oh Ian Harrison, great bodybuilder. Yeah, he did an appearance. And, and out. What a great, great personality, a great sense of humor. I love the guy. Yeah, he lives in Florida. Yeah, he lives in Florida. Yeah, and we 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 actually put the 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 VHS tape on the yeah, 1991 yeah. Olympia routine, and we put it on, and we were stood there watching it because it was like a load of people in the shop doing appearance. And I remember just I remember just looking at uh, 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 Ian's face when he saw Lee's routine, and I said uh, <laughs> I said Ian, would you ever try anything like that? And he says, Giles, I'd go through the stage. Because <laughs> <laughs> like you know the pirouette bit, that yeah. one bit. He says, Giles, I would go through the stage. He says, I'm like nearly 300 pounds, mate. He says it wouldn't happen. So, yeah, that was, I was 15 years old, 15 years yeah. old, man, that's crazy. Yeah. That was, that was, uh, that was a very memorable routine. Yeah. I put a lot of, I put a lot of time and effort into that one. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, like I said, it's for me, it's the all time best posing routine. That was beautiful. It, it really is. It really is. I think we'll have to get some and show it in our intro and I'll show yeah. intro, try and get it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, no, it's fantastic. But, um, yeah, do you want any quick questions? No, it's just, uh, we just so. <laughs> Happy that you you are definitely the most. What can I say? Everybody know is so happy to see that you're still so like positive and still involved for all these years. You know, we mm. we really impressed by. And who's in the best shape at the moment? You, Barry Demille, Rich Gaspar. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I want to see a I want to see a pose down. I want to see a pose down between you three. <laughs> That's great. Hey, listen, they're 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 uh, they're That's all true. still working out. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite a, Have you seen uh, Barry? Very, uh, yeah, Barry really made a transition in uh, wow. in '88, and uh, it looks uh, looks fantastic. What's your training regimen like right now? Because you're so in great I still, shape. Yeah, I still train every day. Thank you. You know, and um, yeah, day. I mean, my, uh, my my skin still stays very thin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm probably sitting in single digit body fat. I stay that way year round. Wow. And uh, I have a natural tendency to be le- on the leaner side anyway. I have a fast metabolism. So uh, I eat a clean diet and uh, I don't go hungry, but uh, I stay lean. Mm. And I still do the same uh, push pull type of training that I've, uh, I've done for the last 40 years. Mm. You know, with all of the uh, pushing muscles on one day, the chest, shoulders, triceps, pulling muscles, the back and the biceps on another day, and then the legs uh, have a day of their own. What's your diet like now, then? Yeah. Say again, I'm sorry? As, uh, what's your diet like now? What's my diet like now? Yeah, yeah. So, sort of so a t- typical. typical day, I wake up in the morning. I'll tell you what I had today. I woke up in the morning, uh, and it's uh, just after lunchtime here, so there's only two meals. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. but uh, uh, I woke up this morning, and I had uh, scrambled egg whites with one yolk, and I had three pieces of dry whole grain toast, a uh, tablespoon of fish oil, and a cup of coffee. How many eggs? Uh, How many eggs? And, <laughs> we want to uh, know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. You guys are always you guys are bodybuilders. So always yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, eight, eight, eight egg whites okay. and one yolk. And so, um, and then uh, for uh, lunch here, I just had uh, a chicken breast, a grilled chicken breast, and I had a bowl of uh, black beans and rice. Okay. And of course, uh, here's the uh, here's the uh, here's the plug. Whenever I don't have anything to eat, I have Money, one of these. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried them? Have you ever tried them? Oh, of course I've they're tried beautiful. Them. They're beautiful. I had a good. I had to get the shameless plug in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> what supplements do you use? Which supplements do you use from your range? For your yeah, you know, t- typically I I, um, I utilize the uh, the lean body protein. I, I um, uh, uh, don't supplement with a, a lot of what you call the traditional bodybuilding uh, uh, stuff, like the pre workouts, and they just they, I, I don't need it because I've yeah. always responded well just to a little bit of caffeine from the coffee, mm-hmm. and so uh, it typically a uh, protein fish oil. Uh, I take uh, a complete gamut of vitamins, uh, you know, B-complex, vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, coenzyme Q10 for the heart, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in just eating uh, as naturally as possible and getting as many nutrients as I can from the food. Yeah. Have you ever had any health issues? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think everybody does. I, I'm, mm. I'm 59 years old now. <laughs> and so uh, by the grace of God, I don't have, uh, I don't have any amazing. no. <laughs> No, 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 yeah, no, no joint issues. Uh, I have no, um, uh, you know, no muscular problems, uh, no back problems, spine mm. issues, nothing. But it's because I've always respected my body and I've always uh, listened. You know, when there's a difference between pain that um, is generated by uh, injury and, and pain that is generated yeah. by just training the muscle really hard and it's hurting. Yeah. You know, so you just have to learn the difference, you know, and I've always respected my body that way. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had my issues, you know, uh, the occasional bout of bronchitis or a, a stomach flu and things like that, you know. Mm. How do you train in the gym? Are you training moderate or are you going all in when you train? No, it's typic- It's typically, uh, I train for 45 minutes and I'll typically Same do uh, about oh. uh, eight, eight sets of body part. Oh, wow. And eight, what eight sets of per body that's part. All. That's all. Yeah, eight, eight sets per body part, and then I move at a very fast clip, resting no more than one minute between sets. In fact, mm. I'll set a timer on my iPhone uh, to make sure, you know, that I don't get distracted yeah. and that I rest no longer than 60 seconds. And then uh, what I do is I, I go uh, probably between 60 and 80 percent of max. So my rep range is anywhere between eight and 12 repetitions. Mm. Uh, with a, what I would call moderate weight. My weights are not anywhere near what they used to be when mm. I was competing. Mm. You know, but then again, you know, I've um, where I used to compete at maybe a, a buck ninety. I mm. run about a hundred and seventy, hundred and seventy to one hundred and seventy-five these days. Yeah. Mm. So, what, what do you think about the modern trend of the uh, like longevity clinics with uh, TRT for men over forty? Because they're saying that uh, it's become more and more popular now. What's your thoughts on that as a, as a guy over forty? Oh. Oh, I think it's great. I mean, they've been doing the um, uh, the hormone replacement therapy for women for years. Yeah, you know, and, HRT. and uh, now they've become more enlightened, and they realize that men go through andropause also, mm-hmm. and it's not about uh, uh, taking excessive amounts and and uh, go, going, uh, you know, into a um, uh, you know a high level that's not natural. Uh, super physiological, as they call it, a super physiological dose. Hmm. It's about maintaining uh, your testosterone in a normal range, you yeah. know. And it and shown in the studies that it has all sorts of benefits for the heart, for bone density, and even hmm. longevity. So yeah, I'm 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 in agreement with all that. Because hmm. in Europe, we're a little bit more behind. We're kind of. <laughs> 
I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I self-prescribe. <laughs> well, I do, yeah. I, you know, but it's, I'm for, yeah. I, I turned 43 last week, oh, so yeah. uh, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling very yeah. old at the moment, yeah, Lee, yeah, feeling yeah. very low. But it's... Um, ah, it, you're still a youngster, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this guy on again, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, but no, I, I think it's something that um, I think, uh, I think, do you know, I think one of the first ones to really... Uh, to really sort of bring attention to it was Sylvester Stallone because he said, no, I believe TRT and even things like uh, GH and stuff, you know, there's, there's a place for people, certainly men over 40, and I think it's important for health and longevity. I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. You know, um, you know, uh, maintaining normal physiological yeah. levels that you uh, had when you were younger, I think, is, is beneficial. Because it's great looking good at a certain age, but also feeling good and feeling healthy and having, you know, you, you get up and go because uh, it's, it's, it's just so important. So mm. important. You know? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, that's right. Especially that's when you've got a multi-million not- dollar company to run, you know, you can't afford to be, uh, you know, with your feet up at home, you know. <laughs> So, right. How many hours a day do you work with your company on the on the average day? Oh, I'm I'm in here every day. In fact, I'm I'm in my office right now as we speak. Oh, nice. And so uh, I'm I'm in here every day, five days a week. And listen, I love what I do. You know that mm. there's that song that uh, says uh, uh, that uh, I'm on vacation because I love my occupation. That's what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, you're looking at it. I, I love what I do, yeah. and I, I love helping uh, the younger guys, um, you know, uh, that are coming up, both with their nutrition, with their training. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll get in the gym and I'll work with uh, Hunter, and even, uh, I've even worked with Pat Moore in the gym on his nice. uh, on his posing, you know, on their posing routine. So I love doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah Patrick Moore said you're helping him a lot with his posing. Yep. Yeah, he's um, and you know he's got uh, he's he got uh, a, a great potential that one for yeah. sure. Yeah, nice guy too. For some reason, I can visualize that you've got a gym in your warehouse in your offices. Uh, do, uh, do you have yep. a, do you have do you have a gym there? Yes, how do you know I have a gym in my warehouse. <laughs> oh, it's just a, I had a bit of a psychic feeling, a psychic feeling. All right, so, so let me tell you, let me tell you, I, I got I got this thing. This is this is really sweet. I got this thing set up. So that I cannot get away from the gym. I am, yeah. <laughs> I am no farther than sixty seconds away from a gym yeah. during my waking hours. Wow. I mean, I have a gym. I have a fully equipped gym at home uh, with uh, hammer strength, free weights, cables, leg press, everything. And I got the same thing here at work. <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, and, and I set it up that way on purpose yeah. so that uh, all I've got to do is walk down the hall and, and I'm in the gym. I don't waste mm. any time, and I have. No excuses not to work out. Yeah. Do you train in the morning early? No. I like to oh. work out in the afternoon. Oh, okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an afternoon person that way. And, and uh, typically in the morning when my energy is high, I come in and, and uh, I jump right into the fray of things here at work. Oh, nice. Do you ever go back to Cuba? Because you're from uh, Cuba originally, aren't no. you? No. No, but I came to the United States when I was two years old and I've never been back. Oh, okay. really? Never okay. been back? Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys been? Yeah, I've been there, yeah. Have oh, you been to Cuba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm oh. from half Jamaican, so we go to Cuba when I'm home. Yeah, yeah. yeah you guys you guys just jump in a boat and row over, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's close, right? It's yeah, close. it's very close. It's very close. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so what you th- it's, a beautiful, it's, it's a beautiful part of the world. I've been in Jamaica, by the way. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mm, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about the, the current pros competing today? What, do, you, do you follow the scene with your son competing now? Do you follow the scene closely, the Olympia scene? Yes. Yes, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the Olympians. Yeah. So, did you agree with the Sean Rolden beating Phil Heath? <laughs> or was it a surprise for you? Uh, no, I, it, it was not a surprise for me um, after I saw the uh, shots from the prejudging, mm. and especially how tight Sean's midsection was. Mm. Um, I called my son up, called up Hunter. I go, Hunter, did you see these shots? And he goes, Yeah. And I go, I think that um, I think that Sean might take this. I think that um, I think Phil may have a surprise coming to him. And he goes, No, no, no. There's guys that are there. There's no way. You know, Sean. Uh, you know, uh, Phil's going to win again. And I go, Okay. Well, let me tell you what. That's that's exactly what happened. You know. And again, listen. Um, both of those guys are great athletes. Not good athletes. Great athletes. And I I kid you not. On any given day, if one is on and the other one is off. You know, it's 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 just a flip of a coin. Yeah. So, uh, going back from when your days, uh, we looked at you as heroes, as role models. Yeah. Uh, today, when you how you carry yourself as the Mr. Olympia champion, is that something you would think about? How you carry yourself off when like when you, like Sean, whatever person, uh, how do you carry yourself as a Mr. Olympia? Is that important for you? 
off stage. Well, it, would, it would be important for me. I mean, I, I didn't win a Mr. Olympia, but I carry myself in such a way that um, that if you know, if I meet somebody and um, they have that particular experience with me, then 20 years from now, I want them to think back and say, yeah, I met Lee Labrada once. He was a great guy, you know, great representative for the sport. So I do think that a Mr. Olympia and even those Mr. Olympia contenders, we all carry our sport outwardly. And I would say this even for those young guys and ladies out there that are watching that are watching uh, this episode is carry yourself in, in a manner that uh, is, uh, um, you know, th- that people will walk away saying, you know, I, I met this person, they're a bodybuilder, and they were so gracious, you know, and uh, I really admire them, you know, not just for their body, but for the person that they are, you know, so I think I think that it's important to uh, hold hold yourself out as an ambassador of the sport, regardless of the level that you're competing at, you're an ambassador, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, you know, if you're the guy that's being the jerk, you know, and uh, it, it creates an, a bad impression of our sport, just like if you're the guy that is out there uh, helping people and, and being gracious, you know, it creates mm. an impression of the sport as well. I think that that's true of all athletes. Not all mm. athletes feel that way, mm. you know, but I do think that they have a responsibility to the public and to the young people that follow them, yeah. you know, as role models. Lee, I met you at the 2012 Dallas the Europa Show, and yeah, it was 2012. Yeah, 2012. Yeah, I was over. Um, I was actually yeah, I was I was over uh, with, with Gasp and seen, seen some friends. And oh, you've been, you, you've been in Texas. That's great. I've been in te- I've been in Texas uh, twice. Yeah, my, my partner she won the um, she won a pro debut at the Dallas uh, Betty and uh, Ed Pariso show in 2016. Very impressive. She won a pro debut straight first, and I met. I was actually with. I was talking to George Farr and Zach Khan. And uh, you, I think you were with Hunter actually, and you, you ca- I think we came over to you, and you stood up and you shook your ha- shook my hand and you said, "Hi, I'm Lee Labrada," <laughs> and I laughed and I just went, "Well, of course you are," <laughs> but you didn't. It, it, Phil Heath did the same to me when I met him the first time in 2014. You didn't just you left a very good impression with me. So it's you know you didn't just go. Hi, you obviously know who I am. It was very, very, like you said, very gracious, very classy, and I Thank think, you. and it's, I, I, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, it, it stayed with me. Things like that stay with people. They stay with the fans, and it, it helps keep, um, it keeps the sport thriving, and it keeps it uh, keeps it classy. J- just one question about that, Joe Weider. Did he t- did he talk to you about those things mm-hmm. when you were Joe Weider? Did he approach you guys and gave you advice? Joe, and yeah, Joe Joe always coached us. Joe always coached us, and Joe was very uh, paternal. That's what's missing. Okay, I don't want to say paternalistic because nowadays that has a negative connotation, you know, because it, it, it wasn't that he was talking down to us. He was talking to us as a father figure, yeah. you know, and he, w- he would encourage us, and he would, and, and he would coach us, mm. you know, and um, uh, you wouldn't believe the number of times mm. that, um, that you would talk to him. And, and uh, you know, uh, you, you would talk about things with Joe besides bodybuilding, just about life in general and how to conduct yourself, mm, uh, mm. How, how to conduct yourself in business and, and, and whatnot. Uh, Joe, Joe was great. You know, Joe uh, gave me so many opportunities. He was, he was like a coach. You know, he would, yeah. hand you the, he would hand you the ball and tell you the direction to run in. He's not going to give you the touchdown. You know, you're going to have to work for that, yeah. you know, but 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 he would create the opportunity uh, and between him and his brother, Ben, they really single handedly created an industry in which we are all thriving today. Yeah. You know, it's arguable that the reason we can do an interview like this and we have people following it is because of the efforts that these pioneers put in, yes. you know, uh, uh, along the way. You know, so uh, I have a lot of respect um, uh, for uh, for Joe, did you sorry? Did you see bigger the bigger movie the the, the Joe Weider film? Have you seen it yet? I, I did I did watch the uh, uh, the Joe Weider movie. I felt that um, I felt that it was a little uh, Hollywoodized, so yes, to speak, because, of course, because yeah. I actually yeah. knew the man, and um, and I think that the actor that uh, played him uh, uh, it was almost uh, too one dimensional and wooden like right. wood, you know. And Joe had a Joe had a, a, a very colorful personality i mean he was uh, really a people person and just the life of the party he was just very interesting to be around yeah yeah. yeah so that's what's probably what's missing in today somebody to guide the people eh? yeah, yeah. yeah he was um yeah in 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 those days he really was uh, the glue 
Yeah, he, yeah. he really, really was the glue. Him and a small handful of guys. Hmm. You know, I remember training in the late '80s in uh, in the World Gym in uh, uh, Santa Monica, which Joe Gold, uh, the late Joe yeah. Gold, yeah, yeah. Uh, used to run. I used to walk in and <laughs> I talked to Joe Gold every day behind wow. the counter. You know, and and I, after we worked out, I'd sit there. I literally would sit down next to him in a chair, and we'd chat for a few minutes, and <laughs> and not. And so, great deal of respect for that guy. Yeah. And uh, and it, it, it's funny because uh, he uh, he loved all the guys, uh, but don't drop a weight in his gym. I remember Lou Ferrigno <laughs> one morning dropping a weight in his gym, and and. She, Joe Gold, Joe Gold's got to be like 70 years old at the time. He like flies over the counter, wow. you know, and uh, went over there and read him the riot act. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was, it was always telling off the Hulk. Always, those machines are some of the best machines I've ever worked on. You okay. can see that that pulley row machine that Arnold Schwarzenegger is using in pumping iron. Yeah, that was a machine that Joe Gold uh, welded himself. Uh, mm-hmm. He created those machines himself. And I, I, I would put those machines up against anything being made by a, a major manufacturer nowadays. God knows where they're at, yeah, uh, but they just... belong they belong in a museum. I trained on those myself. Wow. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever go to Vince Gironda's gym over the road? I did not. No, no, I, no, no. I did not, I did not know Vince Gironda, nor have I uh, had the pleasure of being in his gym at that time. Yeah, I, I wish I would have. It was a great days, weren't they? Great days. Speaking of, yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun. It was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I think there's still a lot of fun to be found now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and um, you know, I think that there was a lot of camaraderie back then, but I think yeah. that there's a lot of camaraderie now. I think that what happens is that social media allows a, a megaphone for people. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of times uh, we tend to focus on the uh, the negative uh, and the brash things that are coming across that megaphone instead of the good things. There's still a lot of yeah. great guys and gals out there that really care, uh, and there's a lot of camaraderie. Do you still speak to Lee Haney? I saw Lee Haney. You're going to love this. I'm so glad you brought it up. <laughs> but I saw Lee Haney last, wait for it, backstage at the Nationals when my son won. Uh-huh. I was standing next we were, I was standing next to Lee Haney, and the both of us were watching him from the wing yeah. as he won as he won the nationals. Wow, that's awesome! That's a Kodak yeah. moment, huh? Yeah, <laughs> Kodak moment. Yeah. Lee Haney, <laughs> Lee Haney is one of the finest people that yes. I have ever met on or off the bodybuilding stage. Yeah, wonderful man. Um, you know, just a smile that would light up a room yeah. and always something nice to say about everybody. He turned to me and he goes, he's a monster, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So good that we've got these representatives, people like yourself, Barry DeMay. Um, I don't know Rich Gaspari that well, but every time, I've, every time I have met him, he's been very polite. And, yep. you know, Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman, you know, and uh, fantastic representative of the sport. It's, um, yeah, yeah. Who, one question, you've seen them all. Who was the most impressive bodybuilder you've seen in the gym? You just talked about Lou Ferrigno. Who impressed you the most? That's because he dropped his weights. Well, um, there, let me just say this. I've always found something impressive about every pro bodybuilder. Hmm. You know, uh, one may have great arms. Another one may have a great back. Um, you know, one may have great symmetry. There's, there's, uh, I, they, they've all impressed me. Hmm. Uh, in terms of just, I'm going to say, imposing like just physically imposing. Mm. I would say that Ronnie Coleman at his peak <laughs> was untouchable. Wow. It, you know, he, um, I mean, there were, there were, there's, and if we're honest, there's not a single one of us that could have stood next to him. You know, I mean, just in terms of uh, the, uh, the sheer size and muscularity and, and, and whatnot, it was just uh, truly uh, an amazing physical specimen. Lee, 1992, Helsinki, Finland, you're all backstage. Did you even mm-hmm. spot Ronnie Coleman backstage? <laughs> I got a funny story to tell you about that one. Oh, so, come on. Uh, yes, this is gold. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman, uh, Ronnie Coleman um, comes uh, uh, to the airport in Houston. I'm waiting to jump on the airplane with my wife to jump uh, on an airplane to Helsinki, hmm. Finland in 1992. And I see Ronnie Coleman walking down the uh the tarmac there uh, i'm sorry not the tarmac the uh, hall mm. and uh, uh approaching the gate mm-hmm. and i get to talking to him because he's from texas also and he tells me in his in that in that unique voice he goes lee he goes <laughs> i just won the ifpb mr universe i'm 225 pounds and i'm all natural oh. and i'm looking at it and i'm going oh man come on can you th- can this guy really be natural all natural? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a 225 pounds with a 
21 in charm. Oof, and yeah, you know yeah. what? Looking back, I believe him. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, the, the genetics that this guy had were just were just off the hook, mm-hmm. just off the hook. Yeah. So that was uh, that was that was uh, interesting. He took 12th at uh, I want to say he took 12th in his first Olympia. Mm. Um you know, and it's it's really it's really kind of interesting because uh, you know once he hit a stride and uh, broke into number one, there wasn't anybody that could touch him. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, it just it just goes to show you the transformation that he made yeah. from the time he turned to a pro. That's why you can't write off any of these pros. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, look at Patrick Moore for instance. Uh, yeah. I want to say that uh, he was somewhere between eighth and tenth last year in that eighth, same show. Eighth, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this year he was number one. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, I I expect great things from him at the Olympia. He might be a surprise. I think because uh, um, I think the thing we notice sometimes is the mindset. And he has. And yeah. for us, that's that's. Uh, I mean, I've followed a lot of bodybuilders' careers for like twenty, thirty years. And the one thing, it's like Flex Lewis. I mean, I, I was, Flex Lewis was a bodybuilder. That I, I remember speaking to him when he was a junior and uh, speaking to his friend, Neil Hill. And I just didn't see that. Normally I can see the potential. And then, my friend, and then Neil Hill said to me, he says, no, Giles, go and speak to him. Actually speak to him. He says, and I guarantee after 20 minutes of speaking to him, you'll then see that this kid has potential. Because it wasn't even his physique. It was his mindset. And yeah. he had it. You know, it's. Um, but, and, and the champions like Flex have both. Yeah, they have both. It takes uh, it takes uh, burning determination. You know, I, I saw I saw uh, a lot of this determination and and uh, and a lack of it. Yeah. On the Grand Prix circuit back in the late eighties, mm-hmm. and I remember, like when we were on the Grand Prix circuit, uh, the majority of these guys. You know, basically just to remind the uh, viewers who don't know what the Grand Prix circuit is, after the Mister Olympia, back in the late eighties, we would have this string of uh, shows uh, that would be in different countries. So you might have a Grand Prix uh, stop in Germany, one in England. Uh, incidentally, I, I won the first British Grand Prix. Uh, and and, and uh, you might have one in uh, Finland. You might have one in Italy, ATA. another one in Spain. And so basically, you basically flew from country to country, yeah. you know, and one week apart, these shows, you would compete. And so over a period of six weeks, you got peaked six times. Yeah. The, ma- the majority of these guys couldn't do it. They would literally, they would just fade. And you you knew at a certain mm. point that they gave up because you saw the stuff that they were putting on their plate. Yeah. And so you would just <laughs> check them off and go, okay, that one's done. <laughs> that one's done. The, guy, the, guy that, the guy that never gave up. The guy that was just, I mean, just, I mean, as relentless as I was, was Rich Gaspari. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was just, you know, and that first year we, uh, we shared the, uh, we shared those wins and the 88, uh, he won four of them. I won three of them mm. uh, on that Grand Prix circuit, you know, so we kept flip-flopping back and forth, yeah. you know, but, um, it, 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 just speaking to your point that it, it does take a certain mindset mm. when things get grueling when things get tough and to be able to take losses and setbacks and keep pushing forward. It's like a fighter that gets, it just gets busted in the face two or three times, almost yeah. knocked out, but he just keeps moving forward with his head down, you know, or there's some that just back up and they give up, you know? Mm, so yeah. the way Gaspari both- did with his yeah. business also. Yeah, that he's it, done yeah. It. I mean, you've all think we, we had, we interviewed Bob Chick, uh, Bob Ticciarello on our last episode. And I said, what bodybuilders have done well, beyond bodybuilding and he was he mentioned yourself he mentioned rich gaspari and uh, i think it's great that you know that because no one wants to see these bodybuilders end up broke or kind of bit embittered or it's great to see that you know you've applied your mentality and your drive and your determination to business and to see that you're doing so well and thriving and to see you know i i I love to see you know your products around it's uh, same with ronnie coleman I, i actually worked for ronnie coleman for two years for his supplement company and uh It was a wonderful experience. We're actually starting a new show with him uh, very soon, a weekly show. Oh, good. Yeah, so good. it's 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 nice. You know, it's nice to be working with the kind of... The, it's, it's an honor, really, to be working with the best of the best. With you the know? legends. I'm even doing a bit of work for Barry DeMay, you know. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. Barry's, Barry's yeah. fantastic. Barry's fantastic. You're, you're going to enjoy that. Yeah. You know, um, uh, you, I've worked very, very hard, uh, and we've also been blessed by God. I mean, mm. just, uh, just amazing opportunities, you know, and... Um, You know, and I, I, I can I can tell you uh, uh, today that uh, I wouldn't be uh, where where I am, uh, you know, with, without God's blessings and help. Mm. Okay, AJ, have you got any final questions for the legend? No question. Just, <laughs> just I'm very happy yeah. to talk to you. You know, I've been yeah. following you for a long time, and I'm so happy that you're doing so well, yeah. and that your son. We would be excited to see your son. Yeah. And uh, we're just happy to follow you, your journey, and it's great, great to be a part of it. 
Uh, thank you so much. And listen, guys, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you guys. And uh, this was really a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, thank you know, you. I, actually, I actually had a dream last night that we, we had no bad Skype connection <laughs> with Lita Brada. I actually woke up and I was like, oh, no, we, we've lost Skype connection. I don't know, a bit of a random one. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, Lee, can't thank you enough. Yeah. Uh, one of my heroes, like I said, I followed the sport from April, May 1990. I was 15 years old, 14 years old, actually, in 1990. Yes, 1990, I was 14 years old. And uh, yeah, you're, 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 trying, you're trying to make me feel old now, right? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I feel old myself now, actually. So uh, yeah, big thank you, Lee. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're real, it's been a real, real pleasure having you on. And uh, thank you for taking the time. And we really do appreciate it. So uh, uh, yeah, thank you. My thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. And yeah, my absolute pr pleasure. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah. Great interview. And I, I want to uh, just. Uh, Say hello to all my fans out there. God bless. Yeah, and also give our love to Robin as well, because remember, you know, she was she's been part of your journey, Robin, right from day one. And just one thing. She, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I just want to know when is your sh when is your show? When is the Labrada show? Oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, so that is uh, that is Ch Saturday, July twenty seventh this year at, at the uh, Stafford Center here in Houston, uh, Texas. So if any of you guys get a wild hair and you want to jump on a plane, come on over. <laughs> yeah, Good. Yeah. So, uh, yes, and please, like I said, please give our love to Robin as well because, yeah. uh, you know, it's uh, so much. part of the Labrada family. So a super, super family. Thanks so much. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you, Lee. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, hang on. What? Oh, what am I doing? Oh, hang on. One second. <gasps> yeah, we, oh, it was fantastic. We, we wished we had a dad like Lila Brada. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow, he yeah. looks, he's nearly sixty oh, years old. See the white teeth, bro. He looks cool. No, yeah, absolutely that's, that's one of your heroes, isn't it? That's one of my heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, um, yeah, I just I'm proposing that just the class, you know, and it's I know you you were kind of t touching on it towards the end of the interview. Talking about the sheer professionalism, the class. I mean, you know, he always, you ever see him, he dress, even now he still takes care of himself. He's tanned, he's in shape. He carries himself with such Grace, dignity. Smile. Yeah, that's... The way he speaks to people. Yeah, he's not... Still married after 30 years. Yeah, no baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to who? No, nothing. Yes. Oh, oh, somebody's calling. Oh. Hello? Maybe you want to say hello? Accidentally... No. no, I must have pressed that by accident. Okay. That's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lee. Maybe he missed you. Or yeah, just... sorry, guys. I'm stuck. I can still hear you. But um, yeah, that was absolutely fantastic. Really. It's uh... one of your, I can tell in your eyes, it's one of your favorite interviews, huh? Yes, big time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. So yes. Yeah, that was um, uh, very, very well, So for the younger people, check mm. out Leela Brad on YouTube. <sighs> Watch his routines. 87 to 95, his pro career was eight years. Um, second in the Olympia two years running 89 and 90 dropped to fourth in 1991 great battles between him and Sean Ray and Vince Taylor Rich Kaspari Vince Taylor's maybe someone we should be getting on the show maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe we can arrange that yeah <laughs> right okay then um, yes yes so we'll be right back yes yes yes. no I'm just buzzing that's great you're buzzing that. yeah really good yeah good big thank you Lila Brother there so I hope you enjoyed that interview and all our other interviews for episode 23 of Globe Muscle Radio so, okay, we're going to ad break and uh, we out. we'll be back right after the ad. We're out. Okay, guys, it's shout out time. So, uh, AJ, who have you got first? It's your shout out first. Oh, it's my it? shout out first. Okay, yes. <laughs> this is How's a, your blog? Is you okay today? Uh, well, probably a bit high. I can feel like my head's a bit thumpy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah, this is uh, this? Sherry. I don't, I don't know her full name, actually. Sherry Do, WBFF she's a, Pro? Yeah, she's WBFF Pro. The reason I know this girl is because I was judging the wellness with her at the Two Bros Pro last August. Let's see some pictures there. Yeah, she's fantastic. She competes in um, in WBF. It's like the kind of, the kind of bikini style. I'm, I okay. Yeah, she's a bikini pro. Uh, sorry, WBF, WBFF Pro. Wellness Pro. Yeah, really lovely. I think she's she's Persian, lives in London. Let's go down. Let's see. Ooh, look at the one with the green outfit there. Looks very to the left. Yeah, really lovely girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so she's from uh, Persian British. Yeah, lives in London now. Yes, yeah, really, really lovely girl. Um, and Great physique. Yeah, she's dieting. She Marketable just started. Look. Yeah, AJ, she's, microphone, please. 
Yeah, she's just started dieting now. She's doing a uh, pro show in probably about 10 weeks now, I think. Mm. So, um, yeah, just a quick shout out there. Really, um, yeah, we were judging together. We were judging. There was me, her and Angie Weston. And we're all judging the uh, the wellness at the Pro League, the Pro League show, Bob Chick show. So, yeah, some pictures there, Lexi. Oh, it looks great. Yeah, really good. Really Great, fa- great fashion. Fashion sense. Yeah, colors. she's class. She's nice. She's I sweet. wish we had colors like that on our Instagram. <laughs> Yeah. Go up so people can see her yeah. name if they want to follow her. Yeah. yeah. So her name is. Give her a follow. She's sweet. Really lovely. Sherry girl. M. Fitness model and, des- and fashion designer. I'll go to one of mine before you go yours. Mm-hmm. We go to. Okay. So this girl, don't don't go down yet first. So you know my friend M- 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 Muscle Brown and Mr. Trump a lot, the guy from Norway. Trump a lot. He's the black. He's the blackest Trump supporter in the world. Right. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. So I see we, point. <laughs> we, call, we call him Mr. Trump a lot. Trump we up. are trying to make the girls in Norway do bikini who has potential for more yeah. to go for better classes. <laughs> right. She competes in bikini. Right. Go down. Let's, Let's see. Have a look. Let's have a look. Marte Brekke. Go mm-hmm. down. Go down. Oh, she's quite muscular. All the way she? down. All the way a little bit more. There. Go to the... Oh, go, she's cool. Look at that physique. Go, go down to the right. Okay. Press that one. Up. Wow. Press that. Hang on a bit. Okay. So she competes in bikini, bro. That's not bikini. Obviously, that's what I'm trying to tell no, her. No, 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 no. So what, what, are you, what do you want her to do? Obviously, whatever, just not bikini. Figure? Whatever, but yeah. not bikini. Yeah, yeah. Look no, there no, to no. the left. Uh, Look the back. That's... So she competes in bikini, bro. Even seven years ago, she'd be too muscular for bikini. She'd be a fantastic so, figure. So she's a great Norwegian athlete, competes mm-hmm. in bikini. Maybe she should be a bikini pick, if there's a big stage pick, maybe. Where, there to the right. Yeah. Oh, she looks kind of bikini there. What do you think? That was that, yeah, that looks like an old picture because she's more muscular now. Yeah, that's an old picture. Yeah, yeah. Great look, yeah. She's a very beautiful girl, yeah. Yeah. So, so she, where is she from? Norway. And well, Oslo or I don't know her personally. Larvik, see, I know two <laughs> places. I don't know her personally, but we try to brainwash him. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably just more party pictures, or <laughs> <laughs> no? So she's got great potential. You got to go to the reach. This is probably old. I think the first one up. Which yeah. he has proper size. Yeah. He's probably there. Yeah. Go to, you see, that's some size, isn't it? Yeah. The back. Look at the de- definition in the back. Huh? Good quads. Yeah. She'd bring a quads there. up. She could bring a quads up a little bit. She'd be a good figure. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But even potential. No, not potential for physique, maybe. What do you think? You're the. I need to see her on stage in a bikini mm. as she looks now because that old picture, she's not. She's more muscular there. Yeah. She's more muscular there, but she looks very, very good. She's got and beautiful look. Uh, uh, beautiful she, look. And in Norway, bikini, you know, with the win to win. Uh, you get bikini. a Jantana spray and nothing else. Oh. There's no money. Right. So why not? Uh, oh, you're following. Good. G- good, smart. Give people at home. Give her a follow. Yeah. Go to your shout out. My next. Oh, Mike Cox. Yeah. Big Mike Cox. This is this is a bodybuilding fan. This is Mike Cox, MD legend. Uh, AJ, I can't actually look at his Instagram though. Let's go to his Instagram. I can't look at his Instagram. Okay, let's press press one of them. A- oh my god. Was that a mid? AJ, go, AJ, press, press, go down. AJ, can I confess something? Yeah, I've unfollowed. Look at that nut after nut. What's that? <laughs> nut after nut. AJ, can I confess something? Why? Why we men keep press one of these? Why men keep their eyes open during sex? Oh. Why women keep? Their- <laughs> oh no! <laughs> AJ, AJ, listen oh, to me. Look at that! What's going on here? What's this? Oh. That's just a picture, like by, no, Ron, like, no. by, like by Ron Harris and three others. What? Look at the pants, though. Look at the pants. Is that the pants? Oh, yeah. You've not seen? Oh, no. AJ, she's packing something, mate. Oh, it's a tranny. What it's... is this? Oh, shit, it's a tranny. You didn't spot that. No. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, AJ, as I've been trying to tell you for the last few minutes, yeah. I've actually unfollowed him, you... but even though he's my shout out. You unfollow your shout out? I can't look at this sort of stuff. Taylor Swift, let me see. What does it say there? Taylor Swift. Chris. Can you... Taylor Swift makes you albums get... about her past relationships. If she dated me, her next album would be songs about doing super. Well, I feel like there's more text underneath. Taylor Swift makes albums about her past relationships. About super doing... hater. She is super annoying. No. Choke me harder, daddy. That's a woman looking down on her. Thank you very much for the apartment that you them. <laughs> I can't stand this. It is, I know, yeah, it is funny, but I don't want to see this on my newsfeed every day. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> AJ, 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 listen. I love Mike Cox. Cox. I, think he, I think he needs to get more involved in the bodybuilding scene because he's he's a he's one of the last 
the true diehard bodybuilding fans. He's got a very good eye. I did a wrap-up with him. Where was it a wrap-up? Was it the 2017 Olympia? I've done wrap-ups with him in Tampa. He's, he's a fantastic bodybuilder, fantastic guy. But I, I feel like I want to get him back more to the forums and off all this weird weird shit he puts on instagram i i think i think like him discovering social media was bad for us on the forums because he used to be a good forum member very very good forum. I, is he is he as interested in bodybuilding i think he is yeah. he, he still follows it but i he just wish he would midget porn don't we all no oh. that's for you that's okay. not for me i would never watch you never with watched a midget. No, I thought everyone no. watched it everyone watches dwarf porn don't they no that's... in on. the uk this well, is what's, what we... it, what's this what this, what, this is what we do on a sunday what is it? uh uh, 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 get it off! <laughs> get it off! Uh, please, Chris, I feel sick. No, What's seriously. That one? After nut. <laughs> okay, last shout out, please. Before I, we end it, I feel ill. <laughs> okay, go down a little bit. A lot of girls on. Yeah, yeah. Go down, go down. Oh, she popped up in my newsfeed. In the today. I'm following up, her as well. Up. I don't know. The press that one. So, what class is this? That's figure. She's also in bikini. No. Yes, yes that's what I'm trying to tell these people. Yeah, but in Norway, they more. It's not because I. It's because I want the best for them, and bikinis obviously not what's best for them. Look. Yeah, but are they? Is it? Have you seen bikini in the Norwegian shows or? Yeah. Scandinavian shows. Very, yeah, I've seen them. Oh. So what do you think? I don't. Is I don't this know. bikini? I don't, I don't know what to make of this. Go up. Press that one. Yeah. So she competes in bikini. She's got a fantastic shape. And I told her you have to go. Figure, wellness, uh, body fit. Well, hang whatever. on, get a picture of her legs because if her legs are big, then she could do wellness because she's got a good wellness look. She probably, I'd probably prefer to uh, legs. That's that's con this condition. No, legs are too small for wellness, but that's figure. That'd be a good that's figure. figure. That's yeah, what I yeah. If she brought the quads up more. She'd be a very, very, very good figure. Or well, if she get the legs big enough, she could do wellness. All the way else, because she's got, see- she's got, she's got, she's got a very pretty look. She's very. Go very- all the way else, people can see your name. And follow her if they want. So she's from Norway. She's from Russia and something. Okay. She's Rush Biotech. Biotech. Yeah, yeah. Overall Gentana. champion. Better bodies. Uh, Natalia. What's your name? Natalia. S. How do you pronounce her last name? Jis. Uh, Jis Chris. How do you last her last name? Jis Mont. That last name. S. What? How do you say your last name? Jis Mont. Yeah, but what about the last? Adjustment. Okay, okay, okay. Well, so this is a talented athlete from Norway. <laughs> Has to do something else in the bikini, don't you agree? No, 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 yeah. <laughs> Figure. Figure. Mm. Well, that's our yep, shout-outs for our, today. That's our shout-outs for today. I'm trying to make Norwegian females jump off bikini. You want to get them all get jacked. Ass. Get on yeah. <laughs> Over 80 kilos. <sighs> what was it you said last At episode? At least over 75. Ripped. <laughs> okay. How well, much uh, was Rosie on stage? What? How much was Rosie on stage? She wasn't that 53, much. 53, 54. Oh, but she's tiny. But she's like... She's bone like, structure. She's and... that tall. She's like a little action figure. And still beat the bigger girls. throw her around. Still one biki- uh, female pro of the year. Swing around by her hair. Like a Barbie doll. Still one rookie of the year, weighing yeah. 53 kilos. She did, yeah. She did. That Fantastic. means you can win it all even though you don't weigh that much. Correct. If you bring yeah. the shape and presentation yeah. and the... When she did the Amateur Olympian in 2015, when she depleted, she went down to 49 kilos. Well, Rossi, you better even, make... even Chris can curl that. Well, Rossi, better make some better breakfast for you on uh, your birthday. It would be even better. Well, I'm, I'm getting old and I might not make to my next birthday, mate. <laughs> you know, every every year, <laughs> every year's a bonus. <laughs> can you imagine when you were 18 that you ever be this old? 18. And when you were 18, people that were your age would be like, "What man? Those uh, kids are old, man." Why? I don't, <laughs> I don't think about it. I don't, I've stopped counting. Uh, no, it's just, uh, is there any guys you want to delete from our show? Any guys delete? Any episodes you want to delete? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, I am actually seriously thinking. I know. You, so if you guys see in the future one episode is deleted, you'll, you know why. That's a wrap for episode 23. That is a wrap. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed episode 23 of Global Muscle Radio. Fantastic guests, fantastic uh, fantastic episodes. And I've got a feeling I think this might be the longest episode yet. So, uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Big thank you there to AJ. Big thank you to Chris there on the, ma- on the mic. On the, uh, the he ain't been on the mic today. He's want to go home eating kebabs. Computers. And uh, obviously, big thank you there to High Tech Pharmaceuticals 
for which this show would not be possible. They and get the new MD magazine with yep. Von Morger and Giles writing in it, Ron Harris writing a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I've got my column to do this week, actually. Global muzzle buzz. What, what do you think I should write about this episode? Uh, this, this, this issue? Uh, what do you think? Impress me and write the article about bikini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your 1,500 op- words. On- your opinions about it. Well, anorectic that, and all this. That would fill up 10 words. Anorex- anorectic and... No, I don't want to mean. But the thing is, I don't want to. I don't want to keep banging on because I don't want to disrespect these women because they are fantastic and they, you know, they put a lot of effort into it. And uh... and shout out to that English girl, Fina Hagen. Is, he, is that was is a he, British bikini girl, Fina Hagen? Is he laughing? Was that bikini girl? All I can from, see is just the top of his cap. Was that bikini girl from England? I thought it was Sean Roden sat Phoebe? over there. I Phoebe, Phoebe Sean Roden sat over there with his cap on. <laughs> hey, guess pose without his cap on it is um and, and he shaved. <laughs> that is progress. And we out. Yep, and we out. Okay, thank you for uh, watching, and we are out. (laughs)